I am so happy that we have this in our lineup. It has been a pleasure to play it. I've only gotten half a night to be able to play it. I've been preparing for this, but I can't wait to get back on it more because it's outstanding. We're going to start with Ace. He is going to get top mate control and just bait out the camo a little bit. He's got two members in front of him, though. They're going to try to get some nades off, and it is a good push by Mikwin and Eco. They're going to win it out, so now Tylenol is forced to just back down and wait with this heat wave. We talked about McWin being a former 343 employee, but not only that, but he was a former professional player. Ooh. One of the best of the best that he is going to go down. Camouflage in the hands of Eco right now. You combine that with Eco. One thing McWin is big on is communication. He always talks about if you can't call out while you shoot, he will refuse to team with you. He, and he will actually yell at you until you get your communication up. And Eco is a good communicator. So I'm really excited to see what this team does here. It's two to one lead going in favor of McWin and Eco. Look at those pings. Those pings are coming out instantaneously. <laughs> this man, he he knows exactly what he's doing. Eco with the teamwork. Oh, he goes flying in, but the nades were so good. Oh, my gosh. That was a great read by Ace and Tylenol to just get in there. And, oh, my goodness, that was a one-tap. One-tap from Mick when he knows how to use that weapon so well. Going to just take that guy out. No problem here with the heat wave. I don't think I've ever had a single tap kill with the heat wave yet i gotta be working on that obviously i'm doing something wrong here he's gonna get a good flank in gets the nade out got that player weak takes down tylenol no problem with a good flank yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, Nighty. I'm still trying to get used to the weapons like the Heat Wave and the Disruptor as well and some uh, you know, the Mangler. I'm getting, I'm still trying to get used to these weapons, but McWin seems to be very used to them as the Ricochet shots are starting to come in. He's going to challenge that player, and the assist comes in. Beautiful slays coming out of McWin and Eco, and they've opened up a wonderful lead right now, a five-kill lead going in favor of the boys in blue. Mikwin is using that thrust so effectively. He's got one more charge in it, and he's going to use it to the best of his ability now. Going to get right up shoulder to shoulder with his teammate. Fly on in. Try to get some damage in. It takes him down to no shields. He didn't know he was out of ammo, though. It took him a second with the click click, and he is going to get the double. Mikwin is back, baby. He hasn't been competing for a while. He is going to be hungry. That is, and again, he, he was one of the best. I mean, this man with a sniper rifle in hands, he would come up with some of the flashiest kills that we've seen, but he also had great fundamentals as well as that nade coming in on the offside by Eco. I, I can already tell the communication here is beautiful as he gets the first one. I believe he almost able to get that double kill to be forced to back down, and I believe Eco's going to come in and cover his back, but beautiful slays come out of McWin, a great job staying alive, and mind you, Eco was able to get away with the camouflage controlling these resources on a map like this is going to be so important if you can't control the camouflage you are going to have a hard time great camo management excellent job timing the thrust using it to the best of their ability picking up these ridiculous shock grenades that are just taking them out they are being bullies right now ace and tylenol have got their work cut out for them. This is going to be a tough matchup indeed. Look at the aggression coming out of both of them. The communication comes in, and that's going to help Eco to know where they're going to be going from the death cam. Now he's just going to try to get a little sneaky here. I don't recommend trying that. He probably should have waited for his teammate to come off his spawn and get right next to him before he made that push, and that is going to open up the game for Tylenol and Ace to come back. They've got plenty of time, eight minutes on the clock. 
great awareness coming out of Tylenol right there. He was overextending over towards the right side of the base. I believe he was trying to influence the spawns over towards left, but he noticed that two players spawn in front of him, uses that high sensitivity to get some damage in and get out of a bad situation, but he ends up going back in with Ace, but not able to play his life a 1v1 scenario, and McWin is going to hunt down Ace as well. McWin is absolutely on a tear. The man is 10-3 and three right now, and another camouflage going in the hands of the boys in blue. SSG have not been able to get a single power-up, and it's largely the reason why they have, they're have they in such deficit. They've dug themselves a big hole to get out of here, Alex. How are they going to get out? I don't know if they can at this point, because that's exactly what they need. Oh, my God! We see the first one on broadcast <laughs> and high-level Halo that is amazing love to see that one it is back baby we didn't see it in halo 5 but it is in infinite and you gotta love that insta explode and here we go make one's just trying to control top middle and they are only eight kills away from taking the dub here and what i'm noticing is that they are very very good about getting in those close quarters uh and making sure to bait and switch with each other Eco, like you said, one of the highest IQs. And this sidekick mm. is going to be so big to use on this map with this close quarters. Oh, what a stick! What? Oh my god, the montage worthy play from Mick one right now is insane. 14 kills out of this man. He is absolutely crushing it. Eco, though, I mean, he is getting the assists in and he is moving so well with Mickwin to help him out, but Tylenol is going to get the sneaky play in. Basically like a Batman play from the top and takes him down no problem. Good shots. Going to be Eco getting that trade, and that's going to be crucial. Oh, the commando trying to be used by Tylenol, but the BR is too clean out of Mickwin. No wonder why this man left 343. He's on a mission right now to come back as a professional player. Because let me tell you, the way he's playing right now, he can pick up a controller and start competing with some of the best of the best phase. I know you haven't announced something. Fnatic, I'm pretty sure you haven't announced a team yet. You might want to think about getting McQuinn once he's eligible to play. Because this man is tearing it up at the moment, taking down Ace once again. But finally, Tyler not going to come in for the cleanup kill. And you notice that. You notice how uh, he was taking advantage of that thrust, you know. I, I know a lot of Halo 3 guys, they're rolling their eyes right now. Halo 5 players, you guys are probably in love because not only is the thrust back, but it's as a pickup, it is more powerful than ever. You have some distance, you have that quickness. It truly is a power equipment as the heat wave being utilized once again, this time by Tylenol. And now we, now we can see Tylenol and Ace play some numbers here. Maybe we can see them come back, but I mean, is it too little too late, Nighty? Uh, I would think so. All they need is two. That's going to be one team wipe. And Tylenol goes down. Ace, last one left. And that is going to do it. Taking game number one with ease. Make one with the 16 kills. Just, I mean, total obliteration, honestly. Like, they were on top of every single camo. They were absolutely prepared for it. We didn't see Tylenol. I'm not sure what the play was off the rip, what his game plan was. Uh, I know Ace was up there and ready for it, but there just wasn't a good enough fight from them. They didn't make them burn it. They didn't win their fight. They didn't even try to go for it. And it did not end up helping them out at all. We're checking out these stats. I want to see the damage from Mick when he, he put in so much work that game with that heat wave and was just landing every shot. Absolute laser beams out of him. We saw that incredible insta explode. Oh, man, what... What, what do you think so far, Tony? That I've got, this is just incredible. Loving to see Halo Infinite played at this level right now. As I was watching some of the replays right now, I mean, you, you, you said it before, the magic number is 16. And, and to put that in perspective for you guys at home, you know, it's... It, the whole entire team of Ace and Tylenol were able to put 13 up as a duo. McWin by himself put up 16 kills. Literally, I mean, and, and, and it wasn't just him too, because I've noticed the movement. I, 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 I'm loving the way he's traversing the map. I'm learning so much just from watching his POV, and Eco just seems like that perfect partner. I can just tell the communication's on point. Eco's doing a great job of staying alive. They're doing a great job of controlling the power of time. There wasn't a singular time that Ace and Tylenol were able to get the the camouflage even try to make a wave and then when mcwin are hitting sticks like that what are you gonna do alex you were you were competitive yourself what are you gonna do when a man's going off like that <laughs> there's literally nothing nothing when if somebody's hitting everything when they're popping off with snipe popping off with their shot making sure they are always sticking you or getting away with a trade it's just 
it's just too much. Like, you just have to match that energy with trying to get trades of your own and really just hitting them head on with the same amount of aggression. Uh, this next game, it's going to be absolutely vital. They have got to get themselves into this one. But good thing, it is going to be a map with the sniper. It is going to be live fire. That's going to help them out big time because we know how absolutely incredible Tylenol and Ace are with that long rifle. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I respect Tylenol and Ace with the, with the sniper rifle completely, and I, and I agree with you. I think they're absolute units, but I remember some of the craziest plays. We're talking when McWin uh, was, was teaming with Snipe Down himself. He would literally bow the sniper to McWin, <laughs> and whenever there was a player that was making these aggressive plays, I mean, the first one to really get, like, super aggro with the sniper rifle, we see Frosty do it a lot, but the first person that I saw doing it was McWin. He was flying all over the map, getting these crazy dose storms, doing, just doing some incredible things as opposed to, you know, setting up, hunkering down with that sniper rifle. So just as good as Tylenol and Asar with the long gun, you have to respect McWin. And with the amount of time that he's been able to put into this game, I haven't been able to get down uh, the, the no scoping with this weapon. I feel like sometimes it's totally on for me. And sometimes I feel like I I'm just slightly off. I bet you any money he's been practicing with the sniper and he's probably going to feel most comfortable with it here in this Money Tuesdays. Yeah, I'm... I'm a little interested to see how that's going to work out. If he is just pinpoint accurate, just like he was in H2A, because he was an absolute monster. I mean, I don't think anybody could touch him when he was on fire. He's going to be able to take out Tylenol first thing. Immediately getting that jump up, gets the no scope in. Oh, my gosh. He is taken out, though. Good trade by Ace. That's going to be a crucial one from him. They're going to be able to secure themselves off of spawn. Camo is going to be up, but they better not go for that. Some good nades, though, is put down, and the Repulsor does nothing. Eco and Mikwin go down right away, and this is what I'm talking about. Once Tylenol and Ace have control, it is very difficult to take it from. Let's see if they're going to keep it up. They find the spawn. They're not going to be able to find a good shot, though, even with the camo sniper, though. Tylenol, I'm, I'm sorry, Ace has got to make sure he's getting these angles right. He's going to be watching mid, looking for the flank that could possibly come onto his teammate. Some shots are laid down, but he's got to get out of dodge. Good thing that player didn't double back immediately. He would have been dead in a heartbeat. Tie game, though. We've got the snipe in the hands of Ace. Let's see what he can do with it to get back into this one and tie this series mm. up. Mickwin going in super aggro. Didn't even wait for his teammate whatsoever. Is going to get easily double teamed. And now Eco's just going to have to hide somewhere and wait this one out. The angle on B, I believe that's where the player spawned. I believe the player just spawned behind him. Nope, never mind. That's his teammate. Okay. So we've got A still trying to get some height advantage here. The tower really seems to be a great spot in fours and twos. It's just an, a great amount of advantage to have. Ace is going to get away just narrowly, though. Going to keep this sniper for as long as possible. He's got the heat wave for up close. Going to check the chase, and it's going to be coming in hot. The camo is up. Oh, my God, Ace, you freak. He almost lands the second no scope. He's going to be out of ammo, but he is contesting and being a huge distraction right now. He's got this heat wave for the up close fight. Eco's not able to burn it. That is great news for Tylenol and Ace. One of the issues that Tylenol and Ace had throughout that first game was not controlling the resource, not controlling the tools that were on the map. So far, we've seen we've seen them hold on to that sniper rifle for dear life and not give it up, not even one time. And then on top of that, getting two camouflages, and that's largely why they have a one kill lead at the moment. Tower side being controlled. He's trying to jump up there. He's getting behind enemy lines. Misses the first shot, goes in for the second one. Excellent shots, but he's Ace did not get the kill. He has to stay alive right here. And I'm not sure what happened to Tylenol off of screen. I believe he might have actually hit the black screen. This is this is trouble. Huh. Oh man, this is exciting. We have got a very close game now. The heat wave playing a bigger role than I thought. Honestly, I gotta I I gotta admit, I didn't think that it was gonna be this good of a weapon but man they are using it so effectively all the players seem to use it way better than i can that's for sure uh just <laughs> you gotta make sure that you are getting right up in their face and landing those body shots so that every bit of those particles go into them and here we go that's this is the close-up tylenol is going to have his death cam he's going to be telling ace exactly where these players are going he's listening effectively 
And he knows they're going to be probably going back to top. Oh, never mind. They're going to be challenging. They're jumping right out onto Ace. They're not giving him any respect with this sniper rifle. And they're coming right down the middle. Ace not going to be able to land either. No scope has to back down. And he is just going to be running away. He's going to leave Tylenol here just to play sneaky. Tylenol knows he's alone. But he's got two players pushing on him with the repulsor. The back out was perfect. And that's going to be the cleanup that comes in. Good teamwork out of Mikwin and Eco. They're going to be trying to grab this camo, but Ace is ready for it. He's baiting it. He's not going to be able to do it because he's got a player right behind him. Oh, my God. The the Mauler brother, the Mauler sister, that thing works very efficiently. What is that thing called, Tony? <laughs> Yeah, the, the the mangler you, you have mangler. to respect it. If, 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 if you you got to go into the training, get look, get it used to it. You know, you got to pop off a few shots. But once you get used to it, it is absolutely deadly. As Ace gave the perfect kill and the no scope coming mm. in out of Tylenol, absolutely shredding Eco and putting him off the map. We have eleven to nine lead going in favor of Tylenol and Ace, and they're not done yet. He still has ammo in that sniper rifle. They're starting to up the tempo. Ace gonna take down the first player. Now they're going and hunting down the second one. Mangler shots are starting to hit that player. Gonna be one shot and ego and McWin on a roll. I love this gun. <laughs> it's just so much fun to watch. It's like a uh, like a, a magnum little shotgun. It's beautiful and it's only a one shot beatdown too. So it is pretty darn dangerous. <laughs> Trying to get the headshot there. I'm not sure if that headshot would have taken him out or not. Not enough damage was done. But we're only in a two kill game here. But Ace and Tylenol are much better off on this map. They are just having a good time. Let's see what Ace is going to do here, trying to play this one a little bit closer up on top middle. Top middle is going to play a big role. Oh, they're both there. They're doing such a good job at just being at each other's shoulder and baiting and switching. Mikwin and Eco playing super aggressive still. They are trying to hunt down Tylenol and find him, but Tylenol dipped, man. He was out of there fast as lightning. And oh, look at that. That was a great hiding spot. It is going to totally surprise both Mikwin and Eco, and they take them both down. Still a two-kill game, though, but they are playing exceptional. Sniper about to be up. And to be honest with you, these are some of the questions that I have about McWin. You know, when you have a high-octane player like McWin, who's always playing at 100 miles per hour, getting into the face of your opponent, sometimes, you know, or KD might not be able to catch up with them. So he's currently three and nine at the moment. We're game number one. He was going off, having 16 kills. Beautiful play coming out of Ace, going in for the double kill. Oh. Ends up getting the squad wipe by himself. Oh my, and, and now he gets the invis. The invis was not clicked on mine. You guys know how this works. If you don't click that invis, it's not getting burnt. So now he's able to get that clutch double kill, able to get the invis. Ace is going off right now. But again, McWin three and 10. I, I need to I need to see some consistency out of him if they're going to win the series. Man hasn't competed in a long time. That's yeah. going to affect you. I mean, you'll come out hot, uh, but I mean, this is a map that these players have a lot more experience on. They have a lot more than just a day's time on it, so that might be helping them as well. You know, Mickwin's played Aquarius quite a bit. And that gave him the edge, but not so much on live fire. And they've got to play it twice, but also Aquarius as well. So we could very much go down to that game five, uh, like you were talking about. I didn't predict it, but it might happen. The commando does just enough damage. That should help Tylenol to secure that kill, and it does. We are only four kills away to time this series up. And this is the way I like to start a show, Tony. We got Ace, the global champion in halo 4 tylenol the world champion in halo 3 and 2v2 he has shown that he is just dominant he also won the twitch rivals recently both of these guys are on fire in their competitive careers meanwhile eco hasn't been too been putting too much time in really i haven't seen him in too too many tournaments um mick wins same thing obviously he's been an employee at 343 he's been working hard on this amazing game and that's just, it's going to be the prediction for me. I have Tylenol and Ace taking this series because they have just been putting so much work in the past two or three years, and it has shown. You know what? I mean, you, you may not have seen the grind coming out of, uh, of Eco, at least um, with Halo 5 and maybe even Halo 3, but I will say that I was, uh, I, I was, I was casting some pro series on my stream yesterday. I was going through the streams, and Cloud9 were playing as a full unit almost the entire time 
They were matched against, let me tell you, they were matched against some of the best. We saw the match against Envoy Squad. We saw the match against E United. They were putting in that work 22 to 18 lead, still in favor of the boys in red. Mind you, camouflage in the hands of Eco right now. So if anybody can, can, can utilize the resource to come back in this game, it's going to be Eco. He can be the MVP right here, right now. Currently sitting at 15 kills, having a player in front of him, but so patient as he takes down Tylenol. Now Ace gonna be by himself. Can he take advantage of the numbers? Ace trying to go in for the cleanup kill on the one shots, but he's not there baiting and switching to perfection is McQuinn and Eco, and just like that, they're within striking distance night. They are. It is getting down to it. That sniper is going to be so huge. They're just going to bait it out a little bit. I don't know if the flank is going to come in. No, they're going to just both be firing down the line. They are going to try to just play the shields game, do a little bait and switch here. I don't think there's going to be any flank being made. Both both teams are just staying on opposite ends, trying to not let that sniper get away, but it does. The sniper does get away, and that is going to be very, very bad news. Mikwin is trying to hunt him down, trying to be a little sneaky here. Oh, no, he shoots his gun prematurely. That's going to give away his position. That was a huge blunder from Mikwin, and that is going to pretty much secure an amazing position for these players. Mikwin had a great flank. He could have taken the game away from them right there with this control. Now they've got tower, they've got weapons, and they are going to be playing this one very, very conservatively. They do not want to give up anything, but this camo being up, they're not making a play for it. They're just going to give it up. Sniper is going to be probably watching it. Yep, it is. So they're just going to be backing up. They're not going to be taking that bait. They've got a player from low, though. He might be crouching on up. He's He's coming. He's just going to be waiting, seeing if he can get a call that a player is weak, and then he'll pounce. He's got this heat wave in tow. Tylenol just playing this one as slow as possible. Camo still up. Ace wants to make a play for it, but there's just not going to be an opening right now. This is still a lot of good control right now. Eco and Mikwin playing this one smart. And we're going to see a possible use of this camo right now. Oh, he didn't pick it up. And he gets taken down. Only one kill to go for both teams. We're all tied up, Tony. We are going down to the absolute wire. We're tied up. It's 24. The sudden death. Next kill going to win. An active camo is actually still up at the moment. The shots are starting to fly out by Eco. But he goes one shot. He's not able to play his life. And that's going to be it. Ace and Tylenol sneak in that win. And our series is tied up. Good lord, that was clutch. Being able to just make that play. Ooh, those skins, though. Let's talk about was it for that, a second. That, that, kill? <laughs> that black and gold looking so smooth out of the Space Station gaming. Love it. That's my absolute favorite skin. Oh, my God, Eco, you absolute monster. 20 kills. Oh, my God. Nine assists from Mikwin. Give him his due, but damn. Eco, <laughs> just... That was a hard carry if I've ever seen one. And, you know, I talk about who who the best in the game is, right? Not, and I'm not talking about the flashiest. I'm not talking about the best Slayer. Obviously, Royal 2, Frosty, they're fantastic, right? Like, they have won two world championships. Shotzi won a world championship. Renegade, those guys are incredible. When we're talking about overall, I talk about Eco, Mr. Kevin Smith. This man is a demon. In the, the big limelight, when the most money is on the line, this guy absolutely knows how to play some very good Halo. He is a dominator when he wants to be. We we just saw Cloud9 win the Sentinels 30K. At the time, it was the biggest Halo tournament online, and he, he took it away from Sentinels. He took Sentinels' event away from Sentinels. And, I mean, this man, this man is just... Amazing. Him and Penguin, essentially, they, they they played outstanding during that weekend. It was amazing to watch. Eco is just crazy, and you see it right there, only losing by one kill. Had Mikwin made a little bit different of a play there, we could have we could have seen that easily go in their favor. He had the drop on that player. That player had no idea. Like, the peripheral vision wasn't there. He's not playing on 120 FOB. You can tell right away because he was looking right down mid lane. He To his left was Mikwin, and Mikwin fired off a shot prematurely. He had those Astros cranked, and he immediately turned around and got the no-scope beat down on him. Oh, man, those are the little things that matter so much. We're in a single elimination event with winner takes all. 
Every decision matters so much. We're going to be jumping on into game number three, though. This is Recharge. Remember, there's not going to be a sword on this map to be using. No sword, no hammer. That, the hammer right there, that's, that's not on it. So it's just going to be all-out warfare for this power-up on the bottom middle. Um, we've got, we've got a, a lot of different ways to play this map, but I have no idea how Dubs is going to work. This is going to be new for me. Well, we're gonna find out right here, right now. I mean, you still have all those other resources such as the grapple. You know, you still you still obviously have the commando. Even the needler can absolutely rip shields in half. So there's a lot of there's a lot of toys you can play with as the camouflage is gonna go in the hands of Ace, trying to stay alive here. He's gonna take some pressure. Tyler on luckily right next to him. They're gonna maybe they can work a little bait and switch action. Damn, you saw he wanted it. He's got the camo. He would have had camo sword. He would have been an absolute devil here on recharge but he's gonna have to play this one sneaky i love them just basically holding hands both teams doing a great job at it oh the stick though that's gonna be amazing and eco wins the duel versus tylenol excellent trade there i mean non-trade excellent ability to win that one out eco coming up big in this series so far we've got three repulsor charges in his back pockets so he has got a lot of danger, a lot of dangerous equipment to be using right now. And he's going to be playing super aggressive, just flying out at this player. Mikwin's going to land a perfect grenade off, oh. and they're going to try to trap Tylenol here in this corner on the spawn. He needs to be aware of this. As soon as he saw two, oh my god, he takes them both out. Tylenol is am amazing. That is ridiculous. I don't know if it was just a perfect grenade or what. But Tylenol does those big things. He is really on fire right now. He's going to feel good about that one. Let's see if he's going to be able to drag some of that momentum into the rest of this game. 20 seconds until this new camo is up. They're going to be playing for that. And all three of those repulsor charges go into Tylenol's back pocket. So he's going to be able to use those shortly. And he currently has all five kills of his, of his team at the moment, but he has to stay alive. <laughs> One shot try to actually backing down over towards Maintenance Bay. Throwing excellent denial nays. Insta-spells coming in, but nobody home just yet. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Mangler in the front pocket, but he has two players just staring him down. He's going one-shot. He's going to try to stay alive. I'm not sure exactly where Ace is going in for the weak side flank, and they're able to take down Tylenol. Now Ace is going to be by himself. That might be the initial kill that Eco and McQuinn need, but Ace doing a good job of defending things by himself in his 1v2, and Tylenol coming right off the spawn to get the cleanup, and here comes our red team roster. Ace still does not have a kill. He's got two assists, but Tylenol is carrying the full load right now, and they're tied up. That is just incredible. Plasma Pistol beatdown does not work. It is not effective. Oh, my gosh. Ace is having a rough game right now. The shock rifle is in play. Let's see some headshots with this thing. And another one of those weapons, you know, we talked about the heat wave. We talked a little bit about the disruptor, which is actually on this map as well. The shock rifle is absolutely deadly. We're going to see exactly what Eco can do with it. Missing the first shot, but it's like he almost connected with the second one. He's going to be taking some heavy damage and Tylenol coming in for the cleanup. Once again, Tylenol having all seven kills for his team at the moment. Ace having two assists to go on the board, but Tylenol is going off. Hey, whatever works, right? Like, if, if this is what is necessary to win this series, then by all means, Ace will take that goose egg any time. Like, as long as he's getting that money at the end of the day, he'll take it. As long as, long as Tylenol can do this, if he can keep consistent play up on this map and go all the way, so be it. I'd love to see a 25-kill game out of Tylenol right now. Here we go. We're going to have both players cleaned up by Mickwin, though. He comes in. That was all started by Eco, getting both players down to no shield. So you got to give a lot of credit to him with the three assists, zero out of Mikwin, and he's trying to land some of these shots with the shock rifle. It's not going to happen. That BR range hits like a truck. It's not going to be able to connect with that one either. The ammo is about to run out. Perfect shots being landed by Eco. He's going to back out. Ace is not going to be able to push him down there, so he's going to be able to secure an easy camo. Backing up with this shock rifle, he gets help. Oh my god, Ace's first kill was a amazing. And he baits it out for Tylenol. Tylenol gets the kill. They're playing incredible right now. Yes, he only has one kill, but it was a good one. 
you know, I was just thinking to myself, what a clutch kill coming out of Eco to steal away the camouflage. But then Ace and Tyler are coming right back at him, bouncing back off a of spawn, making this a game. It's 12 to 10 going in favor of our blue team roster. However, our momentum is still in favor of Ace and Tylenol shock rifle in the hands of Ace, but he is going to be taking some heavy damage and the information has been received. Eco and McWin can collapse on me. He has to be careful here. Yeah, they're playing the corner game right now. I've played this a couple times in fours where you just you hang on to this corner and then the other team will be set up over there towards the commando spawn and you're pretty much just playing a, a slow-paced game because you're at a disadvantage pushing on both sides. Like, it's incredible. Like, both sides have so much advantage over the mid and it's like two bases, holding down two bases and that's exactly what they're doing right now. They're maintaining some good ground they're holding on to this shock rifle, trying to do as much damage with it as possible. Good shots are being landed by Eco and Mikwin, but Ace is still just making sure to stay on top of where they could be going. There is no aggressive plays being made just yet. It is still just a two-kill game, and we've got plenty of time on the clock. Six minutes and 20 remaining. That up-close up close game is going to come in right now. They're going to be pushing it. Eco and Mikwin trying to make something happen, watching their flanks. Both teams watching the flanks because they don't know where each other are right now. They totally just rotated around each other. There we go. Finally, we're going to see a play come out. Shot comes in, makes that player weak. And, oh my god, great aggressive play from Tylenol. Going to be able to get in there. And then Ace also picking up his second kill. So they have got some great control right now. They've got camo. That's going to be huge. And let's see if Ace can garner a lot more kills. Going to be trying to find out their spawn here. And there we go. I probably saw him. Yep. Saw him easily. Eco takes down Tylenol. He's in a tough spot right now. He doesn't need to go for kills. He just needs to play his life. 14 to 12. Eco and Mikwin with the lead. Ace just got to play this one to get to Tylenol, and there we go. They're going to be regrouped and ready to bait and switch right now. Hopefully Tylenol is able to get there in time, but he's not. The, both players, Eco and Mikwin, just jump on top of Ace, and Ace, Ace is having a rough game. I'm telling you, it's, it's the Tylenol and McWin show at the moment. I think that was a beautiful bait and switch coming out of McWin and Eco, and now we're on the over Tylenol. Oh, but that player coming right out of the corner. Excellent shot by Tylenol, but it's not going to be enough. Eco going to get the best of him out of that one, and now Ace coming looking for the cleanup kill. He's going to go in for the challenge, getting the easy kill. Does Ace, but the second one's going to take him down. That's going to be McWin and his 12th kill, and now we're seeing a four kill lead. Now we're seeing some separation in the scoreboard. Eco and McWin are playing phenomenal fun the mental halo and it is showing right here right now one more charge left in this grapple so mick one's going to play aggressive here try to get up in here get some little peak going he knew that they were going to be waiting for him though good job backing out there's not going to be any chase coming in oh never mind yes there is we got the commando out of tylenol and he gets in and just takes over 12 kills out of him you were right it is the mcwin tylenol show and he's got the shock rifle the closest thing to a sniper that he's going to be able to grab let's see if he's going to be able to hit some crazy shots with it oh i think he connected with that first one excellent accuracy from this man ace is going to try to make a play over here to try to clean it up but it's not going to happen he gets called out and uh, some shots get landed. He's got to watch himself. Some good communications probably coming out right now. Tylenol might get an angle onto both players. But it looks like there's not going to be any any type of push coming out of Eco and Mikwin. They're playing this one very conservative. This two-kill lead and only three minutes. They want to make it as smart as possible. Any push they make has got to be smart. And they're going to be coming in hot. Mick went able to grab that one, and there they go. The push was good. Ace goes down, was not ready for that at all, and now Eco is set up in the middle of the map. He's going to grab this grapple, watching for spawn. Every time Ace and Tylenol start to make some headway into the scoreboard, Eco and McWin get a clutch squad wipe, and, and, and it's, it's making it really difficult. I don't think Ace and Tylenol are playing bad whatsoever. I think they're playing well, coming back into the game over and over again, but Eco and McWin just happen to be playing a little bit better. But mind you, 
the first kill gonna go in favor of Tyler on ace we actually see somebody out of eco and McQuinn actually gonna rotate out now going in for the challenge the trades are gonna come in beautiful commando shots come out of Tylenol now going in for the challenge and that's gonna be a double kill Tylenol is slaying he has 15 kills on the board this is exactly what I wanted to see from this world champ 2v2 player winning that one with trippy trippy being the two-timer he, he won the Red Bull 2v2 LAN with penguin so uh, we've got some amazing 2v2 players in this tournament right now a big cleanup coming out of Tylenol right now and they're still very much in this one he's gonna get weakened and the player pushes it and secures that kill that is going to be perfect out of Mikwin and Eco but Eco gets shut down Ace is gonna grab one but he's cleaned up and there's only two kills to go here Tylenol's got to stay alive Eco's gonna be in good position here to support Mikwin, so this is gotta be a time where he just gets out of there and then there you go the flank comes in and takes down Tylenol from behind the camo is going to be absolutely massive playing that camo is so important in twos you do not want to have that player running around especially in infinite when you can just activate it whenever and here we go this could be the final kill the chase comes in the shots are landed and wow. that is going to do it a perfect out of Mikwin secures the win. That was crazy. We saw, oh my gosh, we saw McWin kind of be the champion of getting that 24th kill. Even though Ito was the one who got it, McWin putting that damage over towards top A, then throwing that nade to deny at the exit route for that player to get out of. I believe it was Tylenol, so he couldn't leave. Next thing you know, his teammate comes right off the of spawn. Ito gets the kill, gives him that 24th kill. Then, then while McWin had camo, as the camo was winding down, I saw the kill feed. Eco actually went down, giving Tylen on Ace that 21st kill. If they were able to take down McWin, get the spawn, or uh, get that, uh, uh, I guess get that uh, that squad wipe, and then hop on the spawns, we could have seen a much different result. But McWin getting the perfect kill when it matters most, getting that clutch kill, that 61.90% accuracy. Let me tell you, that perfect kill helped that just a little bit right there. Beautiful clutch up by McWin. Yeah, uh, I was hoping there'd be a double back there from ace to try to help out tylenol to secure that kill and we would have seen a very very close game towards the end but it just did not happen aquarius a dominant showing from mcwin just absolutely taking over he, we know how this is gonna go game four hopefully tylenol and ace are ready they know what to expect and are are going to be on top of that camo spawn because that really was the key. That was what changed everything. They just did not let it up. Like, there wasn't a single time where Ace and Tylenol were allowed to walk away with it. So here we go. We're going to get the rematch of Aquarius, and this could decide the winner of this series. I'm going to be honest with you, Alex. I'm not feeling comfortable about my prediction here. The last time we saw Eco and McWin on this very map, they won 25-13. to 13. Ace and Tylenol, I'll be honest with you, didn't, didn't really show me much on this map that showed me that they can win or the win on Aquarium. Now, game two, that's when it was a lot closer. It was a 25-24 win going in favor of Tylenol and Ace, but that was on live fire, not on Aquarium. And that, that may gonna kind of go a little haywire. The Ace kind of made himself a little bit, but luckily it's not gonna matter because he ends up taking down McWin, and I believe he even gets the camouflage. <laughs> That thrust is insane. Ace does get camo, though, and that is a very, very important thing to do. They didn't get it once in the first game. So starting this one off strong, hopefully they're going to stay on top of that. It's every two minutes. It's a static timer, so it's going to be easy to keep up with. Both teams are going to know when to fight for it, and it's going to run out, it looks like. There's not going to be any play. Mikwin and Eco are doing a good job at just staying off the radar, so to speak. And that is going to be it. The camo's out, and they were not able to use it. So very effective stalling out of Eco and Mikwin, and then they're going to pick up both kills. That was just genius. That's exactly how you play high-level twos. doesn't matter what Halo it is. You let those power-ups run out on their own. You play keep away. Ugh. 
Yeah, you especially have to do that with the camouflage. Like with overshield, you can kind of use coordination and try to outsmart your opponent by melting that overshield and staying alive. But with camouflage, it can just come out of nowhere. So you really have to kind of play the, the long game, play the defensive game, wait for it to, to go out a little bit as McGuinn started to get a little bit aggressive here. Excellent shot. Taking down the first one ends up getting a double kill squad wipe going in favor of McGuinn. And just like that, we have a 5-2 to two lead in favor of Team Cobra. McWin getting as aggressive as possible. You're seeing his little movement abilities, his insta explodes. He is showcasing everything that he has learned over the, the past year or so working on this game. And it is really incredible. He is just very, very efficient here with this heat wave. He's going to have a player trying to get the kill. Oh my god, the heat wave is able to land but he didn't get the br out in time he threw a grenade instead and that is going to open it up for ace and tylenol to possibly get into this one this camo is going to come up pretty soon and that is going to be huge i'm not sure if they were if they were able to, to grab any of the equipment if there's any thrusters out they, if there's one charge here in ace's thruster he's going to try to use that to stay alive it's not going to happen they're going to double team him and the camo is in the hands of eco and that is very bad news he's got two charges of thruster to work with they need to do the exact same thing that mickwin and eco did to them I think one of the things that not talked about um, about fundamental Halo is understanding the flow and the timing of, of of what's going on in the game. Understanding like like you have to know precisely when to have your reticle ready because you have to understand every single movement around every corner how you're able to, uh, to reach out how you're able to stay alive and it seems like mcquinn has an advanced understanding of the timing in this game and eco has the awareness to match is able to get that double kill and hold on 10 to 4 lead going in favor of McWin and Eco, and they are one win away from advancing forward. There is still plenty of time left. They could easily make something happen here. Let's see what they're going to try to do. The top middle is controlled. The camo is about to be up. Eco putting these out is going to put a lot of massive damage into Ace. Ace gets picked off right away, and oh. Tylenol goes down as well. The incredible team shot from Mikwin and Eco right now is just too much for Ace and Tylenol. They immediately get melted, and now the spawns are being hunted down by Mikwin. He's trying to see if he gets any type of oh my god the camo's up they need to grab this the contest <gasps> mcwin lands his shots eco it's a crossfire and <laughs> mcwin and eco are able to win it out they take the camo this is looking very very good for them they are just set up for success this heat wave is going to be nuts almost takes himself out in that shot but that's okay <laughs> Tylenol does grab that one. That's going to be a good sign. And Eco's all by his lonesome taken down. So if there's going to be a comeback, it's going to be right here and now. It has got to start, and it has got to be great. They have got to get going because all that the other team has to do is just play keep away at this point. But it doesn't matter. Eco's going to keep the aggression on him. He's going to be able to pick up one. Ace, last one alive, isn't going to challenge Mikwin. He's just going to try to get the heck out. But Mikwin's on the hunt. He's like, where are you going? Where are you going, boy? I'm going to get you. I mean, uh, Ace is able to stay alive. Okay, so he has been alive for a while, and he is not able to get the one-shot beatdown off. Very unfortunate. That shot did not connect well enough to be able to get that trade. And it is still going to be an eight-kill game right now. They are doubling the score of Ace and Tylenol. I'm going to be honest with you. You're much nicer than I am. In my mind, this game is over. And, and, and the, re I mean, the reason for I've been spectating a lot of Halo over the years. And one thing I feel like I can tell is when a player is confident. And right now, McWin has all the confidence in the world. He's bouncing around the map with that swagger in his step. His spark is just moving different right now after getting the big double kill. Putting the 12 kill on the board. Whipping out that heat wave and going in for the kill. And that's going to be a 20 to 10 lead going in favor of McWin and Eco. They have now doubled the enemy's team score. This is such a one-sided affair. Aquarius, that map, it's just McWin's playground. He knows exactly what to do. He knows every single angle. He knows all of the equipment, all of the weapons. And uh, yeah, 
He uh, he's he's got a little bit of advantage here. It's going to be tough to be able to take him down on this map. He is just playing outstanding. Tylenol, though, he's got the mechanics, and he is able to win out on some big fights. But it is just too little too late at this point. They can pretty much play the clock at this point. Not that they will, though, because look at Eco. He's just like, I don't care. I'm going in. Well, I mean, that ego is well aware that they've afforded themselves to make, you know, one or two mistakes. I mean, I, I think they can afford <laughs> to make one or two mistakes here. And at this point, they really they can really just play for trades and still come out on top as Eco building down some excellent shots, forcing that player to back down, having someone coming up right on the weak side flank. He's well aware of it, but he's not sure exactly where he's at, and he's going to come off on top. Ace and Tylenol making this very hard for McQuinn and Eco. And one, I mean, hey, it's not over till it's over, right? But, uh, I mean, it ain't looking good. <laughs> Well, they're going to try to make something happen. Tylenol needs to stay up here. Uh, they've got 10 kills to try to win this game. I mean, even if they're trying to tie it up, eight kills to come back with four minutes remaining. Almost an impossibility, but they're going to attempt it. Oh, no. Ace not going to be able to get even the trade there. Gets taken down after getting the first couple of shots. And here we go. Tylenol going to be possible final kill in this series. He's just trying to get away. Eco's taking plenty of time right now. The camo's about to be up, but he's just going to be waiting this one out. He gets some good calls from Mikwin. Mikwin's going to tell him exactly what's going on so he can play this one effectively. He just needs going for the trade. He gets the <laughs> beatdown off, but the shots weren't enough. He doesn't get a full two shots in to get that beatdown, and there you go. Mikwin does with 17 kills on Aquarius. That is absolutely his map. He played incredible on it. He was just jumping at both of them every single time and winning every gun battle. That was insane to witness. He was just on fire on both of those games. Uh, not so much on Live Fire. Live Fire was a different yeah. story, and Recharge was much closer. Um, but overall, a great series. We saw some amazing stuff out of both teams. But Eco, I'm so glad to be able to witness him in 2v2 now. We have been trying to get him on Money Tuesday now for quite some time. I've been wanting to see how he can do against some of the best in the world. And he is already showing that he is uh, somebody to be trifled with. Uh, this man, you don't want to mess with him at all. He is just dangerous. He's been playing excellent support for Mikwin. And then he, and then he goes in and gets 20 kills on recharge, almost single-handedly carrying Mikwin to a win. Uh, I'm sorry, that wasn't recharge. On live, on live fire, he got yeah, 20. Insane. Absolutely insane. Looking at that damage there. 5,000! Oh, my. <laughs> Tony, 5,000 damage from Mikwin. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my gosh. Excellent debut coming out of Eco, Mikwin. Let me tell you, he's my MVP of that series. And, you know, when you think of McWin, you know, you think, you know, I think of that entry frag player. I think of, you know, the APGs of the world. I think of the bounds of the world who are going to be putting down as much damage as possible, being the, on the front lines and opening up so many lanes for their teammates. So sometimes in the scoreboard, you can see them literally go off. You can see them drop those 17 kills, drop those 16 kills. But... You know, sometimes you're gonna see the the you know the opposite, like we saw on Live Fire earlier, where he's still being effective on the map. His damage is still there. He's still you still have to account for him on the map, but sometimes the stats are on his on his, on his side. But either way, there's no doubt that he opens up lanes for his teammates, whether it's twos, whether it's fours, it doesn't matter. But I'm, I'm, but we talked about the debut of Eco. I'm gonna have to talk to you, Eco, because that man set tripping a little bit. I don't know if you noticed, Nighty. He got the Cloud Nine armor on, and he got the Phase B on. He rocking the red with the blue. That man set tripping. We go. We have to talk, Eco. We gonna have to talk. Eco, <laughs> what, what you doing, man? What are you doing over there? But looking at this bracket, we've got Frosty and Renegade coming up next against Eco and Mikwin. They're gonna be playing. We're gonna try to grab that one because that is gonna be an amazing matchup. But we've still got. Some other stuff going on. We've got Stellar and Penguin going to take on Royal 2 and Snakebite. That is going to be insane. Cannot wait to see that. Stellar, obviously, is the champion of the Envy 2v2 tournament, where we sent uh, our, our champion players to go and play in that event. And Stellar and Renegade just dominated in that Envy 2v2. So Stellar is a 2v2 champion in his own right. And so is Penguin. He is the Halo 3 2v2 champ. 
But then we've got Trippy and Lucid taking on Kratos and Suspector at the bottom. I am looking forward to see how that goes because that is going to be interesting. We know Kratos. He's a character. We know he's going to be talking that smack. And he's got the quiet demon on his side, the Suspector. He is the runner-up in the Halo World Championship 2016. He did some amazing things at that event, just dominating the rest of the teams across the board. Nobody could handle him. Uh, he even put up some really good games against the champions themselves, Optic, Frosty, Snakebite, Lethal, and Royal 2. I mean, Suspector is the real deal. He can really hang with the best of them. I'm looking forward to seeing that matchup indeed. Uh, it is going to be something special. And then Bound and Boo Boo Doo Boo taking on Pyretic and Vimsy. Pyretic and Vimsy have had some incredible games against most of our best duos. They were able to take down Druck and Soul Snipe in the Halo 5 Money Tuesday in our event that we held. They were able to take down tons of other professionals. So those m names not may not be too recognizable. But that's okay, because they know exactly what they're doing. They have upset some amazing teams in the past, and they're looking to take this event tonight. You can guarantee it, Tony. I mean, there's plenty of storylines here. You know, I would I would love to see maybe Frosty and Kratos meet up in the finals. I remember watching, I just watched Frosty's uh, uh, montage recently, and he puts up an excerpt of uh, Kratos calling himself the best player at Halo. And then right after that, just shows clip after clip of him literally destroying the lobby, including Kratos himself. So it was really interesting. I would like to see maybe Renegade and Bound. You know, we're talking about the undefeated champions of Money Tuesdays not playing with each other. What if they match up? I, I just so many storylines there. You know, uh, potential teammates can match. You know, Frosty versus Snake Fight in War Two, Penguin and Stella versus uh, <laughs> versus Renegade. We can see potential teammates go at each other. So, uh, so uh, so many storylines can be created, and I can't wait. Uh, I thank you so much, LVT Production, for throwing this. Halo yeah, man. Infinite needs this, and uh, we're coming up yes, with the next do. matchup with you guys real soon after this uh, after this quick break. To it, it just it hits different this time, uh, Garrett. I feel like you can very precisely nail uh, you know a full perfect kill with that psychic. We'll see if they pick it up. But we are on the map, Aquarius, and we are on board with the man Trippy and the BR already to kick things off here. It looks like he's already got sights on somebody <laughs> above him. Can he chase down the kill? Doesn't need to, because Lucid's already hitting shots. And this is something to watch out for in this tournament. I've been I've been lurking in this man's stream, but he doesn't miss already, Garrett. This man does not miss. Oh, no, he's he's too good to be missing. And this is a dangerous combination. Lucid, look at it. He's got the heat wave and the camouflage to work with. He's going to be able just to get up close and personal. Uh -oh. And you're going to get shredded in a half a second in that case. Uh, look at that. Absolutely stood. No chance. Going to get the early kill up 3-0. And there's still plenty of heat wave to work with. Lucid's looking to chase this one down here. Speaking of doesn't miss, hopefully he can oh hit God. these. Of course he does, right? You love to see these boys pull the strafe out too. So quick, so snappy in this game. There's, especially when you, you bring the dead zones into the mix here, you can just very quickly on a dime pivot and pull off some Ooh. sweet plays with it too. Heat wave back out for a clean killing spree at a Lucid and the game has only just started. He's got all the kills to himself. Man, that thrust, it, it's a bit Ooh. different from what we're used to in Halo 5. Yep. The initial thrust looks so fast. It's more of a combat mechanic than it was exactly. a, a map traversal mechanic uh, that we saw in Halo 5. And it makes a big difference in these fights. Expect them to, to use those thrusts to, to try to get that extra shot. But so far, man, KCP, the, the duo, they got to figure something out. Druk and Soul Snipe doing their best. But that Heat Wave still standing strong in the arms of Lucid. And he's still putting oh it God. to work. He's taking the fight the thrust puts him into a wall but he's Ooh. gonna be able to finish it and honestly i've been watching a lot of pro gameplay thus far and lucid has one of the best shots in halo infinite and it's not close it's it isn't even close and i don't understand this man's sensitivity every time i, I go look up his settings he's always got this wild sensitivity i'm pretty sure he's rocking like six horizontal and nine vertical and four excel like he's got very fast sense but he controls it like a laser beam and i just don't understand how the man does it. You better check him out uh, on his live stream when you get the chance, but I'm sure we'll see plenty more of him. Druck, in the meantime, though, does have the heat wave. This is what we've seen dominate time and time again here. As long as he can hold on to this and hold on to the thrust, which he does have one in the back pocket, I think he can get things started. 
Yeah, stabilizing only down three, uh, you could be in a much worse spot, right? I mean, that's not yeah. that's not the worst spot to be in. Lucid, I mean, look at that stat line. He, he's seven and three after that last death, but he went absolutely hammed to start this game. And now it's about getting back into it if you're drunk and soul snipe, and it's gonna come down to these shots from Whoa. soul snipe as he's able to take down Trippy, but not gonna be able to survive the follow-up. Lucid will find the kill and he needs to hit the four, oh. but not able to get away. That smack comes out. And Mr. Druck comes out on top. Garrett, I got to say, the return of the uh, the thrust back melee lunge, I don't know if you spotted it, but it's still in Halo Infinite. If you time that thrust back, but that player initiates the lunge, they will chase you. They will lunge and chase you and get that kill. So it's something to watch out for. And uh, I'm sure we'll see a little bit more of it come into play. But just loving the thrust uh, and the way it works on this map and the fact that you have to pick it up makes it just a little bit more powerful, right? You can shoot the entire way through the thrust. There's no animation to wait for. It's just lethal because of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly oh. thought Druck maybe had his shirt off because he was looking like Tarzan the way he, oh. he thrust it. That's forward. a game three, Druck. Oh, a game he does, three. He takes the shirt off if he's losing, right? If, he, if he's got to bring it back, he'll pull the shirt off. There we go. We finally see that that clamber actually surprisingly like not the easiest thing to hit trippy. He's able yep. to get up to the top platform, but you'll often see players miss that clamber to get up to top mid. You know, we're only a day into this game. Mm. So there are opportunities to, to really mess up your movement and get punished for it. Not so far from trippy as he's patrolling that camo is up, but they need to get the picks before they can go and get the easy grab. Lucid will find the first on soul snipe. And now it's just about finding the roaming truck. The camo's in the hands of lucid. And this was what got you in the hole in the first place. Perfect. The heat wave is there. The thrust comes through. He's able to isolate the angle, but not survive. But that grenade will force him away from the heat wave for now. The insta oh. is not going to work as soul snipe gets the kill. He's going to be able to take down camo and reclaim the heat wave for his team. You got to love the attempt, though. It, it's something I didn't expect to see so early in Infinite, but of course, I mean, bringing Nick when uh, out and watching, you know, this man's skills with uh, two years explience, the insta explodes and, and just how prevalent they are, especially on a map like this with tight corridors. You can you can line up so many uh, great plays with it. And uh, and it's only just the beginning of what I expect to see from these boys. Of course, Soul Snipe in the meantime doesn't have the teammate, does have the heat wave, though. So excellent backup plan. But you can see these boys hot on the aggression here. Soul Snipe in trouble. And Druck hopefully going to get there in time to help out to clean up something. Lucid right now. He's got a beat on Druck as well. So going to keep this man back and thrust in the back pocket here, too. You can just see the relentless pressure out of these boys on spawn here. 15 to 12 about to, about to you know be a lot different in just a second if Lucid catches this man. Man, a little bit of a movement tech right there from the boy Lucid. He gets into yeah. that fight fast. You can use those ledges. Let's try. Why don't you talk about that for a second? Because that was an interesting tech from Lucid. I mean, out of the, the players that I've seen so far, the pros that I've seen so far, Lucid is one of the few fully taking advantage of the curve slide, of the drop slides. He's he's implementing it, uh, you know, where possible and at the best timing, too, because as powerful as it is, it's risky. But Lucid seems to have that timing down, just, you know, sweet spot timing the slide on ramps. To get that extra boost or to use the thrust to get out of dodge right quick but so far so good just baiting and switching with trippy to make sure they get these kills looking for another he's going to take the br shot can he get the kill oh. yes he does that thrust once again it is an absolute right. game changer in the gunfight that get let him get the opportunity to get on top and if he can get another kill he's going to be able to secure the camouflage for his team the assist comes through he's looking for the angle but not he's going to be found out by soul snipe and soul snipe going for another kill the thrust comes back out oh. the thrust wins the fight once again oh my we're seeing a it's little bit powerful. of a different game plan this time from our previous match the thrust looks to be the biggest game changer thus far but we just saw what happened right there you cannot pick up the camo while you have the thrust you have to drop the thrust pick up the right. camo and reapply your thrust and that's a dilemma these players are going to have to deal with here we'll see it once again just make sure he's holding that pickup button down he does have the camo and uh unless he burned that thrust out he'll leave it behind either way the, the score looking quite overwhelming even with the thrust in the back pocket sometimes you just can't get away especially if uh if trippy's camoed up and hunting you down one kill left to close this out. At this point, I think it's pretty chalked for the boys on red here, Garrett. And they're going to be thinking about game two and what they can do to uh, to turn uh, turn the dime here. But man, Trippy Lucid just looking a little too good in game one. And they'll close that one off to, uh, to end the dominant opening game for our series. Uh, the Optic Duo get it done. That's all I can say. These guys look prime. And look at that. He, he's got a Hydra. He, he's already spent money on some on some new uh, of ending screen right there. Look at that.
Uh, let's take a look at this stat line, though. And honestly, it's the story of Lucid. He absolutely dominated the beginning of that game. He went 7-1 and one to start. Ends the game at 14-6. and six. But, you know, when you have that big of a lead, it's, it's very easy to maintain it. Coming up next, though, sniper rifle to worry about live fire. Yes. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a different game. Who can control that sniper rifle? We have two very talented snipers on either side. You got snipe. You've got heat wave. You also got the repulsor though that we'll see come into play. And and that's the interesting thing about Aquarius is just out of all the maps we've seen so far, Aquarius seems to be kind of snowbally, little little momentum based, right? There's so much to control that it has such an adverse impact on the game that if you can control those those items, it's very difficult to turn the game back around. Live fire a little bit different, right? You don't have the thrust anymore. The snipe, the heat wave, obviously very powerful, but your positioning going to be so important. We saw a lot of rotations in the last series. Uh, and, and I wonder also how that repulsor, how that drop wall will come into play here, whether you can bump somebody off the map or go for a wild jump. There's a lot of potential uh, here. I can't wait to see these boys take advantage of. Well, we saw the drop wall play an impact in game two of the previous series, where if you yep. drop that drop wall while another player is hiding behind a wall and they're not aware that it's dropped, you can absolutely get the, uh, the first shot on the other player because they're going to push out. They're not going to know. And all of a sudden, bop, 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 you're down and you're getting on the respawn screen because you can't hit the enemy with your first couple shots. And uh, it can absolutely make a difference on live fire. There's a lot of opportunity for you to place that down while the opponent isn't looking and gain an advantage. It's nice to see the updates that they made to it over time as well, right? The uh, the drop wall, I remember it being quite a bit smaller. It's gotten larger this time. It's a little bit more effective. Uh, the deploy time is a little quicker too. Obviously, it's not quite like a bubble shield. You're not supposed to be using it as a last last resort. It's more of a you know a setup kind of lane style tool. But if you can get it at the right timing, it, it can really change the game to change the tide of a of a gunfight. So, all little goodies to take advantage of as we jump into this map here, Garrett. Uh, I just want to see who gets that sniper rifle first and who's going to put it to work. In the meantime, while we're waiting and looking at these beautiful cinematics, guys, exclamation mark giveaway in the chat. If you're interested in anything HCS, we have two, count them, two VIP tickets and $500 in cash for you to Damn. walk around with and have a good time at HCS rally in December. You got to go and claim it, exclamation mark giveaway. And who's going to be giving away this sniper rifle off the start as we see <laughs> Lucid finding the shots. He's going to find one. Soul Snipe gets the trade out, and it's going to come down to this fight to see who gets the sniper rifle. Lucid missing the initial shot, but gets back early and takes down Soul Snipe. And this is the last man you want to see with a sniper in his hands. Some clean shots at a Lucid taking advantage of the crouch and the strafe, too, just to be a tricky target. But it all comes down to the snipe. And don't tell me he already hit a body here. Going to have to back off, though. One shot for now. They got the intel on where he might be. Trippy, of course. Hopefully nearby to help him out. But Lucid. Can he line up another planer? The sight lines on this map so long, right? A lot of options to work with. He's just got to get the intel from Trippy, who's Trippy. Trippy seems to be handling himself uh, on his own pretty nicely. As long as they stick together, keep the weapon out of the hands of the other boys, then uh, they're good to go. Oh, just Here. gonna miss that one. And it, like I said, the, the, this isn't like the H5 sniper rifle. It is not forgiving whatsoever. You no. need to hit your Ooh, shots. He He's able to get the body tag on one. But looking for the other, we can see that dot on the top of their heads. They cannot. He just has the presence to know, and he's going to be able to find the blade. I love the ragdoll mechanics. We're seeing go for the no scope, young man, oh. and get it drunk. Goodbye. You're gonna, we'll see you eight seconds later. Hey, you can take all the aim assist and magnetism off the snipe. It doesn't matter for somebody like Lucid. He will nail his shots. The spree, he hits it, gets the double. The man is on fire already here, Garrett, and uh, he's got a repulsor too. What's this oh man going to put together? Oh my, look at that 24 seconds till the next, uh, till the next gamble flash. He's going to miss that first sniper shot and with only one left. He's going to find his opportunity. Look at this. They're going to give, they're going to push out towards the, the commando side and they could potentially be giving up the camouflage yeah. if they lose these fights. Oh. Trippy's going to find the first though. Oh. And now they're just trying to find the cleanup. The sniper does not connect the noob combo neither. And the, the push, oh, oh my, he's going to be able to the find juice. that kill. It gets immediately traded out, but does the camo take an advantage of it? Yes, it was. We see, I believe that was Mr. Soul Snipe get away with the, actually Druck that gets away with the camouflage uh, as they were cleaning up that fight. Soul Snipe was, oh, wait a sec, Druck. Oh, oh perfect. perfect use oh. of the stick. That's going to give him free access to the, uh, the heat wave and the repulsor as well. So some tools to work with. And this is how they need to make the comeback, right? You take control of these weapons, play together, bait and switch when you have the opportunity and 
you might be able to swing things here. Not too much Campbell left to work with at this point, though. Not a lot of intel. Oh, he's got it now. He's tagged up in the back, right? So the moment you find them, sometimes it's too late. If you don't have that info, the Mangler as well. Very powerful weapon coming into play here. We'll see uh, how loose it can play it. That's a big change, right, Alex? We're used to the, the Halo 5 camouflage that really lasts uh, quite a while. Because of your ability to pick up camouflage and put it on the body, the time that you get it is much shorter. And we saw mm -hmm. Druck not quite used to that change yet. Gets caught out at the wrong time. And look at that. Well, I we love go. this mechanic. You can just Strat. drop weapons. Uh, such a great thing. He's going to be uh, loosely going to give the sniper away to Trippy as he uses his pistol to find the kill. Oh, my montage. Oh. My guy, what is he is he oh, showing the off the multiplayer for Xbox right now? Tell me he's got this he's got the spawns down too. Oh my. Just yeah. waiting for it. This man continues to cook. He's gonna repulse the nades away. Get off me, right? Make sure nobody gets close to this man as he holds the sight line down. Tell me he continues to connect here. Lucid just looking to be like a one-man show mid-game, and he's still got the audacity to stay close to them too. Trippy spawned up other side. He's hitting oh. bodies too. Snaps onto both. He'll leave him one shot. Trippy, we'll see if he uh, if he can get in there with the challenge. But at this point, they've got all the goodies back in their hands. Remember, guys, you can hold down the Y button to drop this weapons job. for your teammates. He opts not oh. to. The sniper not going to connect in the face. But I believe he did get the body. I don't know if that camo went on the body yet. But we can see if Druck takes advantage. Maybe potentially find himself oh. a camouflage. Nope, it was. No, oh, no, it's still there. It's oh, there, there it is. So camo back in play successfully pulled it off here but they look at that the flank coming down from low he's going to have to back out of this one too but the pressure looking just a little too strong here can he pick up a trade he does and at least they'll walk away with a kill in that situation but down by eight here not looking too good for soul type especially if you're running into a he waved the double beat down does not connect i believe that uh i think it was lucid he will walk away with the kill there yeah that first beat down just not quite able to to connect with it unfortunately the commando in the hands oh my Lucy, you can see the the skill gap already with this commando it is a hard gun to use he tried to repulse the nades away could not get it done and now this is the opportunity that this kcp duo has been looking for they're starting to get some kills stack them on up they're only down six it was eight and then get a couple more in a row we go. we're gonna have ourselves a game kcp with a little momentum Got some tools to work with for this, but don't want to lose him too early here. Just getting challenged right away, though, right? There's no hesitation. Trippy Lucy working so well together to pick up off of each other's damage. That's two dead once again. Down for the one trade. And the heat wave back in their hands. How's Trippy going to play this? Something we saw in the last series was... Uh, the last series was way slower, right, Garrett? Like, mm -hmm. these boys are full aggression the whole way through, taking full advantage of everything. And, uh, and I love to see it. We haven't seen the sniper play as much of an impact as we saw the previous game. Uh, the heat wave <laughs> making its uh, making its way though. I mean that thing Definitely. is absolutely deadly when you get up close. The sniper going to be coming up in seven seconds in conjunction with the camouflage. What are they going to prioritize? It looks like sniper for the moment. He's checking the camo, mm -hmm. making sure no one gets on it instantly, and he decides to go for the wrap. Is it going to work to his advantage? He finds the first couple shots of the heat wave. Oh, the stick comes through to do the damage and let the cleanup happen. And soul snipe gets two, and now he's going to be able to get the camouflage. And with that, he could find himself the sniper rifle as well and if he can get sniper camo he's gonna be in a great spot he goes back for that heat wave only four bullets left in it i think you just drop this for the sniper if you can unfortunately his timing is lost mm -hmm. as he's gonna have to walk around and try to Wait. potentially find a new angle it. oh no he knew, he knew. Oh, no oh, oh no. i mean not ideal right you wanted that kill without the trait at the very least truck he does have snipe he will tag body the man's got to get out though at the very least just rotated out of this situation and, and hopefully spawn up with uh, or have a uh, soul snipe spawn up nearby drug he's only got so much to work with here five shots in this snipe to make a comeback in the game it's not unwinnable gary he could do this if he can start to tag heads here but so far looking very grim for the man soul snipe is he in tow to help out the flank Threw down low from Trippy, Lucid, they take it. I mean, I think they took the game with that one, Garrett. Yeah, that's absolutely going to be the game changer. If there was any opportunity for Druck and Soulside to come back, it was going to be off those two kills and maintain the power weapons. We see Trippy trying to stunt with it. He's going to be able to find one, get the second. No, unfortunately, just going to miss the shot. And he's looking for more. I think he just got, oh no, I thought he got stuck oh, by his teammate. I was <laughs> so close. 
is looking like the final kill right here. Just chase him down. 25 to 16. Uh, almost identical to the last game. Unfortunately for Druck and Soul Snipe, just a one kill uh, a difference. An improvement. But they got a lot more work to do if they want a chance in this series. Just one more to close it at a trippy and lucid. Well, let's take a look at our map rotation and see what's coming up next. It should it was recharge. be recharge. Guys, they're not going to be able to use the sword, unfortunately. That's a, that's going to be off the map. It would have been interesting to maybe see how they played. But it was a gentleman's agreement uh, across, the, uh, across the competitors that, hey, the sword doesn't seem quite as fun. I want to see what the damage was. And yeah, that drop drop is three. Look and you said once again, dropping massive amount of damage. 4K this time. So I, I saw the damage uh, taken and dealt. I realized they add, of course, they added the damage taken stat, a big new addition to the scoreboard here, and, and something we'll see a lot more in fours. Uh, but, you know, just drunk and soul snipe, of course. As much as they try to dish it out, they're taking just a little bit more here. This is a perfect example of, uh, of the gunfights we've been seeing, though, too. And saying you know just the combo of the strafe the crouch uh, and the accuracy out of this man when you start the game with a snipe like this and tag these boys in the way that he does he'll, he'll go for the uppercut here too Ooh. right man is just so clean with it already dude it's been one day come on yeah, he gets the headshot obviously the observer mode that uh, tricking us still, a little still bit observer right? <laughs> yeah uh, you know that was a headshot uh, you know the maybe observer mode we'll, we we'll can't escape that. it can we <laughs> But uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll count it as a head. I love that. Yeah, once again, the slide tech from uh, Lucid. He seems to be the one that's most comfortable with the movement thus far. We've seen him do a couple of those uh, drop slides, a couple of uh, curb slides from him. And uh, I expect we will see that more. But here we go back to recharge the map that makes me feel so blue. Man, there is a blue <laughs> aesthetic on this map for sure. But uh, what do you think? What's the key to victory on this map, Alex? Do we have the shock rifle in play on this one? I believe yes. we have uh, a shock rifle in play, right? So shock rifle going to be key. You got what I believe is a camo bottom mid once again. You've got two equipment items. You've got the the repulsor and the grapple this time. As powerful as the grapple could be in fours, I'm curious to see how it plays out in twos though, right? It's, uh, it's a very aggro move to go for. You're very committed when you go for it too. So it can be very risky, but uh, useful on the rotation, at least in the meantime here, Trippy. Gonna try to lock down things with Lucy. We got a flank coming in, but Trippy, can you get a get it? Get his hands on it. Doesn't need to he'll hit the shots, but he'll drop as well. Lucid, can he trade out his kill? He will. So net positive for the boys on blue. I thought Trippy was playing on a mouse and keyboard for a second, man. The, the way his radical was moving was he's yeah. playing a bit fast. Obviously, mouse and keyboard is an option. I don't think any of the players today will be using it, but in the future we could see some mouse and keyboard players. That shock rifle gonna take the shield off of Druck, I believe. And he's going to have to back out for now. But this is the first map that we've seen with the grapple hook. And, man, the plays that you can make on this map with the grapple, it gets me just so excited. And we already see Lucid using it to maneuver the map as well as he can. And, oh, oh he gets the trade. That's the two-shot beatdown. Did not miss one bullet. If you miss one bullet in those two bursts, you will not get the trade. The biggest thing I expect to see are quick escapes and rotations. It can be very risky to attack with the grapple, but just to get out of dodge, just to speed up that timing to collapse on a spawn, it can be useful, of course, unless you're being double teamed. That'll drop him. Nice little rotation. Did he just skip that without the uh, the clamber there, too? Lucid hitting all the movement already, uh, though it won't matter. You got two guns trained on you. Yeah, you get hit with four bursts in half a second right there. My God, my God. He got <laughs> absolutely shredded. No thrust Melted for that. my... Ooh, KCP, we need to see more. We need to see more of that from Drunk and Soul Snipe. That team shot absolutely shreds in this game. I mean, I don't know about you, Garrett, but I want to see these boys go the distance. I want a series that gets to game five. So, you know, I'm looking at Druck. I'm looking at, at Soul Snipe. And uh, hoping that they can pull something together here. Uh, he went for a stabilize on that one. And it still seems like it's uh, worked out. He's reached the ledge. He's got away with what he wants. And that's the, that's the worry, right? Is Brock Soul Snipe. They, they have not gotten their hands on any of these tools. I didn't know you could get a perfect kill with a shock rifle. Not going to lie. But he just shot that he did it. Oh, my. He absolutely gotta, shredded with it. I think the way it works is you want to shoot for the chest. And then the recoil lifts it up to the head at the end of the shot. And then you get a headshot to kill. So it's... Uh, Ends up being perfect, but it's a it's difficult to pull off if you can do it. Uh, you know, you, you net quite a quite a prize. 
Going for the shock rifle once again. Not quite able to connect this time. Druck looking for the drop down. Not going to find it, but he... Ooh, I like go. that small grapple. You know, even though he's not going far with that grapple, just moving your timing, being just that little bit faster can make the difference as he's going to be able to find the trade on Trippy. And now there is uh, his teammate spawns up, but he's not going to be able to find Lucid. Oh, there we go. The trades come through. Oh my God, they are just flying at each other right now. And it feels like we have a train of trades as once again, Trippy's going to find the trade out on Soul Snipe. Going to keep their lead by four here also. Cross map shots coming in here, but Trippy, he can get right up in this fight too. Drops the shield. Can he finish this kill though? Bit of a windmill coming out of this one. And uh, it looks like he won't get away from that one uh, all, either. Soul Snipe can also help from above. So Druck and Soul Snipe going to turn this situation around just a little bit. Assuming they can hold on to their lives here, Lucid. Putting a lot of pressure in with the grapple. There's the grapple actually coming into play aggressively. You love to see it. Then Trippy answers back with, with four great shots to take down Druck on the other side. And he's going to, this is such a power position, right? You can see so much. You can see into Turbine. You can see into Top B. And you can get the cross from Tower. And you can even go and, and find an angle and to see just such a power position up in this tower as he's going to throw the pre-nade. Is he going to be able to get the damage to get the kill? Yes, he does. Trippy finds one. Looking for two. My God, we're My seeing God? that close. And B oh, the BR fight does not go in his favor. But we expect to see more of that on the HCS broadcast. The up close yeah. BR fight is so tough. That reticle moves so fast and you have to be able to track. I love that mechanic about Halo Infinite. It's not that forgiving with the auto aim. It's, yeah, it's just the combo of the reduced aim assist and the speed of base movement uh, that can lead to some, you know, incredible close range gunfights here. But already these boys looking so comfortable regardless of where they're at. We've got a repulsor in the back pocket here, a soul snipe just down by four. So definitely still doable. But can they at some point here start to control the game, right? They're always kind of fighting from the back foot. And they need that intel first. And here we go, cross map. One shot, can't seem to clean it up. Druck not quite in position to do so either, but good high ground out of Druck here, and Soul Snipe just on the prowl looking for a, a flank in the meantime. They're going for their grapple. The grapple going to be uh, a thing that you oh. will want to go for, but Lucid, look at that. They're playing separate, right? This is, there's two ways to play twos, right? You can play up close with each other, make sure that, hey, if someone comes to you, you're going to have the perfect shots, or you can spread yourself out, try to control as much of the map as possible while maintaining angles. That's what Trippy and Lucid did right there and allowed Lucid to find an easy kill. And look at this. They're oh. doing the same thing. Lucid no way. Providing cover fire while Trippy gains his shields back. They're making themselves to be hard kills, and that's what it takes to win games. As we see the kill column start to favor this optic duo as Trippy and Lucid maneuver the map like some they've been playing this game like, like it's been out for two years. I love the way that they move oh. around the map, but the out PR comes in and they have to start winning those pids from now on. If you're drunk and soul side, there is no opportunity to give away any more kills. The comeback has to start now. I mean, Trippy and Lucid just looking a little different, you know, just looking a little too good at this point. And, and you got to love the speed of the rotations, the escapes, the, the way that they take advantage of grapple, and, and the fact that there's no nade hit markers as well. If you can quickly, you know, get out of dodge and they toss nades, they got no insight on whether or not they hit you. They might not know where you went, right? They don't quite have that intel anymore. So I find that these escapes can be just a little bit more powerful because of it, or you could just sneak up and pick up a close range mangler kill as well at this point 21 to 15 and uh and truck and soul snipe their tournament lives on the line for this one that mangler how much range does it have we look for the cross map shot lucid wow. he's going to be able to find the headshot with the br takes down truck and will secure the camouflage with it and now the question is what does he prioritize next this mangler can be absolutely devastating if you get the correct timing on it. i believe it's a two shot beat down right alex uh, no, I think it's a one, one shot. shot. Beat down. Ooh. I thought it was one shot. It. I, it's like, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Oh, well, you got the nade in first. Oh, yeah, he's here. just going to kill him. Good job. You know, he's, he's too so good say, for that. It's, oh it's two gosh. shot shield break, right? So I believe it is actually a one shot beat down, two shot shield break, and a three shot perfect. But it doesn't matter, you know, what you got in your hands, uh, whether it's, you know, a mangler or a sidekick. These boys will will ice up and hit their shots and, uh, and win a 3 0 as well. Garrett, my God, Lucid, Lucid and Trippy. Uh, the ultimate duo, and uh, and it's a good reason that he changed his, his uh, name tag. They're looking good together. 
Yeah, I think Drunken Soul Snap going to be dreaming about them tonight. Man, they absolutely just ran <laughs> through those games. Uh, pretty convincing victory. Drunken Soul Snap going to have to figure out a way to regain. We're going to see both these guys competing once again at HCS Rally in just a month from now. Man, I'm excited to see what Lucid and Trippy can do versus some of the name stays in Money Tuesday history. They're going to be fighting against some top names. And maybe we can see some uh, upsets. Maybe they're going to be, uh, maybe they could be in our finals. They look so good. Lucid looks like this game was built for him. Just based off of the Lucid gameplay I've seen on his stream, it's hard to vote against him. A out of all the teams in this tournament, I would put Lucid Trippy up in the top three easily. Uh, very curious to see how these boys stack up against somebody like Mickwin, because, uh, you know, the advantage does seem to be real. But, uh, but if you're as talented as these two are, I, I wonder if that advantage will matter anymore. Oh, man. I okay, wait, one second. Take this back. Let's see it. He gets it up yeah. first. So he, so, I feel like he got a hit right there, right? So No, if it has to be a one-shot kill if it's a perfect. Let's see it. So he so misses it, this shot. Let's see. Now, I love how we can take this frame by frame. I feel like he got a hit marker right there. Is that not a hit? No, no. It's just a, that's just a and... radical. Okay. So then he comes the back out. second shot that hits. And he has yeah. to hit it in the chest. Like you said, the chest ahead is how you get this perfect kill. It recharges. Oh, man. That Ooh. is a beauty. This gun, I think this is the one utility slash power, like the power weapon that isn't on a pad, uh, like a tier two weapon, like the shotgun, the heat wave, the shock rifle. The shock rifle to me seems by far the hardest to use, but if you can master it, I, can, I can't imagine the place. You can just lock down an entire lane with the shock rifle. And if you have two players Let's pushing you Let's see that strength once, again. Ooh, oh yeah. Look at this, by break the way. This, this is break just this only an infinite. I mean, what do I break down? They're hitting, they're moving the sticks left and right. And crouchy so quick, oh. man. And you, you know, the only thing I can imagine is you want to you want to get those dead zone settings right as well, right? You got the uh, the input threshold, you got the low dead zone to make sure that the tiniest movement in the left stick is going to give you that full speed left right straight, right? Like I'm sure that's part of it. These boys want to mimic uh, a mouse and keyboard setup as much as they can with that quick kind of tap strafe setup. So uh, I mean we're seeing it there, and I think the dead zones come into play in a big way. Oh man, I, I love that gunfight. The one thing I could say is, you know, there were some grenades on the launch pad. You could absolutely shoot those grenades. Maybe that could have made a difference in the gunfight. Yeah. Who knows? Oh, well, maybe, yeah. Shoot the, it, it, we haven't seen much of it yet. Uh, I saw a little bit, you know, back in Shotzi stream in the flight, but shooting nades is still a, a really brilliant way to play. You can do some extra damage, uh, get a little creative with the sandbox, or or just uh, take full advantage of the cover in front of you right there, too. But And based off of what we've seen, Trippy Lucid looking a little unstoppable uh but we've got so much talent here so i don't know what to expect yet and that's what makes it so damn exciting oh you know what's even more exciting I, we might have seen one a game with four of the most handsome men look at those pictures big one over the past three years and let me tell you having to play that guy for the past three years in just about every single game it's not fun like <laughs> he's been on you say he's been on fire throughout this tournament he's been on fire on fire for the last three years like he does not <laughs> miss shots he catches on so quickly. He creates a lot of the meta that we play at today so far. And it's very exciting to see him get an opportunity to compete against some of the guys that have been forced to play Halo 5 and Halo 3. So he's got that leg up. But, I mean, I'm most excited about the players that are going to be competing against him and how quickly can they catch on to the tendencies and how can they compete against someone with so much experience so early. And we're going to hop right in right now. We're on board with Boo Boo Doo Boo at the moment. Of course, the camo player. This guy was insane with camo in Halo 5. The camo aspects of the game don't change, so he's going to be insane here as well. Great shots on the Mikwin, going to take him out. And right away, we've got a little bit of pressure coming onto the Mikwin squad here. Let's see if Boo Boo can make value out of this camo. Hey, you, I asked myself, how long would it take for us to really figure out the meta? Boo Boo Doo with the flank here. Not the greatest shots with the scatter, but it gets the job done. Great successful camo play to get his team to lead. And I love seeing that out of Booba Dooba early on in this game. One of the big things about Infinite that we really want to push for is expanding the sandbox in competitive settings. Already, you see the scatter shot putting in work. And that's going to be interesting to see. What guns are people going to be able to pick up and get good with? A lot of these guns have a very large skill gap. So it's going to be interesting. This one right here, the Heat Wave. I've seen this thing be... People are dominating with this weapon. Honestly, for me, I haven't used it that often. And I'm already learning things from these guys on your screen. You're seeing Booba Dooba use it in that vertical uh, mode. Right. When he gets close enough to be able to land more of the, the AOE of the projectile, 
I mean, that's already, he's using it like a pro. Unfortunately, he does get taken down there. Mikwin and Nico are going to take back the lead. But Boobadoobo is showing you exactly how to use the scatter shot. Get into those closets, use it effectively with that vertical mode. You can do a lot of damage quickly. And Eco playing the spot that I like to play as the anchor back here. He's putting some shots in across the map. And you look at the score at the top top right of your screen. He's got four kills already. And mikwin has got a little bit of a goose egg. So hopefully uh -oh. he can kind of come through. The shots come through on the middle player here. He tries to stay alive. That's such a damaging nade. My word. Does a lot of damage to both of them. They're both going to go down. Found Boobadoobo, let me introduce you to the lightning grenades. Those things are going to be strong, and when you're standing that close together, they're going to chain damage off of each other, and they're no fun to be around. That's a nice, easy kill and great use of the lightning grenades. You want to make sure you're trying to control those as much as possible, especially on a small map like Aquarius. Boobu. On top center, of course, on the camo again. Can he win this fight? No. So that camo is going to drop down. Another aspect of Halo Infinite, being able to pocket that camo. If you don't use it, you run the risk of losing it. And right there, he did. I'm not sure if anyone else picked it up. You see on your screen right now, Mick, when he's got the thruster in hand, another really great equipment I love to see being used. They are going to end the game. I believe Bound was, uh, he had lost connection to the game. So we're going to have to figure out what the brewings there are, but I already like where your head was going there, noticing that Mikwin has that thrust, noticing that what was Mikwin doing as we went and had to end that game? He was going for the other thrust, so his idea of how to play twos is going to be try and control as much of the sandbox as possible, stacking the thrust, limiting the opportunity that his enemies were going to have there. We'll figure out what the technical difficulty is, but... I'm sure we'll get right back into gameplay soon. Yeah, we'll definitely update you guys as soon as possible. That, that's such a big aspect right there that you said. Stacking those thrusts, I believe it goes up to five. You can stack up to five. And in Halo 5, you spawn with the thrust, right? So it's such a game changer to be able to have that in your back pocket when you're one shot on that last shot of the four shot VR. You're able to kind of use a thrust to get out of a situation or whatever. That thrust packs a punch. There's a lot of speed to it. So you can really get out of a lot of different uh, situations where you're stuck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's there's no amount of value you can put on some of the equipment we have in Infinite, right? Thrust being almost what feels like a guaranteed fight win if used correctly, especially because unlike Halo 5, your opponent more than likely does not have the equipment. Right. So you have the ability to snap thumbs and win BR fight and change the tides and the outcomes of games if you can scavenge correctly and then use that equipment effectively. I had a feeling we were about to see Mikwin do a little bit of that on, on screen for us, but unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to wait for just a couple more seconds before we're able to see that really, that story told. And that's, I really like the, the sandbox feature, right? Because you, you start out with a BR, you don't have a secondary. I love that decision making because it forces players like 343 wants to do to use the sandbox. And, and it's the same with equipment, right? You can only use one. You can only have one in your back pocket at a time. So if camo is up and you've got a thruster, you've got to kind of drop that, maybe let your teammate know. There's so many like different aspects to the game now that are added and just makes it so interesting. Yeah, I, I think that it's going to be difficult for some players to adapt to that style, right? right. It was difficult for me personally. Uh, I wasn't a, an extreme scavenger of the game. I just kind of wanted to figure out more so the, the nuances of spawns and control and what that means. But if you're not involving the rest of the sandbox in Infinite, you're only playing, like you're limiting your cap space, you're limiting your potential, your ceiling. So. We'll see how players can continue to develop meta and continue to uh, play to the strengths that are, are going to be given on the map as well as around the objectives with spawns, rotations, teamwork, and whatnot. But it's it's a whole nother package and level to unfold, especially if you're coming from the Halo 3 days where just about every map is BR snipes, maybe a rocket launcher, and right. a carbine if you're lucky, and Hoax doesn't already have it. Definitely a lot more simple. You see on the bottom right of your screen there, Eco News needs 23, Eco's team, and then Bounds team needs 25. Something I do want to mention, we are running a giveaway right now at LVT. Exclamation mark giveaway in the chat, guys. $500 given to uh, someone who wins, as well as two VIP tickets to the first event. And if you know anything about standing in line 
at events. They're very, very long lines. And the VIP ticket, it allows you to skip that line. So definitely a big win here. You can bring you and your friend to the event, have a little bit of uh, money to, to spend to fly or for a hotel, whatever you want to spend it on. Just a great giveaway by LVT. So make sure you guys definitely get into that one. A little rumor that Tashi might be getting the Dr. Pepper chicks back in the booth for the VIP oh, ticket baby. holders. Wow. You know, surrounded by hot chicks in Halo. What else can you ask for? Maybe some pizza. <laughs> Call it a day, and, and that sounds like a good weekend to me. Definitely. I, I You know, I, I'm looking at this layout here. Of course, uh, this is kind of called the uh, the recharge sandwich. You got recharge as game three. Aquarius live fire recharge. Aquarius live fire recharge. Uh, I, I mean, Aquarius is, is one of those maps that Nick going to be really strong in. We, we've seen that in every one of the games that we've watched so far. Live fire, uh, people have a little more experience on that. And, and this first game was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be at the start. I mean, we didn't get to see too much of it, of course, but it was really cool to see that, you know, the Boo Boo keep up. It, that, that was great. So we're going to hop in, I guess, I guess right now, we're going to hop in again. And, uh, you know, like I said, 23 kills, I believe, for Eco. And uh, that's all they need, um, 25 for the other team here. So we'll hop in here shortly. You saw the sidekick on screen there. As a mouse and keyboard player, I love using that weapon. Yeah, um, we're going to get right back into game one. You said 23 for Mick when team. It's going to be 25 for Bound and Booba Dubu. Already a little bit more intense of a start, I'd say. They're changing it up. They're not just going to give away lightning yeah. grenades this time around, but unfortunately, Bound is going to go down as soon as he gets to that camo. You see, Booba Dooba is no, in no position to try and make a play for it, so a little bit of a reverse roll here at the start of the second game, to, uh, game one. Yeah, it's going to be tied 2-2 two to two as well. Slow down just a tad here. We're on board with Eco, who takes the top center control. He's going to opt to drop here. A little bit of a risky play, just searching. He finds this player in front of him, gets him down. Nice shots there. He's going to take out one, tries to take out the other. He does with a nade. That's going to be two down and a 4-3 to three lead for Eco's team. All right, so we're hopping on board with Mikwin. Camo, a lightning grenade, and thrust. The guy is fully kitted. That's probably the biggest power upgrade you can get on a map like Aquarius here. He's got information that the player is going to be in blue closet. The other one's on blue flag. So this is basically Mikwin's oyster. We're just going to be able to see him dissect, see how he wants to play it. I love this play by him because he's cutting off the extension to lightning nades, doing a ton of damage, and here comes Eco Smith with the first kill. And you see he's already going for that next thruster as well, and now he's got three in his pocket like you were talking about earlier. A 5-3 to three lead so far. You see they're playing real close together. They're literally holding hands, and they're able to get every single kill here. The teamwork is phenomenal. Another double kill out of Eco and Mikwin. Yeah, great teamwork. I mean, these guys, they're such good friends. They play together all the time in previous Halos. It's no surprise that they're going to have the same level of teamwork here early in Infinite. It's a shame that Mikwin has to wait an entire year to be able to compete, but understandably, a nice trade there to swing some momentum back towards Boobadoobo and Bound, but they need to figure out a way to get control of the map and a lot of these sandbox items because right now, Mikwin and, and Eco, they're running the table. And speaking of sandbox items, you have that lightning grenade, you know, you also have the, the disruptor, I believe it is, and both of those things keep players to one shot for so long if you stand near them or get hit by them. And I love that aspect of the game because we're talking about a health battle here right you, you want to get your shields back as, as much as possible but if you're in twos and you keep someone one shot for a long period of time that's it and there's mick one with another four i believe that was a four or five shot he's got such good accuracy in this game i mean mick one's one of the best shooters to ever do it right best point and clickers that halo has ever seen he's probably top five in my book i've been having to play against him for the past three years and it is not ever easy and he never takes a day off with that shot so no surprise to see it here we do see booba dooba and bound with a little bit of top mid control here they have mikwin and eco stuck at yellow but it looks like they're gonna opt to kind of back up I, I don't hate this play you're in control of the heat wave you need to position yourself to use it a little bit more efficiently you're gonna rock some shots off the ceiling they're gonna get you an assist that's a great job by Booba Dooba and Bound. Win this one on one, and you're right back in this game. There it is, nine to 12. The comeback is a potential. That was a big swing, and it was all based off like just the power weapon control, right? Mm. Eco, my goodness, great kill, shifting the momentum back once again. And you're on board right now with Booba once again, taking top center control. Such an important spot on the map. Camo, you see it coming up 28 seconds from now. He's going to play his life here. 
just do his best to stay alive. Going down bottom center, just trying to get an angle. Gets an assist there as well. So great job by him on that. And they're up by four right now is Mikwin and Eco still holding this lead. Boo Boo inbound. They've got to get a couple kills here without any traits. Yeah, Boo Boo is going to be hiding on that ledge for just a little bit. He opts to relocate. Actually, has perfect timing on the flank. because. You see a player going for the lightning grenades. This is actually a very dangerous position for him to be in. Mikwin throwing both lightning grenades. No success, though. Boobadoobu takes him down. I believe Camo's coming up shortly. The last player alive is going to be stuck on the bottom of the map, and that's a free Camo for Bounds. It's Bounds game to take over here with Thrust in his back pocket as well, and a trade is not what you wanted to see. Yeah, I was going to say a, a little aggressive there by Bound. He had Camo, and like you said, a Thruster as well, and he was not able to stay alive. The value of that Camo being nearly zero and we're on board now with Boo Boo again, playing his base. Just he has his he has his uh, teammate right next to him. They get they're holding hands often here. He knows who this player is. I like the collapse here. Oh my mm. gosh, no! Unfortunately, they're gonna ex extend this lead even more. Yeah, I'd like to see them group up a little bit more. Like these sight lines on Aquarius, they're very specific. I know the game's early. I know we've only been playing for a day. But that wolf pack mentality in twos is going to be so vitally important today for the winner to take home $5,000. You have to figure out a way to consistently be able to help your teammate when he needs it. No trade even came in for Bounder Boobadoobo. And right now, 19-13, to 13, you see Mikwin and Eco only need four more kills to end this game one. Yeah, this is where it gets really risky, right? They, they, they can't get any trades. They can't have any trades happen. Because if they do, it, it, the game's going to be over. They, they just can't afford that. The, right now, you're on board with Boo Boo again, holding the base, this anchor position. Sees a player in front, going to get a couple shots down. And I like this little wrap around here. They're no longer holding hands. They're going to go on separate angles and try to do a little bit of a pinch. But unfortunately, the defense is too strong. I like this push. Finally, some aggressiveness out of Boobadoo, but Mikwin's not going to expect that to happen. And he gets the free kill on the Mikwin because Bound gets great damage. Bound spots the second player as well, running into the flag. And now they're going to have a ton of information to play around. The map is all of theirs to, to scavenge and whatnot. They need to be capitalizing on some of these thrusts. They do get that next camo, though. An unsuccessful camo for Bound the last time around. Can't have that happen twice, especially not in an intense game like this. You need to figure out a way to use this to come back. The first kill on the Mick one is huge, but can he stay alive? And that's something I really want to point out there. Ba Bound and Boo Boo, you, you look at their equipment, it's it's empty most of the time. But if you look at like Mikwin and Eco, they're always taking advantage of those thrusts. They're always making sure they get them on board with Eco here. He's got 13 kills in this game right now. And of course, one of the most powerful weapons in the sandbox right now in his hands the heat wave he's got the vertical angle the direct hit comes Sheesh. through nice assist there his teammate right behind him that's what i'm talking about they take the same angle they're in the same position all mickwin knows that if kevin wants to play in this closet with the heat wave he's not going to have a sight line or an angle to help him unless he is actually with him because of how little of the sight lines you have with these doorways in this situation so mickwin in a perfect position to finish that kill so quickly <coughs> They get one step closer to ending game one in their favor. Oh, but that's a big turnaround right there. They just got two kills. Makes it 17 to 22. If they can continue that type of pressure there, Mikwin was in a situation he couldn't get out of. He didn't get help quick enough from Eco. Here's the one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that's a big win on to Mikwin again. It's 18 to 23, though. They gave up another kill. Yep, that's going to be game due to the reset. We had a two-kill lead for Eco and Mikwin going into that game. They don't need just those two kills to separate themselves from Bound and Boobadoo in game one. But if it's anything like the last time we saw Mikwin and Eco play, they were a very strong Aquarius team. By the time Interlock came around, we saw Tylenol and Ace have a lot of success. Bound and Boobadoo, you're going to have to figure out a way to get back in this series here in game two. And that's the story, right? What, what's going to happen game two? They've got a little more experience due to the flights here. Bound played pretty well. 11 and 14, three assists. There's so many assists, though, on the red squad. Look at those assists. We're going to go through and watch the damage here. This is my favorite statistic. Of course, the accuracy, 57% out of Eco. Great shots by him. Uh, another 50%. Look at the damage right here. Damage taken, 4K for Bound. 3,500 for Mikwin. So just Mikwin and Bound just being a nuisance on the map. I always like to pay attention to the shots fired, shots hit right. statistic. I know that when we're talking about using different weapons in the sandbox, a lot of times those can be skewed in different directions because of heat waves or snipers or rockets, right? Um, but 
One of the things I love most about Micklin and his uh, gameplay specifically is the fact that it is so hard to shoot more than him. This man puts himself in a position to where he is sending rounds down range at enemy players consistently. You'll, it's, you hardly ever see someone shoot more and do more damage than him. And right there in game one, that was a big reason that he and Eco were able to come out on top. Eco playing phenomenal for it only being his first game as well. He's got a little bit of a help. I'm sure Austin is gonna be coaching him up a little bit, but they're doing a phenomenal job of taking the same angle, understanding that to play too successfully, we have to be able to capitalize on each other's damage. And depending on the map, we have to take similar sight lines. We have to take similar routes. Just mainly that wolf pack mentality that you have to have. Bound and Booba Dooba, they're more than capable of turning the series around here on Live Fire. But it's got to come on the back of some scavenging that you want to see them do. Unfortunately, we didn't see that in game one. We definitely didn't. And and a big thing, I'm really excited for Mick when I want to go back to him. You know, he's he's got a year here where he, he cannot, you know, compete, obviously. But but the guy's going full time streaming. He's fully committed. He's he's got the day marked where he can compete again. I'm really excited to see his growth and see where he comes and where he goes with Halo Infinite and, and kind of where he stands on, on, you know, you said he's your top five, where he stands on the leaderboard in a year, like where he's at as a player in a year. Um, you know, he can't play in any HCS sanctioned events, obviously, but he can play in these types of events uh, that, you know, people allow him in. So. I'm excited to see his future. Of course, Found and Boo Boo, they do have something to prove, right? Live Fire is going to be a map that they've got a lot more experience on. And it's going to be, I've seen strats of, you know, holding the heat wave down bottom center. I've seen, I've seen you know, people hold the tower. So we're going to have to see, like, you know, what their strat is. Do they hold hands again? Like, what kind of plays are, are going to be made here? I think you can be much more creative on a map like Live Fire with how you and your teammate want to play the match. Other outside of Aquarius. Aquarius is very standard. It's that onslaught style of, hey, like it's a straight line, you got three lanes, and if you try to go anywhere, we're gonna probably see you and you're not gonna get too far, right? We're able to trap you in different corners and bases. Live fire, I mean, we have bottom, middle, top, middle, like there's so many avenues and routes to get different places that you're able to catch someone off guard if you get the right timing. You're able to play a little bit more sneaky. You're able to figure out what side of them like it's okay to rotate with snipe to maybe a poorer position or an angle because you and your teammate feel more comfortable to create space between you and the enemy team so be very interested to see how booba Dooba and bound kind of capitalize and how they see themselves having success here in this 2v2 much more to control on this map as well right you got you got the uh, the sniper up top you got the heat wave down low as well as the camo so just much more to control here we go we're hopping right on board that fight in the middle for that sniper who's gonna win it here eco gets the kill on the bound and that's gonna give them sniper control and top control as well but great trade there but uh, it, it, it's gonna take out eco a very fortunate trade, I'd say. Booba Dooba with the flank at the start because he chose a lane that nobody did. Mikwin and Eco worked together to get the first kill, but a good job by Booba Dooba nonetheless. He got the he got the trade, gets some team an actual one kill lead here, but unfortunately, I do believe Mikwin's gonna have snipe, but bound with the overshield is gonna have an oh, we're gonna have a reset and I think that's probably fortunate for Mikwin and Eco that they that we have a reset because that overshield could have been a major problem. Oh yeah, the, and the the OS is, is a weird one, right? Again, uh, being able to pocket it, this has kind of been talked about before, but you know, being in the middle of a fight and taking cover and then popping that OS, you can wipe two, you know, players who think they're at an advantage. And, th and that's what Halo is all about, is, is taking advantages of people's health. That, you know, you of course had that little streak behind you when you have a OS, you can visibly see that someone has a OS, but if they play correctly, play behind cover, that OS can be very vital to, to a, a, a team wipe and, and give you that extra two points to continue your lead. Yeah, I love the fact that you pocket, uh, pointed out the pocket opportunity that these players are going to have with power-ups. And in a 2v2, I think that that dynamic is magnified because Agreed. in a 4v4, when you opt to not activate that power-up immediately, you are at risk of potentially getting caught off guard by one of four players on the other team. When that's divided, I too, and only ends up being two players. If you have an idea of where these players are, what weapons they have, what information, like it's so much easier to gather two players information rather than fours. Right. You're less likely to get caught off guard. Therefore, you're less likely to die activating that overshield. Great point. And that could be a real opportunity to expand and to min max the amount of damage you can take and output 
very quickly in a fight and in a 2v2 that overshield is going to be only magnified with importance the extra amount of shield is going to be so important in every single fight because every bullet matters when it comes down to these top players and and, and i, I want to kind of go uh, on another power weapon on this map again the sniper you know i've had such a hard time myself i'm on mouse and keyboard uh, Wes and I've had a hard time using the snipe like being able to hit the shots being able to uh, just be accurate with it if it feels like the zoom it, it, I'm not used to the zoom and how much it magnifies and uh, I, it's another skill gap and I, I really enjoy that and that's something that 343 has constantly talked about is increasing the skill gap I am all about that I'm all about you know watching these players develop over the over the months of grinding you you want something to show for that you've you've been there done that you know you put all that time in the, the bigger the skill gap in the game, the more you're able to showcase, you know, your time that you put in. And and the sniper is one of those things that, you know, it, it, it I feel like there's a big skill gap to it. And then once you get it, you can like really pop off. Yeah, I think that we haven't even began to see the skill gap in this game. So exciting. And, and that's and that's a scary thing to say because we've had some professional players playing this game for yeah. three years and the amount of games we've played in those three years have probably already been surpassed by the competitive <laughs> community alone. So it's, it's very exciting to think of how the meta is going to shift and how they're going to continue to push the limits of this game. I'm sure we'll have to make changes with, with the live service. I think that's more than something that we're going to be ready for. But here we go. The game has started. We already have a tie game, but Eco going to be out there by the power up. You'd love to see Booba Dubu and Bound be able to somehow contest for it, but right now, Mikwin, I think he's going to be doing a great job of denying any potential they have for that. Yeah, and I just wanted to update you guys. Bound needs 24, Mikwin needs 25. So just a one kill lead here, but it could really make the difference yeah. in this game. I I'm excited to see if, if Boo Boo and Bound are able to kind of hold their own. Right now, unfortunately, they're down by two kills. It's still so early right now. And part of interlock is going to be where did they spawn and did they decide to move off their spawn or are they playing slow? But grenades are going to give all the information to Eco that he ever needed. Spots one player back back tower gets the information that he went up top. Got to be careful here though. There is a second player down there, and unfortunately he didn't expect two players to be top tower, and because of it, he pays for it with his life. Mikwin going to be trying to get out of dodge here. He lost his teammate. Wants to keep the scatter shot in control. Get some good damage with a distant Ooh. shot. Make it a perfect kill with the BR. Don't do it to him, Austin. And that's another thing, too, with the BR. Again, skill gap wise, like the BR is not that easy to use. You hear a lot of people complaining about hit registration and stuff. I honestly, personally, do not think that's the case. I think you just need to be perfect. The oh. repulsor play in the middle. Great job. And now he's going to have an angle here with the heat wave. Doesn't hit any shots, but the sh uh, the BR shots come through. Mikwin going to chase this kill, gets the cleanup. And now they've got camo as well. And I believe that's why they restarted the last game. I believe it is camo on this uh, on this map. Yeah, great job by Mikwin to just secure so much space for Eco to come get that second overshot of the game. He's going to pick up an easy kill on a player running with his tail between his legs. Spots the second player pillars. And as long as he patiently plays this, he should be just fine. That's going to be his fourth kill of the game. Eco. I mean, we can talk about how much of an advantage Mikwin's going to have playing in something like this so early as the game's release, but Eco Smith, I mean, we can't talk enough about how impressive his gameplay it consistently was for the past three years of Halo 5. Did a phenomenal job when we switched over to Halo 3, and now it's a pleasure to watch him master a new craft with Halo Infinite. I think that's the exact word I was going to say, consistent. He just a consistent consistently really good player and that you don't find that often there's a lot of players that kind of pop off you know at moments and they have their their great moments and then they have their not so great moments he's kind of just consistently just intelligent and it's just great to watch him maneuver the sniper is up he's gonna put some shots down and does a great job of staying alive you see mick win. look at that little pinch right there they're they're not able to clean up the player but now they're going for the chase there's two of them in front of them can they get these kills yeah, they're in such a good position here, but they do get hit by a nade, so Eagle's going to be forced to play his life. Austin Mickwin going to be aggressive here, gets the actual first kill. The second player, I believe for Bound and Boobadoo, -boo, I can't tell if he went down there or if he ended up having to run out. I believe he went down. Mickwin with the snipe going to land a body shot on the player spawning outside by Silo. Knows that both players are out there, but unfortunately can't turn the corner. And now Eagle's going to be in a pretty tough spot. That 
was a massive blunder by Miklin and Nico. They had full control, power weapons to play with, but now it's Booba Dooboo and Bound that have the opportunity. Yeah, we can see him shift here. Boo Boo has the sniper. Big kill by Mikwin. Applying the pressure. Eco is going to kill Bound as well. So that's going to be two dead momentarily. And they're just going to hold off and wait for these spawns here. You see Eco on your screen. Knows they're going to spawn in Garage. I believe that is. So just playing from the nest. Another power position. You see, again, Eco playing that that that... That back player, you know, he's always taking control of either the tower or the nest, and he's just watching the spawns. He knows exactly where they're going to be based on where his teammate is. Great cleanup there as well, and he's going to stay alive, and they're just going to push this together on the outside now. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at a 2v2 game with 7 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Power weapons, power ups, the teamwork has been all there for Mikwin and Nico Smith. If you're bound in Booba Dooba, you got to figure a way to slow this game down and play at your pace because right now, Mikwin and Eco are running the table. Yeah, and, and again, Eco, the story here, 11 kills and three deaths. You would think that he's the one who's been playing this for a long time. He's playing phenomenal in this game. The great shots come through. He's going to back that player off. But like you said, Wes, I mean, 20 to 7. I, I don't see a world where they come back from this. It, it is just, it, it, would it would have to be play after play, wipe after wipe. I mean, it's definitely possible. I'm a big believer in, you know, things that are looking impossible. But in this game here, with, with players like you see on your screen with Nick Wynn, it, I don't I don't see it happening. Yeah, I, I'm not even going to entertain some kind of Patriots first Falcons in the Super Bowl kind of comeback here because it's not going to happen. These players, I mean, we talk about Mikwin and Eco so well. We, we can gas them up as much as we want, but one of their biggest assets, I'd say, is their experience. These guys are veterans. They're not going to let a, a lead like this slip away. Kills can come through, and Booba Dooba and Bound need to figure out a way to build some confidence, and maybe that can benefit them going into the third game because in order to make this series a reality it's only a single elim tournament they still have to figure out a way to win this series if they want to win this 5k they've got to do it there in game three and they need to build some confidence going into it and that's such a big it's such a big mental game right they've only put Ooh. oh my goodness i mean that's needed right there if we get more of that <laughs> we, we can see some things happen the shot comes through again the sniper in the hands of bound popping off right now but the biggest problem here is uh i'm sorry yeah. to point this out to you bound but Mikwin had Overshield in his back pocket, and you kind of just left it on the ground oh, and no. ran away. And and now Overshield's sitting on the ground over by Silo, and nobody has it. Uh, a massive blunder, right? Like, those are things that I know the game's early. I know Bound's got to learn. Um, but that's going to cost him today. Maybe he'll watch the rebroadcast, figure out that that's what happened, and hopefully that never happens to him again. Everyone watching here, you got to take note. Those power-ups, they're backpackable, which means if they're not activated, they're still going to be there when you get that kill on the player. So... Bit of a blunder here that, you know, they wish they had an overshield, but would it make that much of a difference? I don't think so. And just like that, Mikwin, Eco, they go up 2-0 in the series. Oh, man. They, they are looking unstoppable. Of course, they do have a chance on Recharge, which is our next map coming up here. I mean, can they turn it around? It's it's going to take a miracle at this point. He, Eco is the story today. A lot of people, I mean, we've been talking about Mick Wynn all day. He's 14 and 4. He's playing real well. But Eco is such a, such a good teammate, uh, you know, to Mick Wynn. Just, they, they just work so well together. 6 and 4 assists there. Of course, we're going to take a look at the accuracy. Boo Boo Doo Boo, 63% accuracy. Tw uh, 228 shots fired. Not too much there. And of course, you talk about Mick Wynn. Look at how much, look how many shots he's firing there. 49%. He's putting in that cover fire. He's getting people weak. Uh, and then Eco just kind of cleans it up. I mean, it's shots hit. It's damage dealt. Yep. It's Mikwin's gameplay. I'm telling you, I've spent three years trying to do it. And I can probably say it's been maybe a handful of times I've had more damage than him. Look at uh, like, It's absolutely oops. insane what he's able to do. Um, he, he almost doubles bounce damage. And I know. In a 25 to 15 score line, you're probably going to see something probably pretty similar to that, uh, seeing that one team had tw almost twice as many kills as the other. But that being said, Mikwin really showing you how Halo Infinite should be played at a very high level. I mean, if anything, this is a real opportunity for players to, to really learn a lot from his point of view. I would be watching his stream just about every day if I was a top player trying to compete.
that's what I was going to say. Like, he's got so much knowledge and, and just being able to just study that is is so beneficial. And and as a as a competitor, you have to you have to watch people that are better than you, that know more than you. That's how you get better. And then you evaluate your own gameplay and then you put it to practice like we were saying before in the call. Uh, I mean, just great job uh, out of out of all these guys. Unfortunately, I mean, Mick Quinn just on fire with Eco. Of course, we're going to get to the next match here. It's going to be on recharge. Uh, you know, if this goes any further, though, honestly, I just I give this to Mick Quinn and Eco because we're, if we're we're essentially going to go if it does get that far, we're essentially going to go back to Aquarius where we know like just dominating fashion Mick Quinn's able to kind of show people, hey, I've been on this before. I've been been here, been <laughs> done this. So. Uh, he, he's got a lot of experience there, but uh, I, I want to see it. I, I got to see it. I got to see a game five. I got to see. I got to see them come back. I know it's unrealistic, but I mean, that OS, it could have done. It could have turned the game in a sense. If Bound had had known that OS was there, it, it's kind of difficult, right? Because it, it, it's it's orange and glowy or yellow and glowy, but it, it could be, uh, you know, it could have fallen below a weapon or, or something like that. It, it, it becomes kind of difficult to see. Um, but if he had had that OS, this push may have been, you know, may have been in their favor. Yeah, I, I think they could have potentially spun up a few more kills, yeah. but I think the inevitable, the lead was too great there. So yeah, I, I don't mean to entertain the, the comeback too much. I think if anything, Adam Bubadubu, I mean, Halo Infinite just came out yesterday, brothers. So like, you take it all in. Every single game should be a learning experience. And there's a lot that you can unpack from that game two right there that you can learn from. Like when you kill a guy with overshield in his back pocket, he drops it on the ground. You can go pick that up and have overshield yourself. I think like it might sound simple. It might sound like I'm kind of antagonizing them, but I mean, in all honesty, like this is not the championship that they have in, in store for themselves, right? Like Bound and Boobadoo, the championship they want, that's in Seattle here about a year from now, right? So. Agreed. It's very, I know they want to win this. I know that the deck is kind of stacked against them, but I hope that players in matchmaking and customs and scrims and the money twos and money eights, whatever they're doing, I hope that they're just taking it all in and trying to perfect their craft because meta has yet to be created for the competitive scene. And we are very excited to kind of see where it goes as a community. And, and those are going to be your forerunners, right? Bound and Boobadoo, those guys can set metas up i'm very excited for them to continue to learn and adapt it's just a matter of how quickly can they do it if we get to a second game of aquarius in the series yeah i'm not quite sure the story is going to be any different but there is opportunity for them to scavenge a little bit more maybe get some thrusts maybe win some more pivs and maybe that score line becomes a little bit more interesting yeah, I, I like that story, right? I'm all about the comeback. It would be uh, it would be awesome. But uh, I wanted to kind of touch on your words. Like, we've got 10 years of this game, right? This is version one. And that's this is great advice. Great advice from Wes. Like, just work on what you need to work on. Learn. Make the meta. I mean, Boo Boo, you're right. I mean, they can they can essentially make the meta. Boo Boo popping down bottom center here. He's going to get some great shots on a Mikwin. And now he scores himself a camo and stays alive. Great play. He's got a player in front of him. Oh, my gosh. Eco. Great shots. That's a great way to start the game. Okay. Boo Boo Doo Boo, you have camo. You have a two kill lead. You are known for doing absolutely ballistic things when you were fully kitted with a camo. I love the fact that he went straight for a grapple. Sword's gonna be off limits here in this 2v2, so he's gotta figure out where these two players are going to be, but with this camo in his hand, if he's able to potentially get the edge with this grapple, he can get a kill, get out. Pretty much play the situation exactly how he wants. Camo does unfortunately run out because he spends so much time looking for these players, but they do get one kill, and already you see a little bit more teamwork out of Bound and Boobadoo -Boo running like wolves together making sure that they're trading, capitalizing on each other's damage, and that's going to reward them right now. Yeah, they've got a one kill lead right there. Make that actually it's a tie game now, but just a great job of just hold, like you said, holding hands, just working together, making sure they they get those trades. I don't know how long they're going to be able to afford them, though. When you have a player like Mikwin on the team, Boo Boo gets a kill onto him and we've got a tie game right now. Of course, the series, they only need one more win. Mikwin and Eco, one more win to secure their final spot. And of course, on your screen, you've got Eco just playing again, the anchor position, playing slow. He's got some information here, trying to get some nades and to do some damage. Staying alive in the turbine. Again, six to five is the score. A very slow paced game. You saw Mikwin and Eco when they had when they didn't have camo and they knew Bound and Boo Boo did. 
You saw how slow they played. They were hiding in corners and waiting for it to expire. I love the fact that they're playing slow here because it's it's to their advantage. If they're trying to play as fast as Mikwin's going to be able to play, they're not They're not going to have a chance to keep up. Right now, great playing from Eco. Gets him a kill, gets rocked to no shield, but I don't think anybody's going to be in position to finish him off. I like the route back towards the long haul. He's going to end up opting to stay alive and now... Down Booba Dooba, they're kind of forced towards the elevator side of them. Yeah. Spot a player, we call that bottom PC on the CIT team. And unfortunately, they kind of get caught in a doorway there. Mikwin, with an easy kill, gets his team a two-kill lead. Eco again pushing the turbine here. Mikwin gets another kill to add to the score. He's got seven so far with only four deaths. And of course, he's also got this camo and the mangler in hand. A very, very deadly combination here. Uh, one shot in the melee up close. That's going to be a uh, death. And of course, again, I thought he was going to utilize the uh, shock rifle there, but maybe decides instead to keep the mangler. Those faster melees on the smaller weapons can be really beneficial. Yep. Once again, using the sandbox to his advantage, has the better weapon for close range, using it impactfully. They're in a 2v1 situation. They catch... Boobadoo with his pants down top elevator and unfortunately bounce spawned across the map. So they take advantage of the split spawn situation. Bottom C out of nowhere. A good trade out of Mickwin with the death stick as well. Bound unfortunately not able to play his life um, well enough to keep it and get that kill. But he probably would have lost it to Eco anyways. But continuing to play slow probably benefits them. But already we see an eight kill lead from, from Mickwin and Eco. And this game not looking like we're going to see a game four. Definitely not. 12 and 5 is Mikwin. And again, I want to touch on something, you know, utilizing the sandbox, but utilizing it to your play style. You see Mikwin and Eco playing very aggressive here. So he decides to keep the mangler. He's going to go down, but again, Boo Boo should be picking up the, the, the shock rifle. If he's playing this anchor type style play, pick up the shock rifle, get a different angle, uh, get bound to get a different angle and just kind of poke shots in again. Great shots there by Bound. He's going to try and stay alive up top on the BR. Gets naded a few times. 12 kills, like I said before, but it's just incredible to see. A little bit more teamwork is what we need here. The trade comes through. And again, we're at a 10 to 17 lead. They've really got to stop dying or trading here. This has got to turn around and they're going to not, they're going to need to really step up to win this game, but it's not looking good. That was actually a really nice trade by Bound, but unfortunately, the score is in a position where you can't afford to trade any longer. It's 18 to 10, and you got to figure out a way to get momentum now before your tournament lives are over. But unfortunately, Mikwin's not going to give you time to sit there and think about what your next move is. He's already got his move planned. He swoops in, takes down Bound, and they spot a Bubadubu top commando. Great shots again. Going to continue to put shots across the map they bring it to an eight kill lead but once again mickwin comes through gets the clean up there look at the insta explodes while she would be proud look at that the killing spree comes through this man i cannot wait to see this dude in a year yeah i mean it, it'll be a very different meta a very different game when everybody's had a year to play on it so very interested to see how time either benefits or just affects Mikwin's career, but it's definitely a shame we're not going to be able to see one of the greatest FPS shooters that I've ever seen in my life play for just a year, right? But that being said, everybody in this lobby right now is an extremely talented Halo player, so very excited for everybody to continue to grow as Halo Infinite players, and we're only on day two, and they're already starting to figure things out quick. That's what's really cool too, right? You know, I, I have announced that I was a part of the pilot program earlier this year. And I'm going to tell you, man, these guys, t you know, taking in the knowledge that they've taken in, you know, being able to learn things so fast, it, it just blows my mind. The, the ability to, to learn at such a high level, it, it is going to be very exciting to see where they're at. He stops, gets the beat down. I believe that's going to be it. Mikwin moving on to the finals with Eco Smith. Great job by those guys. Yeah, great job by Eco and Mikwin. I mean, great teamwork, great overall control of every single one of the maps that we had an opportunity to watch. Individual skill was there, and overall just dominance from those two. Bound and Boobadoo, nothing to hang your hat over. It's, it's day two of Infinite. 
there's a lot more Halo to be played and hopefully they can take this as a learning experience, go back to the drawing board and we know they're going to come back with something extremely strong here for us. And you see they've, they've got some good shots though, like the, the accuracy there is nothing to squawk at. 57% for bound, boo boo upwards of 54%. Uh, just, you know, they, like you said, it's just going to take a little bit of time. I can't, wa I can't wait to see how they develop and, and these guys are committed. They're they're part of orgs. Like it's gonna be really cool when when it, when it comes time. Even the first event, we're a month away from it. Uh, I'm really just glad we got the game early, so we didn't have to just see them off of uh, you know one one week of practice or whatever. We can kind of see uh, you know a month of practice develop, which is a big difference, right? Yeah, we're gonna be able to see that. So I'm I'm really excited. Of course, you have uh, some uh, you know instant replays on your screen, but we're gonna we're gonna go to a break. Uh, you know, Wes, do you have anything else to say before we toss it? No, I think for everybody watching, I hope this is the start of something great. I know as a competitive community, as just a Halo community in general, we're all so excited to just get this underway. We've been waiting for Infinite for so long. It's finally here, and to just provide a little bit of an entertainment tonight, I mean, it means the world to me for this to finally be showcased, and I can't wait to see how good these players can get and how much entertainment they can provide us. I'm excited. We are on the road together. We're on the same game now. Everyone's on the same title. It's bringing back, like you said before, so many different players from so many different eras. I'm excited to see where we go with this. The That's not today. Today we have Lucid and Trippy. They're on their own sticks and they are sick with it. Let's take a look. We're going to our first map, Aquarius. And guys, if you're just as hyped as we are get ready for it and you know if, if you want to show how hyped you are exclamation mark giveaway in the chat earn yourself some tickets to hcs rally stellar gonna find the opening kill on lucid and here we are pov of trippy as their plan for this camo and obviously every win matters especially at game one but i think it's really important that you win in aquarius oh mainly because you know not only is this game one but if you see it again in the series it's actually game four so to ha to actually win game one and then wrap back to this in game four to either end the series or force a game five is going to be oh so important it's going to be that confidence booster plus obviously winning game one just sets the tone for the rest of the series obviously stellar by being well aware of that getting an excellent kill but goes one shot and not able to get away with his life and there we see it the heat wave is in the hands of penguin guys if you don't know about this gun and you're about to learn about it you can change the reticle you can make it shoot horizontal or vertical but what we've seen it do today is melt their foes like it's nothing that thing is like a hot knife going through butter it is absolutely insane and it's absolutely the meta of this map be aware of that heat wave everything's gonna rotate through it it is absolutely devastating as we see penguin take an extra couple too many shots as he's gonna uh, as he's gonna be able to ooh, lucid oh tony that was a big kill stellar is gonna go down the heat wave in lucid's hands and not only is the heat wave a meta defining weapon you know i i, I think of I, I think of both of these teams metas kind of being very similar to each other like when i think of trippy i think of that player that puts down a, a max amount of damage but has a way of backing down and playing his life as long as possible buying enough time for his teammate to come in for the cleanup kills including with this heat wave like you're seeing right here but i also th I see the same thing with the other side of things you know lucid might be kind of like that main slayer on the team but the same thing with stellar and penguin penguin has a similar play style to trippy again a max amount of damage stays alive an absolute nuisance and then stellar just coming in for the cleanup kills i like the way both of these teams are set up but i think they're very similar to each other heat wave still in the hands now of lucid though as opposed to on our on our nv roster look at that you can see that the heat wave bounces <laughs> off the walls and that's something you do have to keep account of lucid did a little extra damage to himself in that play but he's not going to be able to come up on top he's no. taken down stellar trying to do his best to get away as he's able to get around the corner but a perfectly placed nade could take him out none are going to come and he's going to find himself the plasma rifle to go with it guys it's just as close five to seven and we're getting it even closer tighten your belts stellar getting us within one as he's looking for another kill and he's gonna find it and he's oh just gonna miss that last shot tony 
Oh, sorry, I was, I was tied to my belt because I, I want to see one heck of a series here. <laughs> I'm make sure I don't fly off. I'm not sure. As Stellar ends up going down, leaving Penguin by himself. So now it's a 2v1 situation. Maybe Lucid and Trippic has taken advantage of it, but they have to be careful because Stellar has actually just spawned. So a little bit of a reset here. And no, both teams should start trying to fight for that map control. But once they get that squad wipe, they're very good at... at, at uh, manipulating those spawns, if you will. So as soon as that squad wipe comes in, imagine them collapsing on those spawns. This two kill lead, this one kill lead can easily turn into three, four, five, and six easily as Lucid getting a big kill. And now, once again, trying to influence those spawns exactly what we were talking about. Let's put Charlie and guys, take a look at these skins. One thing that we have to appreciate, the HCS team. Day one release. I mean, actually, what? Day negative 30 release, Tony? And we have HCS <laughs> team skins in the game, and they look so beautiful, man. Look at that Cloud9 skin. You cannot get it any better. Oh, man. I love that we can support our teams the way that we can as we see Stellar take the approach towards the top mid. He has two players in front of him. He's trying to catch the back of one. Not going to be able to pick up the kill. The assist does come through. The commando versus the BR. What will come out on top? Switching to his BR. Trying to get the punch. Not going to be able to get it. He hears him. He's looking, but he can't quite find it. One on one. Penguin goes down. Lucid takes the kill, and he's going to reload that commando that's going to be a big one it's going to keep the edge in their favor as he's trying to find another one to rack up and he's going to be able to do so man this man is on a mission oh my mission lucid boxer metal double kill in the feed and guess what trippy's coming back because i get the help but my god stellar penguin put on skates I wanted to compliment Penguin and being the absolute nuisance that he was absolutely refusing to die right there. But Lucid coming out with the clutches of double kills. And now the information is coming in. He's trying to collapse on that team, but it looks like he was able to get away. So now Lucid going to stay alive. Stellar currently having seven kills. Lucid with nine at the moment. We're going to see if he can add a little bit more to his score. <laughs> Taking a couple shots, needing to reposition that heat wave. Going to be vital to this gunfight. Looking for the angle. Trippy goes down. The trade is immediately there. That bank shot metal going to come through. Love the metals that we've seen added to Halo Infinite thus far. And it's another double kill for Lucid. And look at that kill, Tony. Tell me that my eyes are not deceiving me. 11 kills for the man. He's absolutely going ham. Almost tripling that of his teammate of Trippy. Yeah, this man has taken over the map. That he is. I mean, they, they've had a hard road. You know, their round one matchup was against Kratos and Suspector. Right after that, they had to play against a red hot drunken soul snipe. They've really earned their position here, and they're showing sheer dominance with this five kill lead. Lucid putting some excellent shots down, but the information is coming in. He did get called out. He has to back down, try to play his life. Meanwhile, Camouflage is coming up in 10 seconds. If they can grab that, they're going to really put some separation in the scoreboard. His teammates right next to him, Trippy. He ends up getting the slay. Stellar goes down. And that's going to be camel control in favor of our team envy roster hey you can only play ring around the rosie so much but knowing lucid he's going to give you a pocket full of grenades no chance you're staying alive right there and here we go the heat wave back in action and you can see why it's just so devastating stellar eviscerated off the map and this is just looking like it's over for game one 19 to 10 in favor of trippy and lucid as this heat wave camel combination is going to be putting in work <laughs> The heat wave is putting in work, and now we're seeing a 21 to 10 lead going in favor of Team Optic Texas. I gotta get used to saying that now. I'm still not used to it. I want to know what's going on in the minds of these two players. So why don't we go into a listen? I want to hear these comments. I want to find out what exactly is making them so successful. <laughs> uh, yo, jump up the top mid. One, they're splitting, they're splitting. One's left side, one's right. One bullet. He went like, pushing you maybe? Dude. Okay, right. no dumb deaths. We need to make sure we're just getting damage and finding out where they're pushing. It's on yellow. Right side? Yo, top middle, top middle. Top mid out in the open, he's half, he's half. He's on like the... He just, he's on running, me? he's running. I'm trying to get back to you. He's a, he a heat wave thrust. Push you. Yo, die. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get spawn. He's gonna be top mid. Yep. Yeah. Look. Run right away. Run right away. One shot. Uh, Find me? Yeah, drop. 
Stellar might be on me, blue. Utility. Love you. Reek, love you. Oh. Got shots behind you. He's one. He's one. No, no beat down. Other guy's one. At least one away. Nice. Right. Camo's up. Camo's up. Camo's up. I saw you when they spawn. One to just spawn now. They are both up. Did you see anything? No. Um, they're probably just going to be sitting back yellow fridge or something. Another excellent multi kill coming out of Team Optic Texas, and now they have the camouflage. It's going to be an easy victory. kill earned by Lucid taking down Penguin. Hold on, they, they, they got some, they got some ground to make up here. <laughs> there we go, twenty-five to seventeen, going in favor of Lucid and Trippy. Look at that. The NV, the NV coding looks so smooth. It looks so clean. Yeah, it's definitely one twenty-five. Of the cleaner skins, man. I love. The Envy skin. Guys, if you haven't had the chance, you might want to go into the shop and snag it right now because that one's not going to be long for the earth. If you guys didn't mm -hmm. see the announcement yesterday, Envy, Team Envy, officially moving on to be Team Optic. Uh, there was the partnership between Envy and Optic. They're going to rebrand the Halo team to support the green wall. We cannot be more excited for these players, guys. Optic Trippy, Optic like Lucid. That is so big for those guys. We absolutely love what they did. Let's take a look at that damage dealt. And you can see why Lucid's such a terror on the map, man. That's a 5K badge if I've seen one. Only taking 3,500 to go. But man, Lucid was an absolute terror for using that heat wave to the best of his ability. That he is, and the accuracy is obviously up there as well. So not only were they putting down damage, but also being really accurate with their shots. If you can put down more damage than your opponent, you can be more accurate. Normally, you're going to win the game, as we're seeing some of these replays. And let me see how look, look at this. Look how look how long Penguin plays his life here, just being so annoying. And if I was lucid, I I I, I would have just left. I would have just walked away. I would have put down my. I would have been done. Like there's no way that he milks his life that long. Uh, but sadly, wasn't able to milk his life long enough. Uh, to get the win <laughs> well here we are game two it's gonna be on live fire first to 25 gonna take this game one thing that's gonna be a bit different instead of the heat wave to worry about actually there is a heat wave on this map but there's another tool to worry about as well and man it is the most iconic gun in the halo series that sniper rifle gonna spawn at the middle part of the map we're gonna see fights for it camo gonna also be on the map and we're gonna see a repulsor uh instead of the thrust this time so get ready for a bit of a switch on live fire uh, aquarius a much smaller map live fire gonna have longer line of sights sniper rifles to work with and it, i mean knowing all four of these players they've all done it at one point in their career with that sniper rifle so don't be surprised if you see some heads getting blamed yeah i mean, I mean the, the sniper has been absolutely amazing but you know these guys are coming from Halo 5. There was a whole lot of auto aim with that with that Halo 5 sniper. Even, even someone like me can hit shots with it. I'm interested in finding out how good their sniper shots here in Halo Infinite. With that toned down auto aim, it is a true marksman's weapon. You not you can't just be anybody and grab it and put down work. I'm really too excited to see how they use it and maybe I gotta pick up a tip or two because I'm be honest with you, Gary. I, I can't hit shots with that thing, man. It, 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 it is tough. <laughs> uh, hey, man. Uh, I, I've heard about this surgery. You know, it, it, you have to oh. go across the border for it. It's not legal in the United States yet, but you can remove your thumbs, and then they have surgically grown thumbs of players like Pistola, Frosty. They're all sitting there in a the fridge. You can reattach them, and my God, Tony, you will never miss a shot for the rest of your life. But here we go. Trippy on our screen as he's trying to get this sniper rifle for his team. He's going to give it to the man who's doing it all lucid, and he's looking for some head to peel. Not going to find one early on. We can see Penguin and Stellar did not contest the sniper at all. They're going to try to catch them from surprise. And there's the first one. Hmm. But this is why you don't give up the sniper rifle to someone like Lucid. It's just that damn easy for him. And now he's sitting back with the sniper rifle, just baiting his teammate at the moment. A little bait and switch action. You know I like that. And uh, and very he's very upset with that dummy. Yeah. Just uh, just not happy with the dummy. It's it's not doing what he needs to do. It's not providing good cover. It's it's honestly ugly. It's it's really an embarrassment to the game. So he has to he has to peel his head off. Obviously, honestly, I think they should remove it until they until they're able to put optic skins on the uh, on the dummies. I mean, it's disrespectful to someone like Lucid not to have 
uh, the green wall represented in the game. But here we go, Lucid. He's going to waste some of that sniper ammo. Once again, it's just so important. This map's going to really dictate the pacing. He's able to get rid of one before he dies. But now it's going to be up to Trippy. He has the overshield on his uh, on his body, and he's going to try to find a kill. Just can't quite get the one shot. But if you look across the way, I believe that's uh, that is Lucid who's going to have the pinch. That player is not long for this planet. Oh yeah, great, great, great job cutting him off over from the garage. But uh, that player finally, finally goes down. Stellar being a really hard kill right there. Now we're seeing the sniper rifle change hands over towards Trippy. And mind you, the overshield's coming about 20 seconds. So you're gonna see them position themselves so they can bait it. But he tries to line up a shot. They play on overlooks and get the best of him. And look at that scoreboard. We're seeing Penguin and Stellar now within striking distance. Penguin gets another big kill. Only one kill separates them. And overshield is almost up. Here we go. Grabs the overshield, puts it on the body, immediately getting challenged out. Look how fast that is. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm calling up Guinness. Bro, I think we just witnessed a world record, Tony. That might be the fastest overshield burn in Halo's history. My, the, oh my gosh, Seller stood no chance. Daddy did not, and now Penguin having that mangler in hands, but Stellar's in a really non-advantageous position. He's actually being hunted down, but here comes a beautiful angle by Penguin, ends up getting the first one, whipping out the... Oh my gosh! Penguin and Stellar with the squad wipe, and just like that, all the momentum being sucked out of the room. Penguin and Stellar are on a roll. Look at this. Sniper coming up soon. 15 seconds. This fight's going to be critical to the success. Stellar with the heat wave. We've seen it put in work, but the nade's going to catch it. The mangler is going to be able to find the finish. I love this new pistol, this addition to the game. I don't think we've really had a gun like it before. It just feels so fun to use. It feels so powerful. A great mm. utility gun. It's a one shot, one punch, if you, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. It's two yep. shots to break down the shields. Absolutely great utility gun. You can get a three-shot kill with it, although the pacing can be a bit awkward if you're using it for the first time. I definitely agree. You know, it almost, you know, it's not to make like an Apex reference, but it kind of reminds me of like the, the, the Mastiff uh, from Apex. You know, you put that shot in, then you duck behind cover. You, you know, you utilize that an animation or that slow rate of fire. Shoot, poke behind cover. Shoot, poke behind cover. It's one of the things that Snipe Down was always so good at. And I think if you can master that with the Mangler, you'll be an absolute nuisance with it. As Stellar taking damage from both sides, he is going to be hunted down. And we have an eight to seven lead. Still in favor of Penguin and Stellar. But Penguin, look at that. Now he's on a killing spray. I thought Penguin was in a bad position, but he takes down both players. I'm happy with that. Should be trying his best to get away. Will not be able to do so as Stellar is able to find that trade out. But hey, you know, you spawn up, you find new opportunities. If you are lucid, oh man, we're seeing that new mechanic come in. You can grab the overshield, but you have to apply it yourself. And then on top of that, Tony, I, I feel as if the Halo Infinite uh, overshield takes much longer than the Halo 5 one did to apply. You really have to time it out right, and you can absolutely be punished if you don't get the timing correct, as we just saw there. They give away a full overshield to Penguin. He tries his best, but my God, if he's overshield, really haven't done much, but oh, I don't know what happened, Tony, but uh, he gets out of the situation. I, that's what I'm talking about. I do Penguin and Trippy as well. They put themselves in these crazy positions, but they utilize their movement. They utilize their awareness to get out of these. They get out of these uh, terrible, uh, uh, non-advantageous positions. And, and we're seeing it once again. Penguin utilizing that movement, staying alive, and even getting the kill because of it. Now they know exactly what enemy team is spawning over towards the A base. Stellar able to get the kill, but it looks like Trippy pulls off a double kill. 11 to 14 in the deficit is loosened and Trippy, but the squad wipe is fresh. And now we're seeing the heat wave in the hands of Trippy. Now, do, do they have a coach in the ear, Tony? Because did you see how like he was looking at the heat wave, waiting for it to spawn? Spawns up, he gets it right away. I think he has that on a timer. He must be keeping track of it. Oh, the yeah. repulsor just threw back the plasma grenade. Luckily, it doesn't do any damage to Trippy as he's trying to find his angle. Both these players just taking down this mid lane. The fight for the sniper rifle is starting just about now. And the question is who gets the pick and who can start controlling the pace of the game. As we see the rotation outside, not going to find anything for the moment. But here we go. 15 seconds till that sniper rifle comes up. This fight going to be critical to whoever takes away this game. 
you have to be timing the utilities on the map so you got to know that sniper's coming up every three minutes that overshield every two minutes and all non-power weapon uh weapon spawns are 30 seconds while the equipment are at a minute if you can master those times and make sure that you're getting the edge on your opponent and utilize those situational weapons like you said that mangler that one shot melee using it for close range even that commando from long range it can absolutely rip even the assault rifle is dirty as well and one that's really dirty is that overshield. Now we have Penguin with overshield and sniper. Watch out. Oh, look at that beautiful skin he has on that sniper rifle. I'm not sure what it is, but I, I want it. Oh, man. Someone got to keep my wallet close to me because I'm about to spend a, <laughs> an unheard of a money <laughs> amount of money on this game. But here we go. He's in the tower, a power position. You have access to all three lanes from this position. The question is, can you hit the shots? We'll wait and see if he can find one. That, but you can definitely see on the other side, Lucid and Trippy. They're not trying to make any moves anytime soon. They know the sniper rifles in the opposite hands. They're going to try to patrol and figure out where they can find access and find themselves a pick. But if you're Penguin and Stellar, you have such a lead. You honestly have no motivation to move. You're going to wait for them to make the play, and the play has been made. He pushes, but the timing's so good. He, he moves out of the tower right when he gets there. And guess what trip he has? He has the heat wave. They're on top of each other. The question is, who comes out on top? Shots coming through. They both get there. The heat wave comes in and finds one in the back. And now the question is, who finishes this fight? Stellar trying to find the kill in the tower, but they're going to get away for the time being reset this at the moment oh stellar please stay alive get out of here you're in trouble and trouble comes knocking he's gonna fall down penguin taking down lucid and trippy all going right after penguin we're seeing a 21 to 16 lead going in favor of team cloud nine this is looking much different than we saw in game number one and like you said before the heat wave still in the hands of trippy if you can time it right this is a one shot melee or you can just ricochet the bullets off the wall like you're seeing right there seeing the second player we're seeing massive amounts of damage coming in from trippy and lucid able to clean up stellar lucid getting the double kill great damage out of out of trippy and great cleanups out of lucid bringing them back within strike Striking distance only down by three kills. Overshield gonna be applied to Trippy. He's gonna take the fight right away. That heat wave breaks down the shield. The combo's in, but the combo shoots so much slower in this game. And you can see with the effects that it has. And uh, you know, Tony, I didn't want to say, you know, we don't we don't like to call it, but what don't uh, don't call it, don't don't call it a comeback because they're on their way back. <laughs> Trippy flying forward. This heat wave going to be putting in work. He's trying to find the angle. Not quite able to get him as he's throwing down the shots down range. And there we go. The lead has changed. My, my, my. That heat wave putting in work. And if they can get this next sniper rifle, they could secure this game too. Yeah, to be honest with you, I think, I think the Heat Wave has been the unsung hero of this entire tournament. We're seeing these guys, these professional players utilize it to the best of its ability as Trippy going right at Stellar right there. And he's getting the information that he needs to get the double kill. That player is going to go down and that's going to be a squad wipe. And they're now one kill away from st literally stealing this game away from Penguin and Stellar and going up 2-0 in this series. Shots are starting to ring out. Beautiful strength from both of the players, but they're perfectly comfortable with backing down and resetting the situation. Honestly, Tony, if this game goes into the favor of Lucid and Trippy, I'm going to have to figure out what the local FBI office over in Dallas, Texas is, because I got a call. We can't allow a theft of this magnitude to get away. Here we go. Sniper rifle in the hand. He's looking for an angle. Lucid, well known for his sniper plays in H5. Going to try to make something happen right here in Infinite. He's going to take a shot. Now he knows that there's an angle. Not quite able to take the body out. The overshield is going to come up. He could use that as a gravitational well to potentially find a head. And there they are. Two bodies. He's going to miss the first shot, but the assist comes through and they find the dub. What a comeback down by, I believe, seven at one point point as they're able to get themselves back into that game and you said it was the unsung hero i'm gonna say that thing was aretha franklin screaming at us because that is the sun it's the singing heat wave that thing i cannot sing its praises more tony that what an absolutely exceptional weapon that we're gonna see play a massive role in hcs for the next month you know garrett 
The definition of grand larceny is theft of personal property having value above a legally specified amount. Mm. And in the state of Texas, $5,000 worth of value is considered grand larceny. We might have just seen Lucid and Trippy committing grand larceny because they stole that game from Penguin and Stettler. And now they're only one game away from going to the finals and stealing this $5,000 for this tournament. It's winner takes all, baby. Tony, uh, we, we got to call him up. I, I'm trying to think of a famous <laughs> FBI agent. I guess Harrison Ford. I think he played an FBI agent one time. Oh, man. Uh, all I got to say, man, is uh, Trippy has an uncanny uh, resemblance to one of Nicolas Cage. And, you know, oh. maybe maybe we could make a, an effort to say that Halo Infinite's a little bit like the Declaration of Independence because it has that oh. much to do with the future of halo and esports okay did he Make just wit did we just witness the the equivalent of stealing the declaration i i don't know man i i, I watched i watched uh i watched national treasure like two days ago it's still on my mind i love that movie guys if you haven't seen it go check it out it's on disney plus uh, national treasure what a what a phenomenal movie i love it absolutely incredible movie. well i'll tell you one thing one person is a national treasure is lucid let me tell you man this this man is out of control his shots too good his strafe is disgusting if if you if you were to build a perfect halo player in, in the laboratory they, i mean your, your your template would probably be lucid because his awareness is his awareness too good his shot his strafe just and he's just literally the perfect halo player and you're seeing it on full display right here let me tell you man to te team optic texas they have a bright future ahead of them. They have championships oh. in their future. Ooh, beautiful place nades by Trippy. Gonna take down Penguin early on. And like you said, man, some things are just too good to be true. You know what else is too good to be true, Tony? Our giveaway today. Guys, exclamation mark giveaway in the chat. If you want an <laughs> opportunity to go to HGS Rally, have $500 of spending cash in your pocket and go mm. watch some high level Halo action, well, I got news for you. You can do it today. Exclamation mark giveaway in the chat. Make sure you get your entries. There's multiple ways to get in and maybe we'll see you there hanging out with us at the VIP booth at Halo Infinite as Lucid gets himself a reversal medal and gets away looking like Spider-Man swinging throughout the map. Absolutely incredible. We saw the shock rifle earlier in the previous mm. series. We got a perfect kill with it before. Let's see if we can get another one. And I love the way he was able to utilize that grapple to get out of a terrible situation while being one shot and still recovering his shield as well. He comes back, ends up getting a big kill, but sadly they are going to be wiped out. Stellar actually having all three kills of uh, uh, all three kills of his team right now. We're going to see if maybe him and Penguin could put a couple more because they're only down by one kill. Shock rifle in the hands of Stellar taking some heavy damage. Meanwhile, off the screen, Penguin getting a big kill. Now Stellar going to go in for the cleanup kill, but he's still one shot, and Stellar is going to go down lucid, pulling off an amazing double kill putting his fourth one on the board at lucid is just built different right now penguin and stellar backs against the wall and the question is what do you do how do you respond and i know these two i know penguin i know stellar and when their backs against the wall tony they turn around and they break the damn wall they punch through it i'm ready to see the comeback happen they're gonna do it i promise uh you know it's not looking well i, I say it trippy finds the kill on penguin but I expect us to go to a game four. There's no way these guys go out to the silent night in a 3-0. I expect this series to go a bit further. Yeah, that's one thing I learned from watching and casting a, a mo a, so much professional Halo is that you can never count any of these guys out. The moment you do, they will they will put you in your place. I I learned that the hard way when I when I bet against uh, Snakebite in one of his series. He let me know real quick on Twitter, and he let me know real quick. And I and I, I vow to that to this day to never bet against Snakebite. And uh, let me tell you, I don't. I don't bet against Penguin or Stellar, or Stellar either. They're, they're fantastic players as Penguin is going to go down thanks to Trippy. Lucid still having the camouflage in hands, looking for a head to click on at the moment. Grapple and camo kind of kind of productive here as Stellar takes down Trippy. Lucid going in for the cleanup kill, but not able to get the double. And Penguin shooting a bit of bodies here, letting him know about it, even taking the needler from him and giving him that Walshy, that Walshy special. <laughs> oh my this is absolutely insane i i saw a needler pick up tony i want to see a needler kill bro i'm just saying i want oh ooh, ooh. <laughs> they're listening bro it's telegraphed penguin looking for what there's a player coming up penguin you you know oh he's listening 
There's two pushing in. They're pinching at the same time. The Needler's out. He misses, but that counts, Tony. The Needles made contact. There's another player pushing. He's keeping the Needler out for now. It, it, honestly, the BR is not a great weapon up close, and having a utility weapon like the Needler can be useful, although it wouldn't be the utility weapon I would use. You have a commando on the wall right next to you. Maybe that's something you ought to look into, Penguin. But if we can get a Needler kill on, uh, on stream, I would be happy. I want to see the pink mist action right now. I don't know, man. I see some cracked out gameplay. These guys' BRs they can get 10 with anybody's assault rifle, anybody's commando, bring out the needler, mangler, and rockets. It don't matter. That's how good their BRs are. As the T bags are coming back in out of Team Optic Texas, letting Penguin know about it. Hey, Penguin went in for the early bags, but I mean, the scoreboard check will tell you that it's 17 to 8 lead going in favor of Team Optic Texas, and they're now one win away from going up against McWin and Eco in the finals. Again, guys, it is winner takes all 5,000 on the line. Thank you so much, LBT Production. Uh, this has been such a great tournament. Great fun. 18 to 9. Tournament life on the line for Penguin and Stellar, guys. $5,000 winner takes all. And that two shot BR gets them one step closer as they only need five more kills. I said, hey, the comeback's going to happen. Lucid said, hey, I'm potentially going to be the best player in Halo Infinite. I have the best aim in the game. I'm not going to miss with the BR. I don't know why you said these guys have a chance. It's the new era. Optic is back, and it's a new dynasty with new faces, is what he's saying, as they find themselves two more. Only three kills left till this is over. Yeah, this is not even looking fair right now. Penguin and Stellar have not been in it literally all game long. And, you know, if you look at the series scoreboard, even all series long at that, Trippy and Lucid have been on another level here. And, I mean, I mean, you got to expect that. I mean, Trippy was considered the twos god for so long. And even though Lucid didn't play much twos that I've seen in my in my opinion, but he still has always had a nasty shot. He's just been an overall an amazing Halo player oh, as the yeah. stick coming out of nowhere. And the stake tacular comes in. That's going to be a 25 to 10 win and lucid actually really doing it in style i don't know how he got that stick but man was it good they're advancing forward into your grand finals that's a 3-0 i thought we we're gonna see a bit of a closer series tony that's a dominating 3-0 and i have to say you know we, we talk about it the juggernaut the titan that is you know the unnamed mr clutch's uh mr clutch's best friend at work is waiting on the other side but I gotta say, man, <laughs> Lucid, he's looking a little bit different. He's looking a little <laughs> bit different right now. I don't know, Tony. 67.67, put the respect on the name. Man does not miss a shot, putting down damage, doing it all on the map. Lucid look different. And, and, to, and to be honest with you, I mean, it, it's not even just about a win and, you know, the prize money that's here right now. In my, in my opinion, you know, even though it's twos, I'm still feeling confident going into the next competitive season, uh, whether it be 4v4s, whether it be another 2v2 tournament. Trippy and Lucid have already beaten Penguin and Stellar, so the next time they match up against each other, you know, that's going to be that extra bit of confidence saying, hey, look, if we can beat them once before, maybe we can beat them again. Again, I, I do realize that 2v2 and 4v4s are not the same thing. However, I'm, I'm a former a competitive my, a competitor myself i tell you i take any bit of confidence i can get i don't care if i beat you in 2v2's free fall super fiesta i'm gonna have that confidence <laughs> man it's I, I i love watching these replays because we really get a breakdown and see what happens but can we talk about how cracked this is man has no fear jumps out hey i'll just get the stick that's no problem it doesn't even look you know he just knows he just knows <laughs> Steph so, yeah, Curry. Done. oh my god they're just too good they're just too good. Guys, take a look at this bracket. We'll see it updated in a second. Trippy and Lucid gonna go on to our finals versus Equal Mechuin. It's skyrocketed yeah. in the past two years. And I can't say enough good things about Lucid because every time I watch him play, I'm like, that's beautiful Halo in the making. Just so many things to say to that West. You know, what a matchup. Two rosters that I think uh, you know, they deserve this moment. They've been playing incredibly well today. Uh, yeah, I, and I, I don't even have time to really talk about the specifics of it all because we're already jumping into this. Aquarius game one, a best of five series, winner take five grand home. You know these boys, they both want all of it. Look at this start. I love it. They've already figured out a way to counter the 2v2 strat that Mikwin and Eco have asserted themselves 
and multiple Aquarius games so far throughout this tournament. They've been focusing on getting those lightning grenades early, using them as an easy way to potentially catch some people off guard. But I feel like Lucid Trippy, you're not going to catch them off guard. They've been through this a little bit so far today to where they've seen this play too often and they've figured out a way to completely counter it. Get off to a 3-0 lead. This early in the game, that's beautifully done. They got camo. Unfortunately, you're going to see Trippy lose a teammate. And unfortunately, even more so, Miquin putting that thrust to use. And we cannot preach how important some of this equipment is going to be as far as you're exceeding your level to raise your ceiling and to reach the potential output you can do. And Miquin showing you right there that he can turn a 1v2 around with that equipment with thrust. Beautifully done. And that makes this game ever so close. Just the beauty of kicking this series off with Aquarius. You got two thrusts on the map, three uses each time you pick it up. I mean, the map is so fast-paced, so close quarters because of it. But man, the adaptation, I think we've seen at a Lucid, at a Trippy in this tournament. Lucid as well, just it, it, just the movement that he's pulling out with only just a few days to work. Then you got Mickwin with the three years of experience under his belt, and it shows the types of plays he puts together. So far, just playing impatient. He's local for the challenge, but two to meet him. And there you go. The heat wave comes in with the bounce shot. That's something we've seen plenty of nice so far. Shot, it's control of the heat wave, the baiting and switching. They stayed alive, and they got both their kills because of it. I mean, if you want to figure out a way to beat Eco and Mikwin, it's you're watching it right here. This is yeah. textbook lucid, trippy gameplay. The bait, the switch, they're playing off of each other so well, oh. controlling both camos so far throughout the game. Get a little bit of information where they are, and I love the fact that he's got Heat Wave and Camo. This can be one of the most lethal combinations in Infinite. This is like basically a shotgun camo style play we used to see in H5 all the time. And now let's see if he can put it to work. Are we starting to see some of it? One shot in and the BR to clean it up as well. Of course, you're looking at a minimum two shots with the Heat Wave, but that could be a one-shot beatdown. That could be a one-shot quick draw. So... Lucid just putting it all together. Of course, he picked up another thrust in the meantime, but the man's on the hunt. Getting right up behind both of them here. Can he take two, though? Thrust out of the engagement. He's got Trippy nearby, maybe, to help him out. Your kill assist. So Trippy already coming in to clean up kills, and that's just the, the unison plays that they're making together. Already, they're working so well together. They've been doing it all tournament long. I mean, such a good just vision by Lucid right there. He sees both players, gets the damage he can, and somehow gets away with his life. He doesn't Here commit to the fight and play till he goes down. He gets out of oh. there with his life. Oh, baby, the thrust to the side of the stairs. Just enough to make Miss Mickwin miss a shot, and you need to do something special to make him miss a shot. Lucid getting a double and already showing you that he's going to be an absolute monster when we're talking infinite. You watch this guy lock down spawns, too. The way he's just kind of looking down at the ground there, waits for the timing on it, flips, and he knows exactly where to look, too. It's it's like the man's got years of experience himself, but he's just so quick to figure it out. And here he goes with the two shots in. Trippy, I believe, Guardian Angel there to just make sure he's he cleaned up. And now the 2v1 just makes it guaranteed. Bit of a snowball effect that they've chained together here, constantly picking up, like, fresh thrusts off of spawn as well. And if they can keep this this lead and this momentum up, they're going to get a new camo here too. Yeah, even just watching Lucid right there, he used Thrust probably three or four times yeah. while we were on his point of view. I mean, Thrust only comes up with three charges, so the fact that he was able to stack both the Thrusts, have enough of an opportunity to con continue to create just <laughs> more output with oh. this equipment, that's given him such an opportunity. It's 14-4, to four, Shyway. Damn. There was a lot of people thinking that Nico and Mikwin, they had zero chance of losing this series. We're seeing <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> Halo Infinite out of these boys. Every camo has been uh. controlled by Lucid and Trippy. Every scatter shot, almost every thrust, and they are putting in work. They're perfectly in sync, too, right? You had Lucid as just guarding that camo, locking it down, had his three thrusts ready to go, and then Trippy picks up camo, drops onto the new thruster, so they're just taking full advantage of every single weapon power-up on the map and, uh, and, and using it in unison. Uh, just synchronized plays here from these boys, but of course, Eco does get a kill on the feed. Trippy, you can see he's just trying to slow things down a little bit, hide out in bottom mid, make sure they don't give up any easy deaths. We heard it in their comms in the last series. Trippy Lucid are very quick to uh, to regain, recuperate if they start to drop, you know, one by one. Yeah, we talk about how young these guys are in their career and how they're all, uh, how they're both on the, the up and come with their stock. Well, they're still, they've experienced so much as competitors so far throughout the Halo 5 days. Oh, wow, this is one of those sloppy fights where things are getting out of control and it ends with a melee. That's Eco Smith somehow getting the better of that player and that 
could be a pivotal fight, right? It's a 10 kill game. You're playing to 25. Very little room for error from Mikwin and Nico Smith right now, but oh. if the comeback is possible, VR fights individually won on both from both Eco and Mikwin. I mean, that's what it's going to take. If anyone's going to make that comeback, it's going to be Bitcoin and Eco here, but they just need to get on a roll and get a good round of slays here. And it comes from not getting, uh, you know, traded out in a situation like that. Trippy going to win with the melee contest, and the timing is perfect as well. You got Lucid guarding that camo. Trippy with a rotation here, too. He can come in and pinch. Look at this. Cleaning up one. He's got the nades in to keep that boy back. That should be a free camo for Lucid. And Trippy's got all the aggro on himself as he does it. So the the teamwork coming in here just to ensure that score stays uh, far in the lead, 20 to 9 at this point. Love the fact that Lucid wisely backs down. He actually opts to shoot right before he goes down. Kind of jukes this player with that wow. quick ability to claim on that legend. That's just, I mean, it's just beautiful. It, the game comes to him. He doesn't force anything. He doesn't stay in fights too long. He understands that staying alive is so much more important than challenging to the death and potentially trading 50-50s because when you're going up against Eco and Mikwin, that's going to be the result of a lot of your even-footed battles, right? You're going to go 50-50 on a good day. Wow. Good attempt there, too. Just so aware of the situations where he will get cleaned up quickly, so he will try to back out, get to a safe spot, you know, keep that spacing uh, favorable for him. That jump, by the way, so pesky. Many players have missed it all day here. You got to be sprinting before you hit that jump just so you get that extra reach. But Eco, of course, gets it the next time. He's trying to set up a pinch here now as well. He spots the rotation. Gonna jump in for it. Doesn't get the kill, though. Lucid somehow still out shooting at a disadvantage. Yeah, that lightning grenade was pretty much perfect. You just wanted to wait and let that damage over time take place before yeah. you're kind of challenging in the fight. Let the grenade do all the work and then clean it up with your BR. You would have gotten him to no shield. But that's that's a learning process, right? You're going to have to figure out what the nuances of some of this equipment, some of these new nades that are in Halo Infinite. And what better way to do that than early on forcing yourself into a competition amongst some of the world's best. I mean, we're learning just watching these guys go at it. We just clean things down here. One kill to close it. And the man does it in a trade 25 to 14 with just an explosive game one. The moment they caught fire, they did not let go. Wes, the, the combination, these two, they're perfectly in sync. They just seem unstoppable. They got a lot of history together, Lucid and Trippy do. They've been grinding throughout yeah. this dead period. Since Halo 5 has stopped, Lucid and Trippy are two of the most practiced, tried, and true players that we have in the Halo community. And what do you know? Hard work is going to pay off. These guys were primed and ready for Infinite to come out. They got a little bit of a blessing with it coming out early yesterday, and they could not be more excited than to kick off this game with a win here today. I mean, they're proving it here in the finals. That was beautifully done. One of the biggest moments, Shyway, that we didn't get a chance and an opportunity to talk in that game one was it was probably 17 to 7 ish. I don't know the exact score line. Mikwin and Eco got complete control of the map. And you saw Trippy high bottom middle and literally right. just sit there for a second. And it was like right. the awareness, the self-awareness and the patience and the fortitude to literally just stand still and say, I'm not going to continue to make mistakes. I'm not going to give up any free deaths. Let's figure out a way to break this setup. Take your time, like assess the situation and develop a strategy. That's what they did. And they made sure that there was no comeback coming. You can hear that in their comms as well. They're so patient that they would they would say no dumb deaths, you know, no dumb deaths. So Trippy was very quick to just hide, keep his presence low, and it's that type of patient, you know, top level play that that allows them to win as often as they do. So it's it's just great to see how quickly they can adapt to that type of style, though, especially when you're you're up against somebody like Mikwin who's just so comfortable, so cozy on a map like this. They're shutting him down. Yeah, they look very comfortable. And after that game one, I mean, if you're asking who's been playing the game. It looks like Trippy and Lucid have definitely <laughs> been playing the game after that expertise. I mean, I love the fact that they were able to immediately start the game off hot, right? Like, it was yeah. so important for them to get off to a, a good start on Aquarius because Eco and Mikwin have been so strong on Aquarius throughout this tournament so far. Every single game we've casted from their end, it's been dominant. Yeah. But immediately, Trippy, Eco, uh, Trippy and Lucid, they come out of the gates and they understand exactly what Eco and Mikwin have been doing at the start of the games. They counter it perfectly. They get two dead. They get a camo in their hands. And all of a sudden, now they're in the driver's seat. They get to dictate the pace for the first portion of that game, the early game. And they never look back.
It's quite a blow to the momentum of Mickwin and Eco, but game two, a very different story here. We got the snipe center map. We got the heat wave once again, bottom mid, but there's a repulsor in play. We got a, either an OS or camo. I'll wait and see what it is, but very different style and a lot more rotational gameplay on this one. So very curious to see that snipe pop into play and, uh, and what types of shots they can put together with it. Yeah, I mean, when we're talking about snipers in Halo, over the Halo 5 saga, the last era that we've been able to experience, Miquin and Lucid are two of the best to ever yep. do it, right? I mean, we can throw Roll 2 and Frosty in there as well, but I mean, those are your snipers. Snipe down, sorry, and never forget that kid, right? <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of talent in this finals, and I'm hoping we get a real opportunity to see one of those players with the snipe and an opportunity to get their team either back in this series or extend them closer to that $5,000. I, I gotta say though, it's so nice to see Mickwin back at it though, right? He was, of course, he's part of the 3-4, he was part of the 3-4-3 pro team. Uh, so he was always around, but you, you don't really realize just how talented he was till he comes back and starts playing again, right? You almost kind of forget. I mean, you knew, Wes, cause you were, <laughs> you're personally playing against him and you're, you're gonna, you know, you're, uh, I mean, team matches, but it's just wild. Like, I, I knew he was good back in Halo 5, but when he comes back, it's just, damn, all of a sudden he's a top player. Yeah, I mean, that's what I basically the exact conversation I had with him when he was joining the CIT team for 343 was. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, Austin, I understand a lot of us are in a great situation for where this is going to, like, this is an amazing opportunity that we get to pursue a dream of ours. But you're like, uh, oh my, God. one of the best in the world. <laughs> And showcasing it right for us, right there, rips the exactly. head, right? Like, this is what you don't want to see. Being up 1-0 in a game, or in a series, you see Mikuin with the snipe, you're in trouble, right? Yeah. He has such a good read on everything. I've, you better back up, is what I would tell that player bottom. Um, and it, it's just exciting to see him understand that maybe there's an opportunity that he can continue to compete, because he is one of those rare talents. The formals of the world, the clouds of the world, the enables like the people that yeah. you never want to see leave halo right so it's a it's refreshing that he's back competing it's unfortunate he's gonna have to wait a year rightfully so of course but i couldn't be more excited one day to say we're gonna be able to see some mickwin gameplay on a main stage glad to see him back and uh, i was gonna say lucid's not gonna give him that win easily but man what a repulsor play right there to knock both him and the snipe off the map and that's the beauty of some of the equipment in this lineup you've got the out of bounds zone. Look at this right here. Yo, showdown. Mm. Mono and mono, right? And that strafe coming out, but not quite enough to live for that one. Trippy gonna walk away on top. Yeah, great shots by Trippy. Great strafe by Trippy. That's what led him, got him back into that fight. Actually, won him the fight was his ability to make Eco miss right there. Not easy to do, but with this Halo 5 sandbox, you're really able to to hit people with the left, left, right, I like to say, and that's what exactly what Trippy and Saiyan are doing right now. They're able to climb back into this game, now only down three kills. He waved back in play. It was so, so crucial in the last game. Of course, you got the camo as well. Mikwin, he's got eyes on it, but it's going to be a fight to get there, and you can see that, that Trippy in the left-hand side here. He's trying to get an angle to clean him up. Huge pickup on Lucid, but Nades come in. Eco coming in to try to clean up what's left of this kill. Does he dive in with the heat wave, though? Not enough. To stop Eco from icing up and hitting the headshot and just staying up here as well. He could go back for the heat wave, but I know he's focused on that split spawner. Last thing he wants to do is be caught with his pants down. At the very least, he'll get a trade. Yeah, good awareness by Eco to get a trade there because you need to continue to figure out a way to extend this lead. You're down 1 0 in the series. But, I mean, we can't talk about how pivotal that kill on the camo player was from Eco. Yeah. So, back to back, very big kills for him. Stopping, shutting down Lucid with potentially a camo heat wave situation we've seen all too often so far throughout this tournament. That's been the win condition. Ooh, we got another beautiful fight at a Mikwin right there. He does get picked up afterwards, but just the plays we're seeing left and right from Mikwin, from Eco. Eco about to pick up a sniper as well. I want to hear what these boys are saying on the comms and how they're putting it together. So let's jump into a listen in with Mikwin and Eco. Way up in the play. I think he's still down there. I don't think he ran away. Bottom center and top, and top, and top, uh, oh, they're both on me, they're both on me, I have to run, one's gonna be bottom mid maybe. Yep, he has a heat wave, this guy's literally only good with the heat wave. He has sniper heat wave. He's gonna be right side, right where Tribute is to the right. I've seen a trade, dude, he's one shot, no way. Dude, missed one shot, that's fucking annoying. Both on you, stay alive. I might be able to make a house flank. Yeah, I think you should, I think you should. 
I think they saw me though, is the issue. Yeah, they ran. Oh, underneath! On you! He didn't kill me, but you got him. Oh, he's sniping somewhere. On you, house. Good job, good job. Uh, camo, 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 camo. An eight. I got a good spawn for it. I'm naming it. Bottom middle, looking for, looking at me. He's scoreboard side bottom middle. I'm dead then. On, on camo weak. On camo weak. Scoreboard, Fuck. he didn't push. Yeah, he's trying to milk, trying to milk, trying to milk for me. I am, I am. He's on me. They had left. Really weak. Got him. Top, top, top. I'm trying to stop. Can you live? Can you live? Can you live? Uh, no, he got me. I burn it though. I burn it. He's pushing you. He's underneath you. Where is he? Yep. Nice shots, dude. Snipes down there. Nope. He, he spawned scoreboard. He spawned scoreboard. I'm gonna have snipe. I'm power up. One shot. Fuck that kid up. I spawned behind you. I spawned behind you. Up, no help. He went, to, he went to bottom middle scoreboard. Try to nade it. They might push across top middle. We need to be careful. Look at bottom right now. On me? Yeah, he's got Mangler on me. He's Mangler coming up behind you. He, he, I put one burst in him. Uh, no life. I died, yeah. Bottom middle, just got heat wave. Just got heat wave. We're backing up to tower. Just backing up to tower. Yeah. Let's go, Brutes. I hear yeah. one. West, really not much you can do against uh, two, you know, red players like that. That bait and switch that we just saw from Eco. He just doesn't know which target to pick. Uh, in the meantime, though, the snipe. Looking like it's still going to come into play here, too. Unless mm. somebody gets behind him and ruins his day. Great flank right there. And it's perfectly timed because there was a kill about to go to tie the game for Lucid and Trippy. But unfortunately, it's a 17-15 to 15 lead. Eco and Miquin currently have it. But this push into house could potentially spell disaster for Eco and Miquin. They both go down, but they do get one day in order to keep the lead by one kill. No snipe for 20 seconds. Nice information from Lucid and Trippy here. The heat wave still in hand. We're going to see how this mid to late game is going to be played out. Not a ton of room for error. And if you're making one in Eco, you can't afford to go down 2-0 in this series. So you need to figure out a way to clutch this one out, finish it the right way. It's all coming down to this snipe. we got the camo spawning up same time. So double dilemma for these boys here. Lucid just trying to lock down this snipe hall. The heat wave, the perfect weapon for the job, too. Get a couple bang shots in. Trippy does pick up camo, so... Ideal scenario for these boys with a snipe, I believe, collected by oh, oh. Mickwin. Oh. Did he just take his face off? Trippy still up Over with the camo here. Trippy going to try to turn a trait out of this, but Eco hot on his tail. And right now, Mickwin with snipe in hand once again. Not what you want to see if you're on the red team. Not at all. That's probably the last thing you wanted to see. And unfortunately, Mickwin got the perfect timing to pick up that snipe as we saw Trippy and Lucid both look away from top middle for just a brief second. They picked up camo, but unfortunately... Mikwin kind of understood the situation. Has now given his team a little bit of a comfortable lead here. Three kills, plenty of ammo in the snipe, and they've got tower control. Interlock's going to be all about this tower control if you have an opportunity to set up, especially in a Slayer like this. It's going to be difficult for them to watch all these lanes with just two players, so we'll see how they balance it out. Oh, where you just hit a couple blainers, right? Mikwin lining that one That'll up perfectly. Work. And the, the last player, you can see the tag, he's, he's somewhere on bottom mid, does not want a piece of that action. Mikwin got more insights on the pillar. You gotta be so, you gotta be so careful challenging this man. You'll thread the needle, snap on body, and he still hits some of that burst before Eco cleans it up too. But Mikwin looking cracked as hell. Just one of those gifted players hitting some gifted shots. I mean, the talent, it's there. He's got full snipe, and we push in top middle. He's got knockbacks. So pay attention. He might be able to do something. What a flashy. I wouldn't be shocked to see Mick when trying in this one with the punchline. Get his team a little bit of momentum going into game yeah. three. He does seem like the type of player to do it. He's got four shots to make that happen. Straight down the ramp into one here. Can he clean this? He oh. doesn't, though. Bit of an awkward melee exchange there. Might have done it just a little early. And Lucy not over. take advantage. It is not over yet. Like you said, two kills left for the blue team, but the heat wave. The snipe in the hands of Lucy as well. And oh, some nice positioning it. added Trippy. He's playing this smart. Just the patience. They know camo's up. They know Mikwin and Eco don't want to give that camo up because they know Lucy and Trippy oh. have a snipe. And now four unanswered kills go straight into their favor. Can it be a fifth? <gasps> Can Trippy land the last shot? No, they both wisely back down. I actually love that Trippy got out of there. Yeah. Everything is in your team's hands right now. A trade would be a disaster. With 23 kills, Eco and Mikwin need to figure out a way to get rid of Lusa, but he's got camo snipe, he's got three bullets, and that might all he that might be all he needs to win his team the game.
Trippy and Lucid working hard to hold on to the advantages they have, and Lucid just looking for info. Where is he? Oh, sh oh can he hit the shot, though? He's still got two left to work with straight up in front of him. Oh, the repulsor the comes back. out. And exactly, that's that's the beautiful way to just get them off of you. Right back up the center to the man. Getting creative with it. You know he wants a piece of that snipe trip. He's got the angle to hold it down from perimeter. Where are Mikwin and Eco? Do they try to challenge? He hits it. One kill left though, and Lucid cannot afford to die. Snipe beside him. He does. Can he get the ammo? Oh. Oh. He will get out the bottom mid, but you know this man's going to be in trouble. You can see him just pre aiming on the way out here. Trippy here to help. Looks like he will get out. It's doable, but they cannot make the slightest mistake here. So much pressure coming from Brute's side of the map. I love the fact that they're going to relocate here front house. They need to figure out a way to create some space. Oh. Maybe potentially use this snipe. There's a player coming from open field. They put it down. Lucid has an idea. Camo not for another 25 seconds. And you see that their, their game plan here is to play for Camo. Just two kills needed. This is a very winnable situation if Lucid's able to hit a shot. All comes down to a beamer from this man. You got both players bottom mid as well, so Lucid's no. got some... Wait. He's, oh, he does spot one. You got to look at that. That's good info for Trippy as well. Oh, and he, I think he hit the body as he, he beat them. That's going to keep him back. Trippy going in for the kill here. Lucid hey. in to hold the angle. Trippy wants that camo to make sure they don't get it. He hits body again. The heat wave in the hands of the blue team. They're rotating that out, so it's just so they have something. The Lucid in a lot of trouble on this pillar. Oh, the nades my. coming in. Can he live your trippy? Will take the death, though. And Mick Wayne and Eco, they will pull out that win. But man, was it not easy to do. Oh my god. Lucid's heart must be racing. He hits several body shots on the player's bottom middle, but unfortunately, just not an opportunity to finish any of those kills. He wanted that camo so bad that he kind of overextended his positioning to go get it. Trippy going towards Brutes, a little bit of an overextension towards the tower when actually both players, Eco and Miklin, were house side of the map. They didn't have that information exactly, and because of it, they kind of played the situation what they thought was aggressive, but they got the map flipped on them, and because of it, Lucy gets caught getting shot in the back a few times, and when you get your shield so low hiding behind that pillar, you can't afford to poke out with no room for error. As close of a game two as we could have hoped for as fans and going into a game three, Shaway, I want this series now to go the distance. Oh, hell yeah. This has to go the distance, too. This has been so good so far. But you got to love the awareness there, too. Like, they know Lucid is super weak behind that pillar, but they don't desperate it. They look for Trippy instead, right? They take full advantage of every little opportunity. They're so good at predicting the, their game plan. Uh, and also just the, the way they play bottom mid, right? Like you look at Mikwin and, and Eco in that situation, they're, they're, their options were so limited, right? They're sitting there in the hallway. They got Lucid trained on them. They want to get to the camo. Trippy's covering it. But they managed to rotate that heat wave, uh, heat wave out and, and very patiently kind of extend the length of that engagement and, and turn it around to a favorable situation. Yeah, checking out some highlights here. I mean, we saw... A lot of snipes, we saw a lot of gameplay, or a lot of plays being made here. I like the cha the choice between swapping weapons there, keep the BR, it's, it's the go-to, yeah. it's a steady, yeah. consistent weapon. The Mangler and the Snipe, too similar of high DPS, but low rate of fire. So, love the decision here. It, it's in this moment that you wish you could change things up. Lucid thinking back is gonna be thinking of this exact moment. He lands this body shot on the shoulder peak Crazy as shot. the camo comes up. You see both players are bottom middle. Eco and, and Mikwin, unfortunately, because it's a 2v2, Luce is kind of forced to watch so many different angles that he starts to get nervous here. And because of it, you see him opt to overextend towards the scoreboard, wins another body shot. Trippy, this is where Trippy goes to no man's land. And unfortunately, he doesn't find anybody that he potentially suspected was over there. And because of it, it puts Lucid in a really tough situation because both players opted pushing in the house and flanking. They both get damage on the Lucid. Trippy forced to overextend because he knows his team has one death to give. Yeah. He actually loses his life in the overextension, but it was it was one of those two that were gonna die by that. The, the losing play was Trippy running up Brutes thinking that those players had backed up the tower and not pushed all the way through house. Well, no mistakes can be afforded when things are this close in this tournament here, but at this point, we're gonna jump into recharge. Game three, 1-1 one, one in the series. And already, these boys are meeting up with the BRs for the early kills. So, Eco going to win his trip B, oh. knowing he's alone, going to try to get out. He does have the camo. This is huge if he lives. You can see Lucid spawned up other side. They didn't go to finish him. They do 
They must know he's here in bottom mid, but can they get him before he escapes? Trippy still yeah, gonna what be What kind of monitor are these kids playing on? <laughs> More than 60 hertz, apparently. Trippy got the upgrade. Beautiful knockback by that player. I'm not sure if it was Eco or if it was Mikwin, but the fact that he meleeed and then knocked back, pushed that player against the wall, that did not allow Trippy to trade a melee there. And in order to stop Trippy from trading a kill, you're able to successfully go one for zero instead. That was so well done by Mikwin. You love to see it. And you'll be seeing that a lot as people get more familiar with knockback. But Mikwin, he's showing you right here and now there's a skill gap to what you can do with this thing. Seeing the end of that last game, you almost forget how much of a roll Mikwin was on right before things got real close. Mikwin was just snapping on heads. He was on quite a spree. So once again, off the rip here, you're starting to see it. And the noob combo in hand, so powerful if used correctly here. He's actually going to try to cross map it too. Very Halo 5 esque to try to get a, a charge shot across the field here. As long as he's locking down this lane. And oh, the use of the repulsor to bounce it right back. You got to love this at Elucid. The, uh, the creativity from this man and the drop slide to get out of that challenge and rotate back to Trippy. The plays this man's making are so clean. Yeah, I love the fact that he decided to run there. He was trying to push into two players by himself, and he was never going to be able to have success there. So a great job and use of the mechanics there to get as far away as dodge from possible. Unfortunately, Trippy dies in the window there, so they lose another kill. Score already 5-0 to zero in Mikwin and Eco's favor. A wow. great sandwich opportunity could make them two steps closer to creating a comeback here. So thankfully, the 5-2 score line is the result of the last battle because this game was starting to get out of hand. Lucid just did so much in that whole life to get out of that exchange, rotate back to the flank. Now, nice. Trippy, who has the camo, has the opportunity to just go ham with it, too. Got the grapple up as well. Trippy was eyeing it, but does want to get uh, get a sneak attack on this man in front of him. We'll see if he can do it. And so far, so good. He's got the intel as well, so Lucid likely going to set up a play to help here. But Trippy just needs that distraction. He can... You can see Lucid in a lot of trouble, though. Bottom mid in the meantime here. Trippy going to come in to help him out. Hopefully get a trade out of this. We'll see if he gets out with his life. Should be able to get out of this situation, having just about every direction to be able to choose to go with. And unfortunately, that camo, a lot of the time, wasted chasing ghosts over in the pipes area. But fortunately, he's finally able to get that kill, get a little bit closer to tying this game back up. It's 5-7 to seven now. Trippy and Lucid, after winning game one in a very dominant fashion find themselves in a tied series oh. here in game three love that rotation at a trippy he knows he got spotted from oh. that hallway he slides out the door goes under the bridge still gets the kill assist but there there's the second player somehow in bottom mid is eco managing to rotate through and pick up the trade and keep things just a little closer three kill deficit these boys are red eco trying to lock things down grapple in hand as well not going to get a chance to use it quite a nade going to blow him up yeah, interesting challenge by Eco. I know he yeah. wanted that grapple and he wanted to figure out a way to get out, but maybe not just familiar enough with the routes or the opportunities that he potentially would have had there. Trey comes through bottom PCs, one on one with the player top pillars. And although both players probably no shield in this fight at this point, Trippy's going to try and stay alive. He doesn't want to just go into fights and try and take one on ones, right? He wants Lucid and himself to be able to bait and switch correctly in order to catch back up because. You're not going to out BR Mikwin or Eco too easily or too often. So I love the fact that Trippy not over committing and understanding his boundaries here. You see these players taking full advantage of that jiggle peek as well. Just how quick the base movement and the strafe is. You can so quickly, you know, tap in and out of cover, peek in, get shots. Lucid right now doing what he can in that hallway. Looks like he was taken down. I think that's camo burned for that too with Trippy. Playing it slow. Going to try to turn a trade out of this. Oh, sliding oh. for it, but can't get the kill. And what a move last second to ice up and hit the shot right there from Eco. Make it plays. Yeah, great movement by Eco. It just allowed Trippy to miss one shot, and that's all it's going to take sometimes at the highest level. He smells this player back water, oh! but unfortunately he gets knocked back off the map, and that's going to happen all too often if you choose yeah. to push into a player that's been hiding there for too long because that knockback does spawn in that bottom hallway. So great use of the sandbox once again by Lucid. Great scavenging by him, understanding the situational awareness. If I can bait a player into this area, it's an easy kill. Start to get nervous hanging out in that section of the map, just considering Don't go there. Yeah, how often you get repulsed off the edge. It's like, just keep me away from that part of the map. 
uh, loose yeah, in the meantime. What's that? If someone's weak, if someone's weak back there, you leave them weak. <laughs> yeah, you don't go. You don't, you don't chase it. Damn, nice dude, what shot. a peak shot there. Just jumps, gets the perfect angle, cleans him up. We're seeing that accuracy and elusive just on point throughout this whole tournament. Big part of the reason why they've excelled so much so far. Trippy in the meantime, nice positioning out of him. I don't think they know he's here. Oh, he's well, playing they know. so perfectly, oh, but the combo. It's Mick not often was aware. you see the plasma pistol, but Mick, when using the uh, the plasma pistol per perfectly, right? <laughs> Mikwin and Saiyan, they're going to back each other down. Saiyan, once again, wisely gets out of the fight. Mikwin, he's not going to back down. He hasn't oh, backed down since God. 2009. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's paying for it with his life. It works most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't. And this should not be a trade. Thank Fully Lucid's able to get that kill, and not only because it's a tr it's not a trade. Lucid's not only going to get rewarded with a kill and no death, but the camo as well. And here's another opportunity to push a tied game at this point in their favor. Pick him. He did. That's massive out of Mickwin, dude. I saw that in the last series as well. He is so efficient. He'll drop his stick behind when he knows he's in trouble, when he knows he can't take the fight. And because of that, Camo is now off map. And it's just a one kill game. You know he's got insights over on... Do we call that the turbine? What do we call that, Wes? I mean, we don't need to call it anything anymore. Trippy's dead. I call it blue. Uh, blue. For all of okay. those out there. Uh, it's real simple, real short, real sweet. You can, call it, you can call it back clutch if you want, because I'll back be hiding clutch. there with a repulsor, but okay. I, don't, I don't mean to do that to y'all too often. So We like to call this blue. Back blue is what you're going to see Eco kind of anchoring down here. You're going to be able to watch long haul. Long, like blue plat is where we saw that enemy player right there. So Big color guy. Big color team. The CIT. And now we're seeing Mikwin put that mangler to use, and that's one of Mikwin's just fortes, right? I'm not a big mangler guy myself, but... There's some people that just seem to always find success with it, Mikwin being one of them. Although he's so skilled with the long range, it's that close range advantage that it gives you that's really touching. A stick comes through from Mikwin as well. So, Jeez. I mean, when it rains, it pours. And now we were tied at 15 all, but now 20 to 17. Mikwin and Eco have created a little bit of breathing room, and they're looking to be aggressive in pipes. Oh, coming straight in for this one. He was feeling confident, but Lucy's still hitting the shots he needs to here. And hitting more, too. What a double. He'll catch the tail of Mikwin as he tries to rotate out. Now a shock rifle in hand for him also. Perfect placement. Knows exactly where to look to top control there. Snaps on the Mikwin as well. Oh, Ooh, and you gotta love the weapon swap here to be so efficient with everything. I, I mean, he goes out for the trade. I respect it, right? At this point, anything he can do to keep that slight advantage... It's just one kill. Trippy getting caught up in clambers here in the meantime, too. Can he live with this camo? It'll be massive for a comeback. He's so Gotta get so out good. of this situation. And luckily, he doesn't overextend. He doesn't try and do too much. He understands that he was safe behind that wall. Stays alive. Now, although he's only down one kill, they're in a very good position to make this a very winnable game. Take control of this series once again. Lucid just looking for a time to attack here. Player directly above. Perfect position for this dude. Can he win the fight, though? Oh, no. The moves out of Eco to try to dodge shots were pretty elite, but not enough for Lucid. And this is it. They're going to try to rotate together. Just run straight through Mikwin. Bit of a momentum swing here. 23 to 22. They got knowledge on spawns as well. You know Eco. Got to be so careful with that high ground because he's just being exposed by Great Lucid. Shot. Who cross match or trippy. Who's cross map just lighting him up? It doesn't matter who's POV. These boys are shooting too well. Does he get he does get the trade? And that will close our game 25 to 23. But man, Wes, every single one has been so down to the wire. Only in the last, I want to say, 30 seconds did Trippy and Lucid manage to turn the tides on that one. Yeah, it wasn't looking great until they picked up that camo. They were able to get a couple kills in their favor, get that one kill lead and and that swing. The the information that they got immediately when they saw the spawn's top elevator was when they really were able to take advantage of the control that they had given themselves. Beautiful shots on the head glitch top mid over that uh, battery or the pillar, which, whichever you want to call it. Yeah. And because those shots came through, making that situation a 2v1, it forced Mikwin to push out Catwalk. He gets a trade with Lucid, and that's just phenomenally done. Like Trippy and Lucid, their presence, their ability to understand the angles that each other have. That's why they're so successful. Even in a new game where they don't have a ton of experience on the map, I guarantee you Jeez. the communication and the understanding of how they want to play it. Like, look at them stay alive. Let's bring Neither back, one of too. these guys are over-challenging in any fight, right? Like, they are so understanding that 
My teammate is looking to help me. He will cut off the angle from the enemy player if I can just stay alive and turn the corner. The situation with Eco here, you think, like, wouldn't you want to back down when you've got Lucid shooting at you? At you? But I, I figure, you know, in that position, high ground, sometimes you're you're pretty confident that you're going to, you know, win that fight or back that player down. Lucid, sorry, it was Trippy, my bad. I keep messing that one up. But Trippy, uh, you know, just, just shooting better than expected. You also had the pinch, I think, coming in, too. It was just so well choreographed by Lucid and Trippy. Lucid coming into top A and Trippy stealing that attention as well. Uh, but it all came together in unison in that last, you know, 40 second bit there. Yeah, you definitely want to see Eco back down in that situation, but yeah. I mean, even just like rewatching that, you can like see the even little bit did, of uncomfortable. You, know? you can see, well, you can see the a little bit of uncomfortableness of like how far back do I have to walk to fall down this elevator, right? Like these sure. players are still mastering sure, sure. the game. It's only the second day of Infinite, right? And although they have played recharge a little bit, there's still a lot they have to learn. Like, how far exactly do I need to walk, or like, what do I have to do to get this angle cut off by a wall or whatever it might be, right? Eco, clearly a little uncomfortable there. I mean, it's very like understandable in that situation. You got fire running down from a guy with a head glitch top middle, and for some reason he can see you off your spawn. Mm -hmm. That's pretty difficult to deal with. But great job by Trippy to kind of take advantage of that situation, right? Like, understand that, like, you have this angle and he can't get out of here unless he really turns around and runs immediately. And the second he didn't do that, he was dead to rights. You're so right though, in that the slightest misstep, right? It just, it tricks up your timing by a fraction of a second. And in gameplay like this, you, you can't lose a fraction of a second. You're dead for it. I love that little exchange with Lucid, by the way, if we want to run that back, just the movement right there. Lucid going for the, uh, the early jump too, which can make it so difficult, right? With the BR in this game, if you jump, you limit all your options. You know, Halo 5, you got that thrust in the back pocket. This game, you just, you don't have it. So you get to see, like this right here, the movement out of Eco. I would have missed all my shots when Eco's doing this crouch right here. But Lucid, who goes for the jump, he's got no movement options. He still will ice up and snap and hit that headshot. It just takes so much experience and, kill, and skill to not falter in situations like that. Yeah, I think something that I completely just noticed during that, like rewatching that fight, I've only seen really Lucid compete at a very high level at Halo 5 for a long time. The yeah. battle rifle obviously not being a major part in Halo 5. I mean, being able to whip some of those shots and, and create opportunity where maybe the single shot weapon doesn't give you. I love the fact that he was able to whip that shot right there, land the headshot as he was falling down. I'm not sure you can quite hit those shots with the single shot pistol. That being said, there are some pros to those single shot weapons as well. So Lucid, he doesn't seem to feel too uncomfortable with a new starting weapon oh, that he might be a little unfamiliar with. At this point, game four in the series. It's a best of five. If Lucid and Trippy can close this one out, they are walking away with five grand today. Winner take all. You know they want a piece. They already got the camo and they've already got a roll started with a 4-0. These boys just looking so damn unstoppable. They win it here. They close this thing. Eco looking very frustrated chasing that player all the way through closet, all the way front to base, and then he gets help from a teammate. That's got to be a very frustrating moment. Figure out a way to take a deep breath, take a second, get back into this series because it's not over yet. You did have a rough start being 4-0, but you got one kill to the board. You have information on these two players. If you can get a kill and stay alive, that'd be massive, but a perfect grenade allows for Lucid to pick that one up as well. What a fight here. Mickwin going for it all, and... It was Trippy who just didn't let... Was it Trippy or Lucid? Didn't let him have it. It must have been. Lucid who's already got six kills to his name, apparently. Jesus. He'll get another trade. The man is not missing. Trippy right now will try to take this fight with BR. He's got the heat wave in the back pocket. He doesn't want to give up a free death. But not much you can do when Mickwin's flying at you from the flank. Mickwin going to try to live as well. Looks like he will be able to get at a dodge here. So just the, the little plays that they make to bait and switch and hold on to the slight lead. This is going to be huge in time for the camo, too. Jesus, that was terrifying, watching those shots at the wall right over Mickwin said as he runs away, no shield. Spots this player with the scatter shot, and unfortunately, he's kind of got to pressure him, but he knows that if he does, he's probably going to eat a scatter shot melee to the face, and unfortunately, nobody there to capitalize, and Eco Smith's going to have to run away because he can't afford to continue to give one by one deaths to the duo that is Trippy and Lucid as they continue to use their teamwork to their advantage to get some of these kills. Lucid just snap it left and right for this one Trippy with him. Trippy gonna try to get out here. Can Lucid come in and clean this up? You know that player wants to get out as quickly as he can, but Lucid hunting him down. 
Gonna try to go down from below too, and I like the attempt with the ramp. Try to get that extra speed. Oh. He does snap and hit Eco. Now Mikwin left by his lonesome here, and they are on the chase. Look at Mikwin gonna try to get around the corner here, and you know he doesn't want to give up a life. And it's just so wild to see Mikwin and Eco after all the confidence we've seen out of these boys all tournament long, just oh forced, my. forced to back down left and right because they are just getting outnumbered, outmanned, outgunned by Lucid and Trippy. I mean, Lucid is on the prowl. He is being aggressive. He is shooting long-range scatter shots, and he is not allowing Eco and Mikwin the opportunity to breathe in this match so far. It's a closing game of the series. They want this five grand. They not only want that, but they want to show that they're here in Infinite to compete for championships potentially and and what better way to do that than come out and win the first 2v2 overall like yeah. just build that confidence from the very beginning you love to see trippy and lucid having so much success but on the side of eco and mick when they have to figure out a way to slow this game down before it gets way out of hand i mean you look at that scoreboard like his gamer tag lucid is locked in right now 10 kills to his name already here trippy gonna <laughs> throw a couple melees out as well just to ensure mickwin goes down here 14 to 6 and just 11 more kills to close out this tournament can eco, uh, eco and mickwin do anything at this point especially considering how much they're stacking all these opportunities here you got trippy with yet another camo and soon i expect him to pick up a thrust or a heat wave as well you can tell he's sticking close to these items lucid now down though does not want to give up his life easily you got Lucy coming up off of spawn, and this gives him a great opportunity to flank now, too, as long as he has that info. He's looking for players, but can't spot just quite anything. Both players, you see, hidden in the closet. Lucy's going to have a little bit of information that they're there. Unfortunately, being on the ground here is a tough position for Trippy as he's trying to push into the closet. Great lightning nades out of that player, and unfortunately, that was potentially what could have ended this game ended this series put five grand in your pockets and trippy goes down mickwin and eco buy a little bit of time create a little bit of an opportunity to come back in this game but still down six kills eco got a beat into the base he's got to watch his left hand side though you can see the pressure coming in from top mid mickwin in a great spot to clean that one up though so 2v1 comes in oh and you see lucid try to dive forward to pick up a trade on that but gets nothing for it instead a bit of a snowball might be forming here for Mikwin Eco if they could hold on to top map. Lockdown spawns here as well. You can see Mikwin looking for the plasma nades. We've seen this time and time again. Going for inst explodes around corners. He's got the timing on it too, so he will pick those up. But all well he does it, Eco down for the count here. So Mikwin got to play carefully. Already getting tagged up from behind here. Does have the thrust. He's got both the electric and the plasma nades, so quite a bit to work with. You'll see him toss these out just as a area of denial. Just to slow things down. He knows there's a player somewhere around here, but that player's playing this situation so slow down below. You can see the red dot over his head. Finally, that player tries to jump top middle, and Mikwin spots him at the exact oh. right time. An easy kill on Lucid, potentially opening up the map. They're going to try and get top middle and compete for this camo. This is perfect. He's set up and ready for it. Eco with the pickup on Trippy. They got positioning for it. They got to watch out for Lucid, who will want to beat on him, but camo already on the body, so... Huge opportunity for Mikwin and Eco already on a tear. Just a three-kill deficit. Still got the two thrusts to work I with as well. It. He's going back for the nades, I too. Love it. He's so efficient, man. He's playing this proper. And that's the beauty of Infinite is when you do have watch, those limited tools. Watch when the this. Sandbox He's going to get so much information. Yeah. Wait, does he get a tick? Ooh, yeah, that's, he you doesn't... hear the tick, right? You don't get hit yeah, markers. It gives you, you an audio the... cue. Exactly. It gives you an audio cue so you know where they are based off it. So that's actually... Uh, a really, and that's the beauty of the sandbox in Infinite is you've got these little creative, uh, you know, I just it, new features that we didn't have previously. But man, this game has uh, has slowed down quite a bit here as Lucid and Trippy understand the situation they're in. They do not want to give uh, these boys any advantage. I mean, how amazing is it that that nade did not touch either one of those players? So the fact that Mikwin and Eco have just now cleared the entire map looking for these guys. Look at this. He's throwing both lightning nades. Waste. Once again, that's four lightning grenades wasted with zero damage. And now that's the audio cue that you know Trippy and Lucid, they were listening for. They're going to be able to get out of this base. Camo now gone. Lightning nades off the map as well. So they have more of an oh. opportunity here. Mick one with some juke jives and some scatter shots to get the kill. But it looks like Trippy was able, or Lucid was able to get away. You got to credit Lucid and Trippy. Oh, wait, we got another 1v1 here, too. Ikwin's going to try to go for a little bit more. 
Gonna play it carefully, keep some spacing between them. Just the fact that Lucid and Trippy have turned a situation that was so heavily against them into only one kill at this point, they've drawn it out. It's just testament to how talented these players are. And look at the setup they're oh, forming no. as well. You got one in the corner. Somebody's trying to pinch here. So Mikwin backing out. You got Eco with him. And look at this trap like rats in the corner uh -oh. of the Oh, in the corner of the map. You're lucid. Trippy, they both want a piece. Do they have nades to throw in this though? You're just locking the angle down. Lucid with one. Lucid with a double here. To close out both these players, keep that three kill lead and a momentum string on their side now, too. I mean, add the camo to that on top of it. I mean, well rewarded with this camo. He goes straight for thrust. He's got camo, heat wave, thrust. We've seen Lucid do this so many times throughout this tournament. And once again, he's figured out oh. the meta so quickly. He's going to be able to scavenge. Gets great shots on the eco with the BR. And now with a fully kitted Spartan, he's going to be pushing into this closet. He smells Even blood on the back of Mikwin Spartan. But unfortunately for Lucid, Trip, he's going to take that kill. But it's going to flip the map once again. I mean, that was just so textbook how they slowed yeah. the game down, waited for their moment made sure they didn't give up the great lead that they had, and now they're comfortably playing wow. from up five. <laughs> Man, I am consistently impressed by Lucid. Not only, like, his, his shot, his movement, his creativity, he's taking full advantage of the slides and the tech. Like, I, I knew this guy was good at Halo 5, but I didn't realize just, like, how quickly he would be a top player in Infinite. I'm just, I'm consistently surprised by him. And here's another curb slide to get straight up into this fight into a killing spree once again. I mean, I, I'm a I'm a huge fan now, Wes. I think everybody should I'm be a huge, a huge fan. fan because this is just high tier Halo at its finest, right? Like Lucid is showing you that with two days of work, he can put in some high quality Halo for us. And I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? We have had this game out for two days and this kid is showing you that he's already starting to catch on to just such small details. <laughs> What are we going to be able to see after a month span? Wow. I mean, look at the aggression, dude, and the shot to Ooh. match it. It's not always you have the brain and the bronze, but Lucid, Trippy, they're doing something right. Is it uh, twitch.tv slash lucid with two eyes underscore TW? <laughs> Type that in the search bar. Give this man a follow and probably a subscription as well. And Trippy also. These boys are absolutely incredible, and what a well-deserved victory. Five grand winner take all, and these boys are going to walk away with it. But, man, look at that scoreboard, 18 and 8 out of Lucid. I, I, you know, I think if anyone stole the show, it was him. Mickwin, he had the early game, but Lucid, man, what a closeout. I know we talked about how well Lucid was playing the entire time, but we can't ignore how much teamwork it takes for Lucid to have the success that he has. Trippy, the unsung hero for probably the past year on just about every squad he's been with, they've had so much success. It's not by coincidence. He might not be the flashiest player, but this man puts in so much work, plays such high quality Halo, such efficient Halo, such smart Halo, and it allows Lucid to really do as well as he, to perform as well as he's able to perform. So this, these two together, I couldn't be more excited than the fact that they're teaming with each other in fours. And to watch them play twos together, I mean, that was just a thing of beauty. Unbelievable. I know it's just 2v2, and it doesn't tell the whole story. We got 4v4 coming up, which is a you know, much different ballpark when it comes to Raleigh and, and these open tournaments and whatnot. But you got to think of what kind of precedent it's set when you see Lucid and Trippy uh, be as good as they are as quickly uh, you know, as they as, as they have been, uh, it's just, it, it's unbelievable. Uh, it really goes out to all these players, though, just the, the talent, the level of play that we're seeing in two days, Wes. You know, give them a month, and that's the beauty of dropping this game a month early. You got so much more time to, uh, to really lock down strats, to lock down some of these high-level plays uh, and ensure that Raleigh is just a banger all the way through. Yeah, I can't wait to see how the meta continues to evolve. We've already seen in just today's tournament that Scavenging is going to be one of the most important things. I know in a 2v2, it's probably even more crucial to upgrade your Spartan as far as your like your power on the map, your ability to traverse, uh, how quickly you can do it. The equipment is what I'm referring to there. And then weapon upgrades for situational use. I mean, in 2v2s, we saw Trippy and Lucid understand that if we want to win this thing, we have got to... what basically cheese everything right like expose yeah. Yeah. everything for how strong it can be in whatever situation it can be and because of that because they're able to not just generically switch from halo to halo but they understand that they can create meta they're already on the right track as far as yeah. getting ahead of everyone
I mean, what an unbelievable, uh, not only just last, that last series, by the way, that that delivered, Wes. Uh, so grateful I could cast that with you. We've had a few 3-0s today, but that one, I mean, down to the wire every single game, and we got to see some of the highest level Halo play. I love how you said scavenging is really the story, and it's something that we haven't seen quite as much of in Halo in quite a long time, and Infinite has, has really brought that out in a big way with the sandbox, with the diversity, uh, even just talking about those nades, the disruptor nades, and, and the audio cue that you get as kind of like its own hit marker, so to speak. There's just there's these unique elements brought into Halo that that only really add to the narrative, add to the skill gap, uh, and they make things so exciting. I just can't wait to see where that goes in the months to come. Uh, but man, one hell of a tournament today. Wes, uh, do you have any final thoughts coming out of this one? Yeah, my final thoughts are it's damn good to see some Halo Infinite action with the top players in the world. Uh, this is just the first taste of what's to come, and I mean, I couldn't be more excited and uh, it, it, it's been just surreal to see all of the pros back online scrimming, playing, like grinding matchmaking as a team the second the game comes out. Like, I hope everybody realizes what being a professional video game player, like what that opportunity is and how small sometimes your window can be. And I hope that we're able to provide a large enough window to make that a reality for enough of you out there. Yeah. It's only going to come on the back of hard work. I mean, it. it, it it's perfect. It's it's literally poetry in motion for Trippy and Lucid to win this tournament with how much work that they put in over the past three years, and well deserved win here. If they continue to work as hard, I'm sure we'll we'll be celebrating them more, and I hope that the rest of the community can learn from them and everyone can prosper. Well said, Wes. I agree. Would love to see more Halo players, uh, more Halo players at the top level of play as well. Uh, the more the merrier. So. Let's just keep that, that grind going. And in the meantime, what we will do is take a quick break and I believe come back potentially with a winter view as well. So we got more content coming up. Special thanks to Louis V. Titan. We'll be right back with more. Welcome back to LVT's Money Tuesday. Our tournament has wrapped. Our champions have been decided, and they are now going to join me and Wes in a, a post-tournament interview. I'd like to welcome Trippy, Lucid, and Wes Clutch. We got a whole team. Look at this four-way broadcast here. Uh, congratulations, by the way, guys. You absolutely fried today, especially in that last series. Uh, Mickwin and Eco, they seemed unstoppable until they met you, apparently. But uh, how are you boys doing? How you doing, Lucid? Doing great. Start with you. Feel, feeling great. <laughs> We've been, I mean, Joey and I have been just, our entire team, pretty much, and Ola getting set up. We've just been grinding. We have been grinding the past two days, so it feels great to just, you know, we're just enjoying the game as it is, and now I have this type of opportunity with uh, with you guys uh, for, you know, a great amount of money. It was just like, we weren't even really thinking about the money because we are just having a great time, yeah. and it's, it's all mm -hmm. just uh, a great experience for... Uh, you know, just this uh, this Wednesday evening or Tuesday, I guess, for some of you guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, to He's forgotten what day it is. He's yeah, been grinding yeah, so it's hard. Doesn't know anymore. For me, the hour. It's one of the the hour fifty nine is all it is. It's not a. It's not a day of the week anymore. <laughs> yeah. So right. I'm having a great time, man. It's it's great to have these tournaments right away or these types of tournaments and be playing with you guys and through you guys and this kind of stuff. Right. And, and Trippy, I imagine you got to be feeling good for for multiple reasons, right? Not only are you playing incredibly well, you got the you're you're not in sixty hertz land anymore. Oh you my, got the dude, upgrade. I, yeah, I kid you not. <laughs> I kid you not. I go to the uh, we go to the or I went to the headquarters to stream for the first day, and we get there. I find out eight hours in to my stream, <laughs> I've been on sixty this whole time. I was like legit like questioning like my like my career was over i thought my career was done i was like i was changing my sense in my dead zones oh, every single death on some maps i swear it was so bad 
60 and FPS then, is not the wave any longer. And then someone told me, they're like, yo, like, go to your network statistics and turn that on. See what FPS you're on. And I went, and it was like 60. I was like, dude, there's no way. And then I got it fixed, <laughs> changed it right away, and then it, it felt like a completely different game. And I was like, oh my god. I literally just did it again. <laughs> I did it again. That's actually insane. Yeah, that... I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, dude, I'm gonna, I might get, I'm gonna, dude, I was like, dude, if I don't do good, I, I was like, Oh, dude, I'm getting dropped. I was like, I'm so bad. Oh no! I was like, I'm so bad. I can't. I can't aim. Better nah, reaction yeah. time makes makes you. You've been training with weights heavy. this whole time. Yeah, it was yeah. bad. Yeah, you've been training with weights though. Where when you're when you're doing it without weights, it doesn't feel the same. So like your your muscle memories are all off. Yeah. Right. That's actually insane. Um, but first then, yeah, off, trippy. Like... Sorry. The go. BTA hoodie. Love it. I love Let's the support. Go. I'm always seeing Trippy Rock to BGH. Dude, this is so comfy. It's just always a believer. I mean, always I mean, a believer. I, I'm believing. Got believe. Is there, is there a coincidence believing. that that you've got the BTH hoodie and the haircut too at the oh, same Buzz, time? Buzz P is here to stay. <laughs> Buzz P is here to stay now. now it's, it's, it was Drippy and now it's a Buzz P. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's looking good, man. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Wait, we got to talk about the series. Absolutely. So we're going into a series. It's Eco. A lot of experience playing Eco. Mikwin, a lot of experience playing Mikwin, but with the understanding of the advantage that Mikwin's going to come into this with, right? Like the the nuance of of spawns, rotations, timings, everything like that that can come into play, where reticle placement needs to be. You guys seem like you catch on pretty quickly, having only two days to kind of combat against that. What do you think, kind of in your head, going into the series, did you think your strengths were going to be, and how are you going to play around those? Uh, I'm just trying to really gauge. I mean, I, we, you know, we were crapping our pants. Like, okay, this might just I be told, a hot yeah, I told Tommy like, before the series, like, right, let's just say GG's to him now. Like, Nick wins a god right now. Like, I've been seeing him play. Like, this, I don't knew, know. We knew that they were playing well and just moving through it, and we know the circumstances, but we were just like, all right, we're just, we even said it for our series earlier, not just against them. We're like, all right. Let's just play together, do our thing. It's become pretty clear already that like this is very much like you can still do your own individual thing in this game. Like you can abuse the sandbox in great ways and like have your individual kind of shine. But like this is still very heavily like a, a team shot style type game. Oh yeah. Even Halo Five was yeah. But, like this is you know kind of returning to that form where like you know positions matter a lot, team positions and like formulating these plans together and like moving together, cross like getting these cross shots together yeah. are super important. And we knew that like right away. That like we can't just be on our own sliding around going for thrusts and like going for heat waves whatever it is dynamo grenades like just going off doing our own thing uh which sometimes we still did but we know we made sure like to be consistent on just you know play together that was the basic basic kind of thing we were just staying to yeah i think one of the things i saw from you guys that was the most impressive to me and if you're able to transition this to fours it, it is it's only going to bring you dividends as it did today Y'all's awareness to understand kind of where you are in the middle of the fight and to understand, am I even close to trading this fight? Am I? And if so, I'm yeah. getting out of it. Like, yeah. it's not worth me. Yeah. It, it, why would I ever want to take Mikwin in a BR fight, like, one-on-one? <laughs> yeah. -on -one? Yeah, like, dude. It's like, you're going to go 50-50 yeah. at best, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, so, so, so many times throughout the broadcast, I'm sure you guys will go rewatch it, but it's like, how, like, strict and how, like, professional you guys are as far as like i'm two shots into this fight and you immediately are able to gauge already like yeah. i can stay in this fight and get this kill or i need to get the hell out and figure out a way to stay alive for tommy to come help me or for me to buy enough time to where like trip can come over here and cut this angle off to where he can't push me and right. and that was like probably the most impressive thing is that just natural halo for you guys or do you guys think that there's communication going on there that's um, a lot of the reasons you're able to play off each other so well, or what's going on there that allows you to separate yourselves from every other duo in the pack? Um, I'd definitely say our, our communication, honestly, Tommy and I was honestly really, really, really good this tournament. And I think, uh, you know, when we get in those scenarios of like, you know, being on a 50-50 with Mick win or like, you know, it could be anything. Um, it's, it's just it's just trusting your teammate and like, if they can see something on death Ham that you can't see and just telling them what to do or even like before a power up comes up like not trying to take that challenge and just live and wait for your teammates so that you can like yeah. coordinate around the power up like so there's so many different plays you can make but it all depends on like what's happening on the map it's all situational but i think it just comes down to our communication and just 
I mean, I've been playing two v twos for so long now. I'm so I'm, I'm, I'm so long now. So you're the twos guy now. <laughs> <laughs> I I just like yeah. I just know. I just understand twos really well. And uh, yeah, this game is like heavy teamwork in twos. Like Halo Five, you could still dominate teamwork, mm -hmm. but like a, a lot of people would just survive with movement a lot of the times and get away and do things. But this game, like once you're trapped and you make a mistake and you overextend, like you're gonna die. Absolutely. So yeah. that's something that like is gonna be, you know we're gonna see be seeing a lot of players um, you know change their gameplay heavy from Halo Five to this. Mm. Yeah, um, that, that's and why you I, can't overextend and you gotta yeah be, be very disciplined in this game. I, I like your patience as well. Like there was that one play in Aquarius, Lucid went down and you're bottom mid and you just sit there and you just hide and wait it out. You know yeah. until Lucid's in a good position to help you. <laughs> yep. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Knowing, like knowing when to make a play and knowing when oh. not to. Yeah, overall, our, our, like, you know, our simple, like, trust and, like, the call-outs, the comms, and, like, you know, we still go off and go rogue sometimes. It happens, and sure. it happened here, but for the most part, I think it just clicked for us, especially today, where it's just like, you know, like, if he says don't do this or don't or do this, then it's like we, we're kind of just following each other's, like, guidance in a way. So that's very important, I think, uh, twos, fours, whatever it is, is to, like, follow the flow, like, if you think you know what's going on, like put it out there and like react to it with each other. And uh, yeah, I, I think for us, it was just, it was very simple. I mean, we've teamed enough, long enough at this point. I played enough twos, Joe's played tons of twos. So it's like, I feel like we kind of understood it well enough. Now we've played, a, like I said, we played plenty of uh, the game at least these past two days um, to kind of get at least a feel for the maps, sandbox and all that. So yeah, it really just kind of came down to our uh, kind of connection that we got in game mm -hmm. you said uh going rogue though lucid speaking of going rogue when you did go rogue you're pulling out all the advanced tech <laughs> already like what what's going on there are you spending time on maps by yourself or, or what i have not been on a single map by myself no. yet. no i don't uh like the only tech i like i don't know i'm at least so there's like a couple different things i can think of throughout a couple series or like that last series that maybe i did like uh, I know I jumped up, like, did some jumps and, like, re recharge a little bit, or I'm trying to. Like, I've seen a few of them. Yeah, I saw that, too. Yeah. I, like, doing some small stuff like that. Like, I've seen them. I've done it, like, a few times, so it's, like, I already just kind of know how to do it. And, like, using the repulsor, using the grapple, I don't know. It just kind of, I feel like it kind of comes naturally for the equipment. It's pretty standard. I played, at least yeah. in Apex, for example, I, play a, I played a bunch of Pathfinder, so any grapple shot, grapple hook in any game, I feel like I can use and abuse pretty, pretty easily, pretty well. Um... And I, I think that's at least the nice thing. For me, this is like what I can appreciate with the sandbox and infinite is like there is a like pretty strict consistency on like what you can do. Like a lot of us now know also of like the drop slides, the curb slides, like that type of advanced tech as well that like we're all practicing and utilizing. But um, like that's still all available to us at all these different points, but it's very consistent. It's not like I can just you know, hit some mean slide out in the open, like a thrust slide could on no. any map in Halo 5. Like, you have to use the map, you have to use the geometry. Like, it's still like a kind of consistency that you can kind of count on. And then, like, th like the grapple hook, the repulsor, like, those kind of add that little flavor. Um, so it's just like, you know, even if I mess up a little bit or they, somebody else messes up a little bit, it's not like I can just completely um, run it down at them and, like, guarantee myself a kill because, like, I have something in my back pocket to like just close it out like that all the time. It's like I can kind of see the pieces moving really easily in a type of sense where it's like, okay, yeah, I can't do that. Like it's very easy to tell, like I just can't do that. I can't challenge out while one shot and thrust back just to like you know be a, be an annoyance like type thing. Like even talking about the Mikwin like challenging Mikwin two shots. It's just like okay, this this fight probably doesn't really matter and I don't really need to push it. And I, if I even commit to it, I'm probably gonna die anyway. It's like those easy things to understand, I feel like, with the type of consistency that's going on in this game. Mm -hmm. It seems to come easy, natural to you. So funny that's the thing, is it, it takes a lot of discipline. Yeah, that too, that. That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> on recharge, right? Like, I've, I'm, I've got PTSD. you got to stay away from that, that turbine. We call it blue or whatever. What, what's just that? <laughs> yeah, like nothing puts a map. bigger smile on my face than when I knock Greg off the map with that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was perfect. My, I like I couldn't even be mad whenever Mikwin shot me off the tower on live fire. Oh, I just laughed. Oh, I just yeah. laughed, I just laughed like, the whole time. I, all the weapons like weapons off you the map. This like yeah, <laughs> weapons off the map. And then I, I actually did the same thing to Kevin uh, to Eco on recharge, where like I was just kind of trapped by like the sword and did it to him. And I was like, okay, that, that that's my that's my piece to get it back at him.
<laughs> so funny. So I have a little bit of a joke question, and uh, you guys can answer it uh, however you want, professionally or unprofessionally. But <laughs> I'm very concerned. All right, so we got this new Optic roster, right? Optic Gaming is back, back. in Halo, yes. and you guys are going to be yeah. you guys are going to be repping them, right? There's a lot of responsibility when it comes to repping the Optic brand. They expect nothing but championships. I know you guys are aware. I I'm, I don't need to be the one to tell you guys this. You've seen the trophies, I'm sure. Yep. Um, yep. You know the history. You know the fans are wild. They're going to be passionate. They're going to be chanting Optic for you guys when Tommy's going on a frenzy <laughs> on Sentinels' forehead one time at the <laughs> tournament, right? Like, we all know that's going to happen. Right. So okay. let's try and speed this process up, right? There's one thing I'm very concerned about with this new roster coming into a new video game in Infinite, and he's probably watching this right now, and he's going to hate me, but APG, for some reason, does not pick up new games very quickly. <laughs> you guys, obviously picking up the game very quickly, mm -hmm. have a large responsibility to get APG, who's going to have the perfect shot that he's had for... He came out the womb not missing, so <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. But figuring out a way to get Bradley on par with what you guys were able to obviously perform with today, you're going to get exponentially better over the next month. But I want to see Bradley start off hot to one of these Halo games because I feel like he has so much potential and I just, like I want so much for the guy. But it's it always feels like there's ebbs and flows to his career. You guys are, have the responsibility as his teammates to kind of make sure that y'all get off to the right on the right step and, and start off on the right note. What's going to be the mindset of this team, like practice regimen, like how much time are we putting in? Obviously, you guys have been grinding 28 hours or whatever you said, uh, but yeah. it's like consistency yeah. and, and developing strategies and creating meta. Like that's going to be a major responsibility for you guys. Getting APG to learn like some some of the nuanced stuff could be more difficult. I've been there in Reach. I tried. <laughs> it was very difficult, but... One thing I can say I'm, with Brad, at least, and I, I'm sorry to cut cut in, but I know with Brad, especially in our roster and like the talks and like you know the things we've talked about, yeah, and we expect of ourselves is like we're like we're all on board as serious as possible, and yep. I think just even these first two days, especially even with Brad, like Brad, especially like he's been grinding right there with us, and like he cares, he cares a lot, yep. and um. That for me, I feel like for all of us is definitely what's important. Um, and it's what has become even more important for myself and Joey is like the time in. Like we yep. can get the right practice, but it's also about getting the right practice and getting the amount of right practice in. And, or even and, it's just reps in general. And I mean, Bradley also like, I mean, to be straight up honest, Brad is a, a different human being like than he was even two, two, three, like two, three years ago. He's literally a transformed Absolutely. human, especially after teaming with uh honestly after teaming with sentinels like his whole mindset and how he practices he says and how, yeah he even said it himself all he says yeah. it all the time he is legitly a new person he knows what it takes to be a champion put in how much time you know it takes to put into the craft that he does and just putting in all the hours in yeah he's a new person he's a new human being and uh yeah he knows yeah. I, i'm i'm Sorry. personally Sorry. excited for uh i'm personally excited for his potential y'all's potential as a team the fact that it feels like we're going to have six teams at this first tournament that probably can come away with a yeah. win. Yeah. And that's going to be the first time we wow. can say that in Halo for a, a long what time. feels like a while now, right? Yeah. Right. Like, uh, you guys, with, uh, I haven't even been able to see Ola play this game yet, but I already know Ola's doing Ola things. Like, always. That, yeah. You guys are going to be a serious threat, and I can't wait to see it. It's good to see that you guys are all, like, that conversation's already been had with the team where, like, Hey, we got an opportunity to like retire after we play Halo if we do this right, right? Yeah, we so. we are all on the same page. I'll put it that way. We all know. We all know what's at stake and what yeah. we're putting forward. So, it's like I said, it's all serious. Like it's it's still a lot of fun and it's a lot of uh, like camaraderie amongst all of ourselves. Like we're I think we're a great bunch. Like we're all friends at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but we all know this, this is serious. So, yeah, yeah. Speaking of, speaking of that grind though, I noticed I, I think Sentinels they've they've relocated. Are they all together in the same location? You guys thinking of doing something like that? Uh, I think they're just out at like a facility. They're just there for the week. Uh -oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay yeah, okay. I think they're just kind of out there. I mean, Joey and Brad they can Joey can even talk more about this. They've already moved out. 
Yeah, me and Brad so, are down, yeah. in uh, down in Texas right now. He's like five minutes from me, so okay, okay. We can uh, we usually we can either go to the Envy office, which is like really close to us, or we can go down to the, the headquarters. And Brad's over there right now. He likes going over there. So yeah, we gotta we have some places to go to together and practice. Yeah, and I would love nice. to be down there, but there's just like uh, same with Justin actually. It's just kind of like there's some family stuff, there's some ties yeah. uh, at home, so uh, it'd be great. Maybe one day. Yeah. One day, uh, I'm getting him. I will. I will get him one day out here. Hey, keep pulling. <laughs> keep pulling because yeah. so hard. The advantage that you could just oh, it's run a away it's a with there, practice man. Out here, it's a different. I mean, you see think about it for now world. online. I mean, heck, dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Bring exactly. you all closer together. Yeah. Just some uh, out, even out of game team bonding stuff. I feel like you can benefit uh, yeah. from like. Yeah. No, yeah. for sure. Yeah. It seems like you guys got that pretty much under wraps. There's there's good vibes, good personalities that can always keep you laughing. I know Ola mm -hmm. is one of the biggest jokesters in the world. APG's be with you at times. Oh yeah. And <laughs> and you guys are all pretty chill as far as like just going with the flow, but also like being able to laugh at yourselves or someone else. So. Yep. <laughs> yep exactly. So that's why I said we we know what's at stake and we know what we know what we got to do at the end of the day, and we're we're yeah. all looking forward to getting going. I, uh, guys, I respect the work oh, yeah. ethic so much. You you killed it today. So congratulations. Enjoy your your extra five grand uh, just to pad the pockets. But I know that's not it's not the focus for you guys. You got you got to get back to the grind. Get back to uh, to doing what you do best. So yep. uh, I don't want to keep you any longer. Congratulations, guys, and, uh, and can't wait to see you at Raleigh. Can't wait. Can't, can't wait. wait. See you guys there. Yep. Let's go. <laughs> thank you guys. Good luck. Congrats once again, boys. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, hello, Garrett. Right. Welcome Ooh. back to the show. Uh, what a tournament today, by the way. Everyone in the chat who's with us, if you stuck with us for the interview, uh, by the way, amazing, charismatic guys. We had uh, Lucid and Trippy uh, champions uh, in and out, not only just in the gameplay, but in the interview, too. Uh, love to see it. But, man, uh, honored to be here and and honored to have you guys with us to, uh, to, to kick off Money Tuesday in a whole new era of Halo with Halo Infinite. It, it came so fast. And, and it's here to stay, which is freaking amazing. Uh, so huge thank you for sticking with us, guys. And huge thank you to LVT for putting something like this together on a dime, dude. Without, like, I don't know how you guys how you guys managed to do it. Uh, but Garrett, maybe you can talk to that just a little bit. Well, we heard day one. Infinite's coming out early. You know, minus 30 days. We, we got it early. We're like, damn, we got to do something for this. Called up the homies. We got all the talent around. So we want to have the best 2v2 tournament possible. And I think we did it, guys. That finals was one of the best Damn. finals I think we'll ever see. I, I love what happened. You know, Mick, when he had two years of practice, man couldn't take down the new optic. That's all I'm saying. Watch out for those guys. <laughs> but uh, honestly, it all comes around. You guys heard me talking about it during my cast. You guys have been talking about it. Exclamation mark giveaway in the chat. Well, I can tell you, you can't exclamation mark giveaway anymore. It's going to be closed because we have a winner. Guys, give a nice little applause in the chat for poseidon i love him man he's been around in the halo community forever i see him in twitch chats all the time we have his info we're gonna make sure that he gets his prize we appreciate all of you guys coming around and participating but the man poseidon he's gonna get his two vip tickets at 500 dollars to come hang out at rally with all of us man like five grand down VIP tickets over to Poseidon. Congratulations to Poseidon, but man, uh, just W's all around. And we're only just getting started, Garrett. Ooh, only getting started. I mean, guys, Money Tuesdays back. Season two's in action. You might have looked. We have a new appearance. It, it's it's looking kind of rich in here. We got looking money nice. around. I, I love this new look. <laughs> I love seeing these two beautiful men on screen with me. Expect to see more of them in some future Money Tuesdays because we're going crazy crazy this season guys we're gonna have so much action hopefully we can figure out the maps to the best of their ability we'll figure it out twos are gonna live on halo infinite we're gonna have so much fun expect the show matches to continue we gotta see who's gonna be the king and honestly lucid and trippy they look kind of nutty with it so maybe we have to find some challengers for them i i mean i, I think you're right i think you said it i think i think you closed it with that uh just the beginning we got so much more left to come, so we will see you there. Until then, guys, have a good night and, uh, and can't wait for what's in store.